and I made a plan for what it was going to cost for ruining my life. I was going to get my get back on every single person who has ever hurt me. Like I said, the Albanian came out. So I was very logical and very calculated about my plan for how I was going to go about a mass murder spree and then a suicide to follow it off because I'm not getting away with it. The amount of people I was going to get, there was no getting away with it. And it's going to cost you yours and every single thing you love in this fucking world. So my plan was I was going to mutilate my ex. I was going to cut his arms and legs off at the elbows because I still wanted to have some nubs. Arms and legs at the knees and elbows. I didn't want to turn him into a full nugget. I wanted to just mutilate the fuck out of him. And I have the medical background to do it. And I have the connections in the medical field to do it. And I'm friends with a lot of doctors and surgeons. And at that time, they all knew what I was going through. And they were all on board to help me. So that's good. So I think now you can you can do those situations. If someone's trying to pick a fight with you, you're just going to walk away. You're not going to, like, fight. But I leave regretting not tearing somebody the fuck up every time. Really? Like, I wish mm. I would have at least, like, hopped on his windshield and smashed it. Or, like, done <laughs> something. Wait, like, but- I have to walk away being the bigger person and just deal with this, like... And you don't feel better being that bigger person. Sometimes no. I feel better being the bigger person. When someone comes for me, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'll just leave it. Because I sometimes. love to attack with my words. But I'm like, sometimes I feel better just like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm gonna, And I'll be like, Trisha, you've grown. And I'll be like, thank you. <laughs> Good you know? job, Trisha. We love to see it. Trisha, see? Trisha knows better. So Trisha is trying to give him a tool of wisdom. Trisha is being thoughtful. She's saying, be the bigger person. Absolutely. Oh, so I think. <laughs> and Leo's I- not there because he's fucking 25 and a child. Okay, he's not wise. He's not helpful. Don't listen to this man. Like, what? Trisha's like, yeah, be the bigger person. And Leo's like, no. So he's not even doing it because it's his values. That's what I mean. You haven't transformed. You're just like not doing, like, you're not doing the impulse, but it's not even because you're a good person, sir. I think it should make you feel better when you leave the situation no, being the worse. bigger. Wow. Like, I have so many regrets. Like, so many times <laughs> I wish I would have just smacked the f out of somebody. Do you, are we listening? Okay, yes. He's admitting it. He has so many regrets for not being violent. And I walk away not having done that, and I, like, live with that regret. Trisha Paytas, Leo Skeppi, who I'm not a fan of, but I'm rooting for Trisha, and I'm so glad to see her recover so significantly over the last few years. Let's see how she does sitting across from one of the most toxic people on the internet, Leo Skeppi. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Just Trish. Today, we have a most amazing guest, the tallest, handsome, strappiest man I've ever seen, Leo Skeppi. <laughs> what does strappiest mean? Um, like, strappy. Like, strappy. Like, guest on. Like, I'm strappy. You would be a good guest on. I don't get it, but work. Okay. Wait, I don't know either. I just know people say like they're big and strappy. They're like okay. a strappy, like strappingly handsome, maybe. I don't oh, know. Thank you. I know. You're so young. I forget. Oh my God. It's crazy. I think I'm everybody's age. I think I'm your age, but I'm like, wow, it's like you're 25. It's so young. I feel like you are though. Okay, I'll take it. Me too. You I feel vibe. like Yeah, with TikTok. I feel like I'm in that group. And I'm just like, wow, no, actually, I'm actually so old. And when I say stuff like strappy, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's strapping. And maybe I'm saying it wrong. Do you know? Okay, I ugh, first of all, Trisha doing fire already. Oh, she's so interesting. Um, Trisha always looks so good. Whoever her makeup artist is is so good at doing her makeup. She's always looked like, especially as of late, her makeup artist ever since Frenemies has been amazing. Like I've always just loved her makeup artist. I would love to like hire them to do my makeup for a day just to see what they would make me look like because like I don't wear a lot of makeup obviously and I only wear makeup on stream. And sometimes I don't even do that. But like she is so – her makeup looks so good. Her hair looks amazing. Her outfit looks amazing. I love everything about it. What a vibe. Um, I really – I just – it looks so – she's so – she looks so good. Yes, Ingrid, Patricia's fit looks so good. It looks so good. Like <clears throat> one thing Trisha is without a doubt is like she is pretty iconic in terms of um, just like the vibes. And also – Honestly, shout out to Moses for being like such a dad because honestly, I did not predict their relationship would go as well. And I'm so glad I was wrong because it's honestly a vibe. It's so cute. Like they're so TikTok focused and like like they made all these TikToks about having their second baby. So they're really good when it comes to business. They're staying relevant. People are covering their Halloween costumes. They're making the news. Like they're so good at investing in one another, which I think is like if you're going to be a social media person, you've got to have a partner that understands it. 
And so I really appreciate that about them, honestly. Like, I really do. Uh, Discord says, do you ever struggle with anxiety relating to being the financial provider? Um, not with being the prov financial provider specifically, but just making money in general. Like, I think just work. Like, normal work stress, the same stress I felt my whole life. I think I feel that. But I don't feel specific stress related to being the financial provider. I just don't – because I've always provided for myself. So it's like how to provide for somebody else seems like natural. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't think so. I think just stress related to making money in general, just like working, which I think is pretty common when you're an entrepreneur, right? Um, speaking of entrepreneurs, Leo Skeppy and Trisha Paytas are both in this sphere. And right now they're entrepreneuring. They're making money off of each other and they're doing it by cross contaminating. Now, Leo Skeppy is not a person that I love. I've reviewed him before with you guys. I think he's incredibly unwell and unqualified to be giving people advice in a way that I think is healthy, but you do you. It's the internet. You can absolutely get advice from Kanye or Leo Skeppy. I'm sorry, yay or Leo Skeppy, but obviously like not my favorite person from the content we've seen of him. I think he has, and I'm sure we'll see it in this podcast, a lot of negative and pessimistic energy and a lot of violent oriented thoughts that I'm not a fan of, but let's keep watching and see how they vibe. You know what strapping is? Like I'm not a, a lesbian. I'm not no, I know what she's saying. She's saying strapping. You're a strapping young man. <laughs> oh my god, we're already getting canceled. Can we talk like this it. or no? You can talk however you want. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're getting canceled, not me. <laughs> yeah, but you you don't ever get canceled. Well, you described yourself as like you said you're like you're like confident, you're like loud, and you said you're problematic, but I was like, I saw that in a podcast and I was like, but I don't think you're problematic at all. Um, that was because Trisha hasn't seen his shit or she doesn't believe it's problematic, but he's problematic as hell. The nah. direct quote. I have the direct quote actually, because I didn't want to misquote you. And you said that you were like, I am oh very very outspoken, very confident, and problematic. That's how you described yourself. Problematic, but the way that I address a problem or a situation is like no rebuttal. There's like, I make the point and it's solid and it's like, oh, fuck, like you can't argue it. That's why I don't have, I was oh. talk, we were talking like shit before we started. <laughs> and I was like, you can't like, I can't have public beef. Like you can't argue with me because I'm going to dead the point where you can't fight it. Well, and that's even more reason why you should, because if you always win, then you'll never look bad. Like me, <laughs> I have public beef and I'm always on the wrong side because I don't know how to articulate myself <laughs> or me. I'm just in the wrong. Yeah. You have my number. Call me. <laughs> oh my God. Like Leo. But call me in your earpiece. Like <laughs> you guys. I never know. I know whenever I'm in public beef, I always lose because I'm just like always saying the wrong thing. But you think you're always in the right with your beef. No, I can address when I'm wrong. Name once. Name one time. Name one time. But okay. like I stand so strong in the right and can explain it in a way where like I'm going to knock you in the head with it and you can be like, damn. Yeah. People, but you have that. Name one time. Air about you anyways. People just like like you. You could say, because you're. Thank you. I do not. I did not like him. I'm not one of those people. You guys weren't either. When we were watching him, um, you guys didn't seem at the end of it. Maybe it's all of our neurodivergent asses because mm -mm, I could not. Mm-mm. Cute. podcast is like very like even when I watch it it's very like um what's the word like a trainer that yells at you you're yeah. like that person you know where you're like if you lack self-discipline you're ugly and I'm just like <laughs> oh my god so when I saw you we came in today and I had to admit that I just went to Taco Bell and I was like I have no self-discipline like don't even and you're like <laughs> men always get away with this I don't know why audiences love it from men like audiences love being yelled at by men they do not like being yelled at by women <laughs> I get very into it, but like my podcast yeah. is very, like you said, trainer yelling at you, but it's more like mental health related, but it's like, I'm, I'm yelling at the voices in you that are hurting you and making fun of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like teaching you how to quiet them. And I'm like fighting for you. Like I can say the most outlandish things and things people will be like triggered by a lot, but you know, my intent is nothing but like love for you and wanting like the best for you. Right. So they're like disarmed. They're not like, okay, he's not attacking me. He's like fighting for me. And it's like coming from a place where you're like, I've been there. Like you've already yes. like, you've like, I've hated myself. I've had like low self-worth. So I think that's why. <gasps> good question, Colleen. I wonder if Trish Sims for everyone now because it's good for business or if it's genuine. Well, it's just good for business. It is. It is good for business to be excited to talk to all your guests. I mean, to make them feel like, oh, I watch you. I understand you. Like, you know what I mean? It is like it is good for business. So I assume it's business related, honestly, because she used to fight with everyone before. She still kind of fights with some people a little bit, barely.
I like it too because normally I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is like so like aggressive. But I think because like <laughs> you've been there, but I've never seen photos of you fat. You talk about being fat, but have you mm-hmm. posted them anywhere? Not really. Can you send it to us so we can insert? Because I want to see what your version of fat is. Because I was like, I have a hard time believing you. Yeah, I want I want proof. Because even when you were like puffier, when you like. Let's see if he gives proof because he never gives receipts for his crazy stories. Remember his um, whole um, unaliving plan he had? I want I want the proof. Let's, ho- let's see if he puts it in. When you started, I was like, okay, you're not like fat. I was never like crazy, like fat, fat. But like I just was like big. But I, I, me and my family hold weight very Where's the proof? Y'all, I don't know if you pre-watched. Where's the proof? Weird. Like, we don't look... We get, like, solid fat. It's like it's like you just fill uh, us up with air and we're like... Uh, like, there's no, like, jiggle. Because, again, I'm... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe in, like, 10 minutes they're going to show the picture. But the reason I had an issue with Leo Skippy before is he had no receipts for his unaliving plan. He said he had doctors who were help, going to help him murder somebody. He, like, claimed, like, all these things about people. Like, he made up these crazy stories, right? And now part of his shtick is that he used to be fat. Now he's muscular, really relatable to a lot of people. But like, is that true? Is that not true? I mean, if it's true, great. If it's not true, just another reason I don't like him. People shake, move. It's mm. like you're just like fucking swollen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is a good fat, honestly. That's like a good. It's fat. hell though. You didn't like it at all. Because no. you said you were like not happy. Because I'm like at the stage where I'm like kind of fat and happy. Like, of course I'd want to be skinny. Like, oh my God, to be 100 pounds. Yes, that's my dream. <laughs> but I'm like kind of so happy right they don't there's no photo bullshit see how he like froze when she's like can you show us photos we can put in the podcast i bet it's not true i bet it's not true now and i'm like oh i don't want to like not eat because i love food but i mean we'll get into that but you weren't happy and i don't mean to be cynical but i mean a lot of people out here are just like saying shit at all there wasn't like you had no confidence because i feel like you're someone who'd have confidence even if you are like a bigger oh i'm sorry you're right shadow b he had doctors ready to dismember a guy Leaving him alive. Yes, you're right. They weren't going to murder him. They were going to dismember his body. You're right. I'm sorry. My bad. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have as much confidence and I just felt very bad about myself. And like Mm. the whole, it's like the mental hell of like day to day. Every move you make, everything you do, the way you sit, the way you're like conscious of how your shirt's falling. Like Mm -hmm. for me to wear tight things, I never would have before. But like always moving your shirt, changing it. Like when you get dressed in the morning, Mm -hmm. it's like the mental hell of just like everything you do. Like, I hated that. Yeah. And people don't talk about that. No, that's true. like, some people are okay with it. But, like, I personally, like, I hated it. Yeah, I think there's, like, a difference between being, like, okay with it and then it's, like, but it is uncomfortable. Like, it would be so Uh nice to not have to, like, you know, adjust and, oh, which way am I sitting? Yeah, no, it definitely is. I think every bigger person feels that to some degree. But It's uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. So when you're alone, you're good. (laughs) So That's when you were alone, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Were you still like, were you hooking up? Were you still like dating people, or were you just like that self conscious where you like weren't dating people that? Not really. Okay. Like Not I'm very that. selective with like who gets access to me. Like I've been single for three years. Oh my gosh, that's wild. You're 25, so since you're 22, mm-hmm. which is crazy. And how long have you been on TikTok for? Like two years, two and a half. Yeah, people definitely talk about that. Okay. Another branding technique is to be like, no one ever talks about this. No one ever talks about this. Lots of people talk about lots of things. Right? Like, lots of people talk about lots of things. Obviously, he's just saying in his bubble, or it's good branding. Like, no one talks about this. Like, no one ever, I'm the only one who's going to talk about it this way. Yeah, maybe. Oh, my. Did you start doing quarantine? Right at the end of it. Oh, really? So, during 2020, when everyone was on lock. I feel like I'm losing my hearing. Why is it so low for me? Is my ear full of water? What is happening? I cleaned my ears today. Why can't I hear anything today? Now, what were you doing? Like, right at the beginning, like, March 2020, what was, a, like, your life like? You're a nurse. Wait, what? <laughs> were you, like... <laughs> my life was not good. I was oh my partying gosh. all the time, like, doing Molly every weekend. Oh. And, like, I always say, like, dealing cards. Okay. But, like, I was dealing. Wait, Because, like, a lot of shit happened with, like, nursing. And it was, like, I realized you make way more money over here. And it was just, like, a shit show. My life was not good. Have you talked about this before? I feel like I've researched so much. I never heard about you dealing cards. Mm-hmm. What? Okay, this is like a real life Breaking Bad. So <laughs> you're you're in, so you were a nurse for how long? Three years, like two and a half, three. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you go. So you have to go to nursing school for that. So you got what an RN or a certain, RN, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, oh wow. So you're nursing, and then what is the flip? Like where are you? Like okay, now it's time to become Breaking Bad. Yeah, maybe he's single. Alice is right. Maybe he's single because people are scared he'll have them dismembered, bro. Yeah. Um, it was more of like someone 
submitted false claims against me, uh, like to the Florida Board of Nursing against my license, and they launched an investigation. No. And it like fully fucked me for like six months while they were investigating it. Because the claims that they made, like, they were wealthy and they paid a lot of people to, like, back them up and, like, oh, threatened to wow. sue the company I worked for and all of us and that. So they act- they asked me to just go inactive while the investigation was on. And then after the investigation, after six months, they were like, oh, we found nothing. You're good. What? But, like, I had to figure out how to s- survive. Like, you were on suspension for. See, I want, I want, I want, like, receipts or something. He just tells so many stories. It's why I don't trust people who tell a lot of sensational stories. It, guys, how many stories did Trisha tell us that were fake? Right? Like, how many stories do people tell us on the internet that are just fake? So that's why I don't watch these podcasts. Because, no offense, like, I just, I'm so bored about listening to fake people tell fake stories. Like, it's just not interesting to me. Like, I can't believe you. Like, again, you know what I mean? And if you guys want to see my earrings, I shared it to the Discord. Um, But that's why I'm, like, a little annoyed a little bit by, like, the stories. Because they're just so over the top. They're just so over the top. You know what I mean? Six months. Not suspension, but it was like, you can work, but the company I was with was so scared of getting sued. They were like, please just go inactive. We're not going to fire you, but just voluntarily go inactive because we we don't want him like trying to sue us and like do all this and that. What? Like it was just nuts. Why? Do you know why why they targeted you? It was an ex. <gasps> why did they target you? It was my ex. Like what ex, girl? Mm-mm. 70 says, who wouldn't want a violent drug addict for their nurse? <laughs> Touche, girl. No. Yeah. Oh, my, my first relationship. Oh, my God. So first and only relationship because you said you've been single for like three years. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you? Like oh, you- cut in the podcast. A cut in the podcast. How do you live your life? How do you like go on? A cut in the podcast. I'm sorry. I just want to know what it was. Why would they cut it out? But they cut out. And whoever edited that did not make it smooth. Vibe it out. <laughs> like, he should be scared of you, though. Like your stature alone. Like is he a big guy, too? No. But he's just got the money and, like, the wealth and stuff. Yeah, but now I do, too. So let's fuck around and find yeah. out. I make more than him now. No way. So you can. So you could almost hire a private investigator to, like, track him and scare him and stuff like that. I could. Like, he made false, like, claims against me and sued me, like, multiple times. And I didn't have money. To so I had to represent myself. Mm. Ooh, can we look that up? Are these, like, public records if you were sued or something? Is there, like, a public record of this? So I had to just go to court and, like, wing the shit, and I did it in one. Wow. But, like, now that I have the money, it's like, you know, let's not go dick to dick. Yeah. Let's not try and play who's is bigger because I'm going to win. Would you ever counter sue him? Would you ever do anything now? He, it's at a point now where, like, he hasn't done anything, and he's... I'm sorry. How dusty do you think this set is? Like, how many cobwebs or bugs do you think could live in this, like, carpet wall? Do you think they have to vacuum the carpet wall? So, like, gone... Yeah. And, like, I've exposed a lot Mm -hmm. online. So, like, I'm just sitting here waiting, minding my business. And as soon as you want to try something, start something, sue, I'll bury you under the name that you made for yourself. Like, because everybody wants to know who it is, who it is, who it is. Mm -hmm. So, it's, like, you're silent. I just want to know if it's real, girl. And you know, like, a little, like, what is it called? Like, a little hedgehog. As soon as you pop your little head up, I'm stabbing it. Like, my my following will come down on you. Yeah. Not a hedgehog, a, uh, a diglet. Yeah, no, for sure. Plus, I'll sue you separately. Right. You have the money. You have the following. <laughs> <laughs> you have the like, muscle. <laughs> this is the best comeback story. It's amazing. Ever. So you feel secure. You feel like good oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. You feel like. And mentally, he can't, like, you can't mess with me anymore the way he used to. So, well, like, I'm mentally so strong. I can't, you can't, like, scare me. What, how did, how did that change from 21 to, like, only 25? That's only four years. How did you, like. Uh, just a reminder, this guy who allegedly ruined his life, he also created, a, like, a murder on a living plan. And got coworkers involved to cut off his limbs and torture him. He apparently evoked his coworkers to help him torture and kill a man. I'm sorry, torture and keep a man alive so he bleeds out slowly. So just like FYI, just like just a reminder of this guy's sensationalism, the way he tells his own stories. You know what I mean? Um, it's just kind of crazy. Like, what? build the strength mentally with what just like if you said like back in 20 like when he was dating you doing all this he was able to like control you and destroy you like mentally how did you get stronger now where it doesn't affect you mentally and it's not like hurting your mental health kind of like choosing my consequences Mm -hmm. and like not hiding but also being able to like i saw how resourceful i can be Mm -hmm. so like when my nursing thing happened i'm like i found a way to make it 
and then I've like made it so far like to where I am now. I'm resourceful as I can rely on myself to figure anything out. Mm -hmm. I no longer question like my ability to handle things mm -hmm. and get through anything. Right. So like it was just a matter of going through hell and then getting out of it and showing myself I could do it. But also like the day to day when someone's like messing with you. Like <laughs> Shadow B says Leo almost makes me respect Sneeko. Not quite, but you know. That's so funny. That's so funny. You know that from all like the suits you've been in, all the drama you've had. Mm -hmm. It's like just the day to day, what you wake up and deal with, and you wake up and you're like, I wish I didn't. Yeah. Like that's dealing with that is a separate conversation. Just because you're in it. And so being removed from it, you were just able to like build like strength up from that and just being like not involved. Kind of. But like it was still a lot like after because you talk about like not you never really found therapy worked for you so that's mm -hmm. why i'm like curious to see red flag red flag red flag not that therapy works for all people but i wonder if therapy didn't work for the um unaliving torture planner because he didn't want to face himself oh guys do you think it's a red flag when therapy doesn't work for somebody and they think they're better than it at 25 years old and then they start a guru business claiming they like know how to help people by bragging about how they created like a mm, unaliving torture plan. Like what the work is that you did. Cause a lot of people be like, I went to therapy and I got help with it. So it's like, you were just like, were you just like reading books? Were you watching videos? Were you watching own motivational people like yourself? Mm -hmm. I watched like every YouTube person you can find. That's how I know who's good and who's not. And I talk shit openly. Who's the good ones? I love Teal Swan. Ah! <laughs> Teal Swan? The cultist Teal Swan? Hulu did a literal series over her being an incredibly big red flag. And he thinks Teal Swan's one of the good ones. I also openly talk shit. Leo Skeppy is insane. And he's absolutely, if any of these stories are correct, he needs to be investigated. Like, he's absolutely insane if any of these stories are correct. Hey, I haven't ever heard any of these people. Another good one. I want to, though. No, Trisha. Trisha, 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 Trisha. Stay away from Teal Swan, Trisha. Trisha, 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 Trisha. Watch the Hulu series, Trisha. Stay away from Teal Swan. Come on, girl. Mm-mm, girl. Swan, I love her. I'm going to her event Saturday in LA. Oh, my you gosh. Go? No, Trisha. Trisha, 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 Trisha. No Teal Swan. Literally uh, yeah, wait, wait. <laughs> where is it? I mean, I want to. What is it? So is it like a it's Tony like, Robbins thing where it's like a big convention? Kind of. Okay. And they just end <laughs> Shadow Beast says I just broke into hives hearing that. Oh, I can't with him. Uh, Isaac Aseko says, um, every time I'm reminded he's my age, my brain short circuits. Are we sure he's not lying about that too? I don't, girl... And what is it? They just like talk at, like give you motivational speaking, like. Kind of, but like she'll, she's allegedly like very spiritually in tune and is like clairvoyant, extrasensory, can like oh. see energies, feel energies, like see consciousness and like see things like a medium. Okay, I love that. But like deeper. Mm -hmm. So like she's able to like access knowledge and things that like most people don't, like we don't know if it's true or not. Wasn't Moses a bit of a male teal swan? Yeah, when I reviewed him last, he really was. But it seems like he's gone away from it. So maybe that's, like, good or not. I don't know. Again, like, being susceptible to these things. Uh, it's They prey on the weak, bro. Don't do this. Like, oh, uh, 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 I would never. Stop it. Uh, is this fan base mostly male or female? Does anyone know? Great question. Do we know that, guys? Oh, my God. But some of the perspectives she's been able to access and then shared have helped me a lot. Mm, that's like she thinks, okay, Teal Swan literally thinks she's magical. Just stop there, okay? Like, again. Mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Yes, Anna, I was rolling my eyes that hard. It, look, okay, I was about to give myself a fucking heart attack. Ugh. The most important thing if you like get something from it anyways yeah, yeah. so that's interesting so because i had read somewhere that like because i didn't think you were like spiritual because i know i think i saw you talking about manifestation how you didn't think it was real and then you started journaling and now you think it's real so do you consider yourself to be like spiritual as well like get into like oh, yeah. the subconscious interesting see i feel like maybe because I, I watch all your things and i feel like you don't talk. no about you don't trisha obviously not bro you can watch so even the little bit we watched of his content he obviously thinks he's a fucking 
That's why he likes Teal Swan, because they're both narcissists enough to think they're magic. You don't have magic. You're just a narcissist. You don't have magic. You're just a narcissist. Say it with me. Like, you do not have magic. You're a narcissist. Like, Jesus Christ. Okay? It's okay to believe in the woo-woo. It's okay to even believe in God. But to think, like, you have it in within you. Like, girl, sit down. You're just a liar. Lying is not magic. Scamming people isn't magic. It's just lying. You know what I mean? This man, like, there's no way these – I just do not believe these stories. About that a lot. Like, I feel like you don't <laughs> talk about, like, the spirituality of it, which I wouldn't think you would be because you're so, you know, like you. You know, I just – interesting. So what what got you on that path? Were you always like that? Did you – No. So was this mm. Teal Swanson? They cut it again. What? So <laughs> what got you on that path? Were you always like that? Did you – No. So it was this mm. Teal Swan. Oh, there's another cut. It's in the one who did <laughs> no, it. No, no, no. Okay. It was like a lot of things, just like the whole growing up like religious and my grandmother was a nun and she's a f quack. No, so like I grew up like with that kind of Christian beginning. Yeah, yeah. Good question. I watched all your things. Girl, did you watch the, the murder torture plan? Yeah. Did you watch the murder torture plan? Did you watch that video? With like. My family, and then, like, that was my mom's side of the family. My dad's side of the family is Albanian, so they were, like, more Muslim-related. So, like, I saw both sides, and it's, like, Ugh. when I was going through, like, the worst of the worst, it was, like, anything I asked for or, like, prayed to or begged, nothing came, nothing helped, nothing fixed it. Mm. And then I got to a point where I was, really, like, praying to the devil. I was, like, if this shit is real, like, they're not answering, f*** them. Like, you help me then. And Wow. Like, I got that bad. Wow. And it was silent. Girl, we've all been there, please. On both ends. Both. Up and down. So I was like, well, damn. <laughs> You're like, okay, none of it's real. <laughs> <laughs> like the typical things of like, this is just my own experience. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's real or not. Mm -hmm. I might die and eat my words and be sent to hell for being gay. Who knows? Yeah, right. <laughs> but I found like spirituality. I don't believe that. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I don't either. <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> like send me to hell. And then. we're all a little gay, so I think we'd all be in hell. <laughs> like everyone's a little gay. <laughs> No, where was I even? I don't know where we're going. So with this. you spiritual, like we you said, you grew up Christian, you didn't know heaven or hell, and now you're like, I'm trying to figure out where you got the spiritual path of it all. Yeah, it kind of like hit where like nothing worked, and then I started tapping into my emotions, because like I didn't cry for like seven or eight years, wow. and I was like, something's wrong. Like I only felt pissed off or happy. But you never cried. I never cried. I never felt anything. Like terrible things would happen to me, and I wouldn't get upset. Hmm. But I was like, I started going to therapy because. But therapy doesn't work. Let's see what happened in therapy where it didn't work for him. When I was like 19, I was like, I don't feel things. Like, I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And then I reconnected to my emotions. And then it like reconnected me to my intuition. And it's like, I just started understanding things and knowing things I wasn't supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the more you tap into like your higher self and like spirit guides and like all the spirituality aspect, it just unfolds. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's, it's undeniable what I've experienced. Once you tap into your higher thinking, you double down and never apologize for creating a murder suicide plan or a murder plan. Like literally, remember he was going to he wasn't going to murder. He was going to torture someone and then off himself. Like again, wouldn't you apologize for that when you have some self-awareness? But no, it's all about blaming other people. Red flag. But like it's not typical. Like that's why I don't talk about it a lot because it's not like the popular opinion and it's not based off of like a book or like anything proven or like long held beliefs. From okay, that's why you need to read more books. See how he claims to like be a part of the 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 spiritual bubble, the metaphysical bubble, and he's like it's not a girl Spirituality and metaphysics is very well documented in a lot of places, at least as a lived experience, right? Throughout cultures, traditions have been passed down. But also, if you're not actually engaging with the bubble, you're just using it to push a TikTok or a narrative. Hello? It's like Teal Swan. She's just using it to push a narrative that she has the power and people should come to her for her power. Hello? Yes. Wasn't he planning on killing the innocent family members too and their dogs? Yes. And their dogs. From like a lot of people, it's like what I've experienced is what I believe. So it's okay. <laughs> it's gonna be the name for your book. <laughs> but manifestation, like my whole I manifestation is absolutely real. Okay, absolutely. so you do believe in the manifestation. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I like agree. Like law of attraction, law of mirroring, like I believe in all of it. Yeah. But like the whole manifestation where people talk about, oh, like get a crystal and just write down what you want to happen and like yeah. it's gonna happen. Yeah, you don't we don't No like, girl. Wait, like, so what do you do that's different? You have to move your ass. Like you have to like 
whenever you like this is how i do it like <laughs> yeah. whenever i ask for something i write something down i will pay attention to any new thought or idea i get mm -hmm. and then follow it so like if i randomly am driving like the next day and i get a random urge to like go down a certain road i go oh and it's like you'll find synchronicities you'll find like numbers you'll find things that like resonate with you and it's like you just have to you have to get in tune with like your thoughts and like notice the new ideas <laughs> and that's where it's going to lead you it's not like you just sit in your room say you want a million dollars and it's just going to fall out of your ass right yeah that's what's promoted a lot it's yeah. like your thoughts create your reality no babe yeah <laughs> or they can create like your path because you always think right. I want to win a million dollars or something. It's like, okay, well, there's a path and sometimes it's a different path. Yeah. I always think mine's coming through the lottery, but then I'm like, oh, this worked out better and I also got a million dollars this way. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. When you first tapped into it and you say it's like not typical, were you like, how were you tapping into it? Were you just like silent, like, you know, meditation style or like, how are you tapping in? I can't meditate. You can't meditate. I fall asleep. I love meditating. <laughs> Wait, so I want to know how you get it. He doesn't meditate and he doesn't do therapy. Him and that uh, alpha woman we who got rejected from the matchmaker, they should date. In there, then how would people, how do people, because a lot of people say that. They're like, I can't meditate, like, I, you know, whatever, and I get that. So how do you tap in to the higher being early on? Like, yeah, he says his grandma's crazy for being a nun. How is he different? Exactly, Val. Like, like, how do you do it? I just kind of started to, it's like gaining self-awareness and like gaining a better understanding of everything. Mm -hmm. So like if I felt a certain way. I literally do this to this day, like I'll pen to paper and I'll just write out how I'm feeling, the way I'm looking at it, and then like how it makes sense. Or this probably is why he resonates with so many people because most people are just like what they feel is what they think and they're not actually being self-aware. And they think they're actualized because they're having sort of a, they can like identify their feelings, but it might not even be the real feeling they're having. That's why therapy is so important or meditation because you're actually looking for what is like true versus like, what you feel but i think that's probably why he's so popular because like most people aren't actually doing the work they're just like barely getting by and like it's good enough like the twin flames people none of them were doing the work that's why they fell for the cult the reason you fall for cults the reason he falls for teal swan is because he's not doing the work he's not reading the books he's not going to therapy he's not meditating that's why you fall for teal swan because you're not educating yourself. The Discord said he thinks understanding your emotions and trusting your gut is learning things he shouldn't. Who told him it isn't allowed? Uh, he isn't allowed to introspect God. Am I misunderstanding? Yeah, he's just doing the. He's a. He's a. He is. Um. He is like the guy who falls for the cults, and he's the guy who also creates the cults. It's just cult thinking. Cult thinking is like, because I said it, it must be true. You ever a teenager and someone's like debating you and just because they sound right, you're like, yeah, that must be what's true. It sounds right. No, just because it sounds right doesn't mean it's true, right? So the reason he would promote or fall for Teal Swan is because he's susceptible to cult-like thinking and he's also the one who creates the cult around himself. You know what I mean? Like the irony is he's like him, like him and Teal Swan, I think really believe their own shtick versus, um, versus, uh, like Andrew Tate and Sneeko. I don't really think they fully believe their own shtick, which is why it always looks like they're flailing because they're not, they built a cult following, but it's not like the same. They're different kinds of energies. You know what I mean? Or how it doesn't make sense. And then I just like try to understand my emotions at every level from every angle. And it opens you up to all these new perspectives. Yeah, but like that's okay. That's the right wording, but the wrong way of doing it. There's no way he's really doing that. Because he hasn't in the videos we've seen, not taking accountability. He's promoting Teal Swan. He's like promoting cult-like behavior. He's not actually doing the work. Like he's doing the faux work. It's like performative. Like going to the gym and making like, you know, it's like. It's not the same. Just because he apparently went from fat to skinny doesn't mean, you know what I mean? That he's having a full relationship with that transformation. You know what I mean? And you, like your brain just kind of unlocks and you see things a lot different and you see like all the like possibilities and potentials and like how it flips and how you're not always right. And mm -hmm. how like this, pers this perspective will make you feel this. So if you want- He says that, but name a time he's talked about when he was wrong. He'll say that like you're not always right, but when have you been wrong? When have you transformed? What is the proof? As you guys know, I have amazing videos on this, showing my transformation, showing my photo, showing my documentation. Where's his document? Where's his receipts? I want a receipt. I want to feel something different, like switch to perspective. But you have to see why you're tied. I wish. Oh my God. If I like ooh. that one before you try and flip. Right. It's, it's, it's so if hard to explain, but I can show you how to do it. It's just like. 
t- year. Yeah, to explain it like, out. If you brought something up and like we actually like I used to coach people a lot on this, like life coach. Oh, you did. Yeah. So like if you tell me something, I will see it like. Un- yes, Amber. My thing is Trish is reaching out for real tools and he can't offer her any. I know who Trish. I know Trisha knows who I am. So I, at least as far as I know, because she tried to take down one of my videos and I fought it and I won. But like, I just want to know, like, why doesn't she reach out to me in some ways? I've reached out to her. She hasn't returned my messages. But like, why does she reach out to a Leo Skeppy? Why do people like, I know I'm hard to swallow. I know I'm a hard pill to swallow and I'm very critical. But like Leo Skeppy does not have your best intentions in mind. He's he's like literally pushing you to like a cult leader, right? Like that is not the direction I would send you. Like, if Trisha really wants the answers, why do you think people default to Leo Skeppy? What is that? Because in my mind, I get obviously, like, sus culty vibes. I know how to suss out cults so fast, bro. MLM scams. I, like, I could snort that shit a mile away. Like, what? Trisha isn't ready for you? Ugh, maybe. Like, maybe. It's just, like, so annoying. Like, obviously, he doesn't have her best intentions in mind. He just asked her to go to a Teal Swan event. No! Don't go to Teal Swan. Don't give her your money. She's like literally a cult, bro. Oh my God. It's so annoying. Like that kind of stuff. Like you are not helping people by pushing them into a cult. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Like, mm, stop it. You can't save the world, bros. You can only give them tools. Unfold. Like if I tell you what, like if I tell you like one of my (sighs) dreams or something like that or my manifestations. Not your dreams, but like something that you're dealing with, feeling or like you need help with. It'll just kind of like unfold. And do you have to like get to know the person? Like if I told you right now, it's like, oh God, I have a really horrible problem spending money. Like I'm always down to zero every month on my bank account. Like what, like is that like a thing that you would see unfold? Yeah. And what would you see? Yeah, like I'm going to have to ask you a lot of questions. Is this something you want to go into? Okay. No, I mean we can. Yeah, actually, because <laughs> I love your spending ones. I love your, you do a lot of talks on spending because one of my things, I'm not down to zero every month, but I do spend way too much money and I've always spent way too much money and it's just like how it's kind of like all your videos like the eating the stuff like what you say makes sense but it like I was worried Trisha was spending too much money I was a little worried about that for her just based off of things that have been happening recently um I was concerned about that that she's spending too much money when she said like I'm not down to zero does that mean she's even close like Trisha should be making a lot of money so has she not figured out her finances yet? That's hard. How to be a whole human being, you know? See, that's difficult. How do you, uh, has Leo figured out his finances? Like, have you looked at his bank account? It's like, oh, Doesn't click. So what do you say to people who are like, yeah, this makes sense, but it doesn't, it doesn't click. Like, I can't, it doesn't help me change who I am or change what I'm doing wrong, what for instance. Click? Give me an example for you. Um, Just like the like your video, the lack of self-discipline, you know? You're like, you have to like, you know, respect yourself. And like, anyways, when you tell like, oh, people will respect you more if you like look better. And I agree with that too. Everyone's so fat phobic. If you're skinny, like they're just going to respect you more. But for me, there's no like, what's the thing to like change? Like, how do you get to actually, because you're like, you can change yourself, you know, change yourself. And it's like, but I can't. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, but I can't if I could. You can transform yourself, but you have to have a understanding of why you want to do it in the first place, right? But I would, but I can't. I still spend too much and I still eat too much. Wait, why do you think you can't? I don't know. Because <laughs> I just can't. It's so weird. I think the biggest thing for you is like being aware that like every action you take is a choice. So like that's one thing that yeah. I struggle with with binge eating. Like I used to binge eat really bad. And it's like I would feel certain things and I would just want to eat. And I'm like, I can't stop. Like, I just have to do it. Yeah. And that's it was how I just feel. a matter of like practicing, like, whenever I'm about to binge, like, be like, I'm choosing this mm-hmm. instead of like, oh. This is the Andrew Tate advice that doesn't work. You can't just not choose when you're having problems with food addiction or you're having impulse control issues. Like, saying just choose not to do it is not helpful advice. That's why you work with a therapist who can get you on a plan. That's why you work with a philosophy mentor or teacher who can help you with an understanding of the self and the consciousness. It's why you work with a meditation teacher. It's why you work by reading books and figuring it out. But, like, the core of Trisha's problems are not going to be solved by, like, just don't do it. Like, that's not helpful advice, right? And we don't even know if it worked for him because we've never seen a before and after photo. How do we know he's done any of this, right? How do we know he used to be a binge eater? How do we know he used to be fat? Where are the receipts, right? Where's the before and after? How do we know that? 
You know what I mean? And so again, when you're getting advice from him and he's saying therapy didn't work for me, I don't meditate. And he's saying, oh, just like every time you're about to binge, just know it's a choice. Like, oh, super helpful for an addict who has impulse controls. Very good, bro. I Hold on, guys. Have we told Eugenia Cooney not to be skinny today? Should we go to Eugenia Cooney's Twitter and TikTok and yell at her right now? You think that would help? I can't stop or I can't not do it. Or like if you're eating and you're like, I can stop right now. I'm going to choose to keep going. It's like right. just seeing that you are in control. Because like I used to convince myself I wasn't in control a lot. Yeah. But like everything's a choice. Like I, you can't discount like the feeling. Was making a murder-suicide plan a choice? Feelings of like how overwhelmed you are with. Vegan says your levels are hard to understand right away in mine and others from what I hear. So I think if a video comes up about them, all they see is a video that seems critical and it's confusing. That's true. Let's go, Ryle Kittenhouse. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Introspection is easy if you don't extrospect Brit. True introspection is not that easy. You can introspect on a spectrum like babies introspect, right? Like children introspect. But it's like there's a spectrum. Obviously, babies can introspect. They have a relationship with themselves and their consciousness. You know, like toddlers have a relationship with themselves and their, you know. So it's like, okay, there's enough. Like Trisha is able to identify I have a problem. That's really good. That's awesome. Now it's a matter of how do I solve that problem? Well, you have to decide, is it mental health? You have to find an addictions counselor. You have to deal with somebody with addiction issue if it's addiction, right? Is it um, a matter of philosophy and understanding the consciousness? That's going to take years of meditation and discipline. It's going to take a lot of suffering and crying, and you're probably not going to feel satisfied, and you're probably going to hate yourself for a while because you're going to hate the circumstance, and you're probably not going to be able to podcast, and you probably won't be able to TikTok, and you probably won't feel pretty enough to post content, but like that's the problem. To face yourself means possibly sacrifice sacrificing everything you've built up to it's about spending time doing something else and it's a full-time job sometimes to introspect you know what I mean so yeah like that's the problem is like you know are people you know it's it's a journey bros it's a journey but you have to really understand like why it's there in the first place you know what I mean with the emotion of like this is why I want this comfort mm -hmm. it's like drug addicts or like people that binge eat like I used to like you have these emotions and you feel so run by it. But like, even though you feel this way, you are still in control. It doesn't feel like it. But just like reminding myself of that broke me free from a lot. How and how? How does, because I, I, I totally follow that logic. How do you, how does that help you stop binging then? It's just, it started of like just telling myself I'm aware of the control I have. Like I didn't change anything about binging for like a few months. Mm -hmm. Like just reminding myself like, I want to binge. It's like, I'm choosing it then. Like, I'm going to choose to go to the kitchen right now and I'm going to go choose to eat this. And it's like, if I'm not going to stop, it's like, I would just say to myself, like, you can stop right now. And I would be like, I don't want to. And you were fine with it. Yeah. And I just kept going and then it got to a point where I was like, mm. I have to cut the shit and I can't keep telling myself. It changed the way I talked to myself. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, I'm not powerless to these feelings. I'm not powerless to like what I want to do in the moment mm -hmm. it's like it just makes you aware that it's a choice it's not a fun one right and it doesn't feel good to remind yourself of that but like i didn't change the actual yeah he keeps amber says she keeps asking him how though and he only answers what worked for him that's why you have to refer to professionals or people in fields or you have to refer to outside of yourself because like what worked for me won't work for you that's just like the fact we have to find what works for Trisha. We have to find exactly the right um, book to read, the right therapist to have. A again, if she's like binge eating, you know what I mean? Like we're really talking about a professional needs to come in. And she has the money, hopefully. Well, maybe not because she keeps spending her money. But we need to get the right professional, not just any old therapist, an addictions counselor, somebody who maybe helps with body issues and eating issues, like you can't just go to any therapist. You have to go to somebody who specializes in breaking extremely strong habits and conditioning you've given yourself, right? So this is like what's really key is like we have to get you to the right person to help you with this thing. Ugh. Millions hate being told we have a choice, don't we? Bro, he's so frustrating. Like, in the philosophy sense, you have a relationship with your consciousness in which you have a relationship with choice after you do the steps of even learning what a choice is. What is a choice? I don't have a choice that I have intrusive thoughts. I do not control whether or not I get intrusive thoughts. 
I only choose how to react to those intrusive thoughts after I've learned to control my relationship with those thoughts. So sometimes my intrusive thoughts are so bad that sometimes I do just cry about them and I recognize that the choice I have in that moment is not stopping my reaction to the thoughts. It's not acting on them past that. It's saying now when I used to get intrusive thoughts, I would self-harm. But now I don't self-harm. I sit with my thoughts and I let them, rec I recognize that they're there and I cry about it, but I do not self-harm, right? And eventually you don't maybe even cry anymore. But like to go through those steps is to acknowledge they're even happening in the first place. I used to think my intrusive thoughts were me. I used to think I would think these horrible things about myself. And then I was like, I don't think this way about myself, but I don't choose whether or not I have intrusive thoughts. They just happen. They're intrusive. I only can choose how to have a react, like how to engage with whatever freedom I have in that moment, whatever free will I can evoke to deal with those thoughts. But I don't choose whether or not I have the thoughts, right? Like he has to understand, like you can't say, oh, like choose not to binge eat. Or I understand his perspective is like learn that you have a choice in the first place. But that's, that's like, it is, she's asking for the literal tools and he doesn't know how to give it to her because he doesn't actually know how to help people he only knows how to give general enough advice that people can map it onto themselves right which my industry my thing is different I want to work with individuals to give them advice just for them I can't make general advice for people because I don't believe in generalizations you cannot generalize self-care you can only help the individual because it's their individual self-care you know Nero says, what kind of intrusive thoughts you have? Um, no offense, but that's kind of private. But, um, you know, intrusive. Um, I feel like that's what he's saying to a degree. He's saying it without even knowing how he got there because I don't think he really got there. I think he's coping, right? It's like the difference between listening to Dr. K and then listening to me who has less tools and then listening to Leo Skeppy. Leo Skeppy has the least amount of tools. Just because he made money doesn't mean he's actually good at his job, right? So that's kind of the thing. And that's the thing that's important is like just because he made money doesn't mean he's helping. We just watched a documentary on a cult leader who made money. Is he helping? If people in the cult want to like they feel hello, it's like he you know what I'm saying? Like just because Till Swan makes money doesn't mean she's helping. And just because you gain a tool from her doesn't mean overall her work is like causing less harm than more harm. Like, again, we want to harm reduce. We want to harm reduce. Behavior for a while. Just mm -hmm. like reminding myself I wasn't control and seeing the control I had and just seeing the choices I was making and not just kind of like going into things and just like, being like, I don't know why I do this. Like it just going into it, like it made me aware of a lot. Interesting, because when you said, I know you talked about binging before. I, I, I don't know where it was. It maybe your podcast or someone else's, and you would say like, "Oh, fuck it, it doesn't matter," and you'd be like, "But it does matter." Like that, like you know, that binge does make a difference, stuff like that. Because that's how I think too. You know, in the moment you're like, "I'm depressed, life sucks, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna binge." But how to get rid of that mentality? Like, how did you do that? How are you just like, okay, actually, it does matter. It's weird, but like experiencing the consequence of when I do it. Mm -hmm. So like when I would binge eat really bad, like I would wake up the next day like puffy, bloated, feel like shit, mm -hmm. tired, mood was down. And I would just convince myself this is just a bad day. And I'm like then that's what I'm talking about. Like you have to see how things make sense. So like for me to feel this way right now, what makes sense? How like could what could have caused this? Mm -hmm. And you see that it was the binge eating. So you see the consequence. You feel it. You go through it. You get back like your face. You, you depuff that day, and then nighttime comes or like the next day. Sometimes it takes two days. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I feel better. And then you binge eat again, and then you bloat back up. And then it's like you have to see that like this is the consequence, and experience it. It's like you're hiding the fact of like, no, I just feel like shit today because I'm sad. Right. No, you feel like shit today because of what you did yesterday. Yeah, the binging. But that was one part of it. But what was the question again? My brain like went two different directions. Um, how how like, you don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you're just like, okay. Then you said you switched it to like, no, it actually does matter that you like binge. I got kind of like familiar with numbers and like the eating game mm -hmm. of like calories and all that. Oh, okay. And I'm like, it's a numbers game. It's mm -hmm. science. So like you, I convinced my, your body can only absorb so much at once. Food or knowledge? Food. <laughs> okay. And knowledge. But like, I would be like, okay, if I eat 10,000 calories tonight, just cause I want to binge, I used to. Yeah, same. Like all the time. Yeah. Like that was my joy. It was my comfort. It was the only thing that made me happy. Can you still do that or it wasn't your joy. It was making you happy temporarily. It's a dopamine hit, but it's not your joy. No.
still do it? Yeah. I can absolutely still put that We should do it in my language. In his language, it might be his joy. YouTube video, the 10,000 calorie challenge together. I would do it with him. <laughs> Did you purge after binging? Would you just like not eat for a day or two? Yeah. Yeah. So you like feel oh, so sick. another cut. Another cut in the podcast. I used to do that too. Feel so sick and then you don't eat for like a day and then you binge again. Or you don't eat for a couple days and then you binge. And it works sometimes to keep the weight off. Like when I was like a smaller, it did work kind of to do that. But did you get any help for that, for your eating disorder? or Mm-mm. So everything. I figured it out. Wow. <laughs> and just one day, just one day it just like came to you. I guess that's what I need to know is the click. Like when people are like, you know, like people lose weight. It's like one day it just it clicks, you know, and then you lose the weight. And it's like, wh- where'd that click come She's looking for a tool. She's looking for the right tool. And that's the thing is like, is it the tool for your brain to have that click? I think she's right. There is a click, but the click comes from a tool gathering and like putting the puzzle together. And Trisha just hasn't gotten her tool yet because it's probably a really extensive therapist who, who, who like, she's probably not going to the right professionals as well as the right, like philosophy teachers. Don't go to Teal Swan, but like, you know what I mean? She's, she's. She, I'm, that's what I'm assuming is happening. It's like she hasn't just she just hasn't gotten the right tool, which is so fair, right? That's really normal. That's why the journey is so subjective, because we don't know when we're gonna, gonna we're gonna get the tools to know. That's why you can't just like be better or change your mindset. Like it's not just about that. It's about making sure you have the tools to understand it. I'm from I'm 35 and it's still not there. Mine never was just a one time click. Mm-hmm. Like I still deal with it daily. Every day you think about food and your choices. Yeah, like every day mm-hmm. I have to like put effort into not eating a lot of different things like I have to like consciously choose to eat what I want to eat like that I know is good for me it's not like a battle that ever gets done like you food is the one thing you will fight with your entire fucking life it's not like heroin you can just quit and live food you have to have yeah food addiction is a hard one to explain to people because they're like just stop eating and it's like well it's it's way easier like I used to mukbang binge with you really oh yikes that makes me feel bad (laughs) no I used to love it I was like it's not bitch she gets me (laughs) <laughs> and I used to get like 10 meals in the, one like, sitting. The little Debbie video you did. Oh. I bought every single box and tried them all with you. The little Debbies are so good. I love a nutty bunny. I eat that Me all day too. long. So good. And the little Cosmic Brownies. Yes. God. Oh my God. I feel bad. In that case, then I feel bad if someone's binging with Because some people like who don't eat can't eat. I like, okay, it's helping them eat. But then there's people who love to binge too. And they're like, well, Trisha's binging. Let's all binge together. So I always feel a little guilty sometimes for that. No, don't ever feel guilty. No, because you, wasn't... Want, like, you eat fast food and then people are like, oh, you make me want fast food. I'm like, oh my God. I'm not doing a service to anybody by getting McDonald's every day or Taco Bell. It was more for me. I just want to tell you, like, it was more of, like, I – like, we both were in kind of the mindset of, like, I can't stop this thing. This is something that's, like, running me. At Mm -hmm. least I'm not alone in it. Yeah. So that was a very big comfort for me. Hmm. But it's, like, I've flipped a lot. And like I was saying with the whole every single day, it's, like, it's on my mind. Yeah. Some days it's not because I'm busy. But, like, it's so much easier to deal with now and, like, live with. It's not, like, this incessant thing. But – like it is like it does take effort every day. Mm-hmm. It's not like terrible and I'm not like suffering. I'm fine. If I want to eat shit, I'll eat it. Okay. This is true. Like you have to maintain and even though you get better, there's still like I always call it like I'm in the maintenance stage of my borderline. I just keep it oiled and together so I don't have to have problems. You know what I mean? I just I really wish I could give everyone the right tools and obviously I can't. But I think that that's the thing that I always am amazed with people about. I don't know what it is about Teal Swan. I don't know what it is about Leo Skeppy that makes people want to trust them. I don't know what it is about people who fall for the the cult we just learned about yesterday about, you know, Twin Flames. I don't know what it is missing in people's lives to make them believe these people have magic or can read your minds or can, like, have spiritual connection or that they're God. Like, I can't believe People are falling for modern day hippies on the internet saying they're God. Like, what are you doing? But then I kind of understand, like, you're so lost. You're like, maybe this is the answer. Maybe, but probably not. And, like, don't you want to get to the most reality? Like, don't you want to at least ground yourself in the most what is reality? And that's a very difficult answer to to face because you might not – you get it in stages. But the reality is, is that this 25-year-old – just not because of his age, but okay, has I don't I don't have the proof of concept from him. You know what I mean? No offense. Like something I'm like I try to do with my work, something you can see Dr. Kirk's work or Dr. K's work is like there's evidence for their work. Like you can see the evidence for their work. At least like Dr. K, you literally see it, but like whether or not you take the tool is up to you, right? 
um, I use myself as the example too. Like if you guys have watched me on the internet, you know for a fact I've changed, right? But like, how did you change? Like, what is the change? And it's going to be different for every single person. And I, again, I won't be able to give you a universal tool. It doesn't work that way. Okay. There is no universal tool. That's the hardest lesson we all have to learn, which is why you have to go to bubble the bubble to see like who has the answer, who has the tool to give you. But it is so difficult to do that because along the way, you might stop at a teal swan bubble and get swept up in the bullshit, or you might get swept up in the Leo Skeppy bubble or the Andrew Tate bubble and think, I need nothing more than this. Maybe if you want to stop there on your journey, sure. But that is a stopping point. You don't have to stop there. You can keep going. There's like so much more to life than stopping at the Andrew Tate bubble or stopping at the Leo Skeppy bubble. But if you want to, you do you. You know, it's your journey, bros. If I can make a million dollars off some shirtless photos, let's do it. Totally. But I'm saving that. Yeah, for sure. I always say save that route until you're like in your 30s. Because people will still pay for it. Balbo, bad baby. She made like 18 million in one month. Did you see that? In one month. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, that says a lot about those people. I'm like, that's okay, like she just turned 18. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, ooh, that's a little ick. Do you have this thing like when you see someone or get to know someone, they're that age forever in your head? Like bad baby is always 14 in my head. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is... Uh, well, I mean, I guess when she grows up, I'll see it differently. It's like JoJo or, you know, those kind of people. You just see them as very oh. young. JoJo, see what? You don't know JoJo? Girl, I'm being shady. Oh. <laughs> do you have beef? <laughs> no, but you do. Which, oh, I do, and I now do I have, have beef. beef now I have like beef you. with no one. Because you're talking about, like, Charlie Dumoulin. I'm like, I actually love her. Like, I always had one-sided beef with people, and now I have to, like, make amends to that. And they're probably like, stop. <laughs> it's too little, too late. I know. I used to have beef with so many people. I know you talk about never having public beef with people, and I think that's so smart of you because you're just so liked, and, like, people like you no matter what. You're, like, respected and all stuff like that. So once you start public beef, then people look at you different. They think of you as, like, drama and all stuff yeah. like that. But you'd have no problem. You okay, he literally – respected by who? Who respects him? Am I crazy? Like, I know I'm not being a hater because he's crazy. He said things that normie people – that's what I'm saying. What if normal – like, th whoever watches him cannot be that normie. They have got to be young. Normal people do not listen to his life and think, this is normal. Like, he's obviously not normal. So who's his niche? Is it kids? Desperate people? There's no fucking way you guys have watched all his videos or watched the videos we have watched. And you're like, yeah, that's normal. What? What is – you're normal. Your normal is crazy. Everyone's someone's crazy. I guess everyone's crazy in different normal ways. Like, I just can't with Leo. Like, I just, he seems like so many red flags go off with him, bro. So you're like, I can hold my own with public beef. I think it's like smart. I think your path is smart, not showing your body. Although you show it, you can see your body. I give a little thing. sex appeal. Like, get your attention. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, he, he knows things too. Right. I the love smart. the mind. Yeah, the intellectual part. Oh, he's actually like you. Because no one looks like you online. You really are a six seven in real life. You are huge. You look like a model. Wait, but Thank you me. never modeled, you said. You never done runway work. You've been to Fashion Week with YSL, but mm -hmm. that was just to like go. Yeah, go oh, and win God. and be seen. I know. I love it. I think that's everything. How do people get invited to these things? I always ask. I mean, how do people go to Fashion Week? A lot of people pay. For From here on, it's pretty blah. The crux was Trish asking for help and him not being into help. That's so funny. Talking serious, it'll be. Yeah. You won't be able to really tell. But yeah. like, if we're like shooting shit, like I'll say something and be like, "All right, Gura." Like okay. it'll just like <laughs> sis, like it'll come out. Yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. change anything. Yeah. And I didn't like try and change how I am. It's like. Was he like a like? Did he had good intentions. Another cut. Okay. When he cared <laughs> right? about you. Okay. Turned him on. The tears. I felt invincible, mm -hmm. like, with him on my side. And I've never felt more safe in my life, mm. ever. Like, nothing could touch me, wow. and there's nothing I couldn't, like, face with him. It's like, if he was mad at you, you're fucked. But, like, if you were with him, you oh, were, like, Oh, this is the stepdad stuff, right? Against it all. How old were you when that happened? Oh, my God. I was 19. Wait, what? This is... <laughs> yeah. I don't, I... Was he, like, a... Like, he had... God, Okay. <laughs> I would be more like, let's fight him, let's punch him, let's, I don't know what guys do. <laughs> yeah. My dad raised me very protective of people I care about. Like, my okay. whole family is like that. Like, I literally, when I care about you, I will literally do anything to protect you. Oh. Anything. Hmm. So, like, any threat to you, I'm taking it out. It's wow. like that aspect. It's like, oh, I can beat you up. It's like, any threat to something I care about or someone I care about, you're done. Yeah. Like, I'll sacrifice myself. He's saying, like, murder, right? Is he talking about killing people again? To make sure you're not hurt. Wow. But, like, that I already had in me, and the meeting my stepdad was, like, a whole different level. So what would your stepdad do? Was he, like, Fight Club or something? That's how he I imagined. He was the type yeah. that, like, he went to prison for murdering oh my God. a few people. <laughs> what is your life? Insane. Oh insane. Like, you need, he... like, a movie. <laughs> it's not funny.
Am I like a party pooper? It's not funny. Oh my God, he went to jail for like murdering people. <laughs> like they're not even being like, I don't know why. Like this is such a potential for such a, uh, like a really strong conversation about like the human, like the the being a human and having a relationship with life and death. And maybe I'm just like too serious for it. Or but just maybe I just feel like there's no respect a little bit. And that's just me pushing my values. Like sometimes I think it's, I like how the way comedians handle it. Like comedians handle it really well where they talk about like, like Joey Diaz talks about like how rough it was, but also like there's a seriousness to it, right? There's like a seriousness to it that makes me feel like it's real, even though they're making jokes about it. I just feel like Leo isn't real. It just feels so fake to me. Like I can't handle how like unreal this feels. I don't even know if these are true stories. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> He went to prison for, like, murdering some people. And, like, he oh had that God. prison mentality from, like, a very young age. Of okay. Like, disrespect, you fight. You look at somebody wrong, you're hitting them. It's, like, th he took that violence I already had. In I want him to say it's toxic. I want him to say it's uncool. I want him to say it's very serious. I want him to say, and, again, not because, like, I'm virtue signaling, but because I think we could all agree, like, murdering people isn't funny. But also, like, I want some wholesomeness with it, I suppose. You know what I mean? Monkey D. Trevi says, is he, is he just stuck in a cycle of trauma? He can't see stepdad as unhinged and unhealthy without admitting he's reflecting unhinged and unhealthy. Yeah, probably not. Like, again, he said therapy didn't work for him. I wonder why. I think it's uncomfortable laughter. I think Trisha is uncomfortable. But I think Leo is like, he like doesn't put any onus on sort of the importance of what he's saying. But again, I just I for me, when I'm listening to things, I want a specific energy out of it. And this just isn't giving it to me. Me to an extreme. And then it just feels like he's glorifying it. It feels like he's saying like he's it just sounds like he's saying like, yeah, I'm so rough. Like, look at this hard life I had without giving me any indicator that he had it. He doesn't seem like a kid who had a rough life. He seems like a kid who's privileged, who made up the story. That's what it is. He doesn't seem like a kid who had a rough life. He seems like a kid who was privileged, who's making up a story to sound like he struggled. That's why I don't like his stories. That's also, honestly, partially how Trisha felt too. Because even Trisha lied a lot about her stories growing up. Even though she was traumatized and it was clear, it was also clear Trisha came from enough of a privileged background to kind of be lying, which was true, by the way. Like, Trisha did come... She wasn't as fucked up growing up as she, like, claimed she was, but it was enough that people believed her. And same with Leo. Like, I'm not getting any authentic, I'm actually a kid who got fucked up. I don't know. That's that's why it bothers me. Because I'm like, are you sensationalizing some part of your life that might be real? But, like, this just feels like a fake fucking story. Like, <laughs> ripped me into, like, a whole different life of it. Like, no laws, no rules. He was above the law. You couldn't catch him. Like, had so many cop friends. Like, was corrupt as fuck. Oh, wow. Like, would get away with anything. Oh, my God. <sighs> That's wild. Was he, like, a good one, though? Was he, like, a... Like, he had good intentions? Okay. If, when he cared about you, <laughs> okay, he had okay, good okay. intentions. But, like, he did a lot of fucked up things to me with the good intention of, like, I'm preparing you. So, like, one thing he used to do to me and my mom a lot was... If I was, like, going to the grocery store or if I was, like, going somewhere, he would wait in the parking lot until I was, like, walking back to my car and then, like, attack me or, like, choke me out or, like, start hitting me out of nowhere or, like, be in the car and, like, grab me and, like, knock me out. And I would wake up in my car, like, what the f***? Like, he would just, like, what? attack me to teach me how to be aware of my surroundings and, like, handle a fight. Like, he used to get me drunk and, like, stand up and, like, beat the shit out of me Wait. so I could learn how to fight drunk. Yes, Discord says Leo sounds like my cousins when they were kids. They were always telling stories about how they got in a fight and almost got in a fight. No one believed them. That's what he sounds like. It doesn't even sound real. Like, I'm not feeling any authenticity. I don't believe it. It doesn't feel like a real story. It just feels fake. And p too many people be out here lying. I'm going to be real with you. How many comedians are lying literally did you guys not pay attention to the scandal that just happened in the comedian bubble everybody was telling each other how they like their stories weren't real and how like half their stories were real and some of the stories were real but like uh, even bobby lee had to come out and face the fact that allegedly his stories weren't real now maybe he's lying sometimes i think that maybe he was lying you know what i mean but like again like so many people are performing i just this feels like a performance to me it just doesn't feel real
you know? Hmm. But like that's that <laughs> hidden intention of like I'm trying to help you, but I'm traumatizing the fuck out of you. Oh my gosh. Wait, what? This is <laughs> yeah. sounds a little bit like abuse about, or something. I haven't talked okay, about I was that. Like, online. This sounds like maybe child abuse. It feels embellished. Yeah, it could be. It could be very embellished, which is a lie, right? Because then you don't There's know. So many stories. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Wait. Wow. Okay. And your but mom it taught me just... a lot. It taught me a lot. Okay. See I... how he does that? It taught me a lot. So he's either having a cognitive dissonance between his childhood and his adulthood, and he's trying to say, like, it taught me a lot, so it's fine. I'm fine. But he's not, like, talking about it for real. He's not having a real conversation about it. It's a fake conversation about it. Does that make sense? I get that. But, you know, being an abusive relationship could teach you a lot. Like, okay, this is not what I want. But oh. Okay, let's go, Trisha. Okay, so... You think it prepared you in some some way? It did. Okay. Like now, when I was going through it, I was like, "What the hell?" But like, I like the hidden intention was like he was trying to help, but it was through bad. Is he still around? He's dead. What happened? Can I ask? He. Oh, I like how everyone he tells stories about either doesn't exist or can't be accessed, so no one can contradict his stories. Allegedly, he has a sibling. I would love to know if his sibling has a different story about their upbringing. Not that it would matter, because sometimes siblings, you know what I mean. He got in a motorcycle accident oh, okay. and was going like 100 mm. miles an hour mm. and this car pulled out and he hit it and he hit it so hard the car flipped like six times <gasps> and he like shot up like oh. 50 feet in the air, head came off in his helmet, whole oh ordeal. God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Are you sure? See, great question, Trisha. Great question, Trisha. See, Trisha knows it's bullshit. I feel like, like Trisha knows a liar when she sees one because she was one. Nothing yeah. with me anymore. I've been, I've seen it all. But I've experienced it all. How old were you when that happened? Oh my god! I was nineteen, I think. Eighteen or nineteen, oh I can't remember. God, this is like. Did you cry then? Because I know you said you didn't cry for a few years. You didn't cry. Where do you think that? Wow. Like, did you have emotion? Were you like, this is sad? Were you relieved? I was relieved because he was like. What are all these like edits? Attacking my mom. Ugh. And I got out and like moved in with my dad and like, it was at a point mm. where it was like. He was coming after me and her, and it was like him or us. Oh my so God. I was like, we were, me and my mom were both so relieved that he died. We didn't. Do you think he's just trying to be strong? Like he's trying to like pretend like it didn't impact him or something, but also like, you know what I mean? Wanted to die. Oh, right. But it was like. It's, like a, it's a relief. You hear people yeah. talk about that. Oh like my I God. still. I, mean, I got to get into that. Oh my gosh. But like I did cry about it eventually. Uh, when, but when, when it, it hit me, it was like months later when uh -huh. I was like in therapy, coming to my emotions and shit. And oh, I so therapy did help you. Lost it. What? What was when he said therapy didn't work for him? So it did work for him when he cried in therapy. Maybe the trigger. What turned him on? The tears. I felt invincible, mm -hmm. like with him on my side. Fishy says, I get the vibe that some of the, some, it, some truth, but a lot of embellishment, like 75% false. The way he laughs make him sound, makes him sound like a child who knows he's lying and can, he can tell he's getting away with it. Yeah. Does anyone ever question him? Like all the podcasts we've seen with him, like nobody ever says like, where's the receipts? Like, where's the proof? Like, you know what I mean? Ugh, kind of annoying. Greenbean says he sounds like a child trying to convince himself the suffering happened for a reason to deal with the fact that it fucked up shit happened, that fucked up shit happens and sometimes that's it. Yeah, but what did he learn from that life story if he's still like considered a murder-suicide plan? And I've never felt more safe in my life, mm. ever. Like nothing could touch me wow. and there's nothing I couldn't like face with him. It's like if he was mad at you, you're fucked. But like if you were with him, you were like untouchable. And I've never felt safe like that again and I never will in my life. Wow. It's almost like you became that. Hold on. I literally think I'm going deaf and losing my hearing. I keep like they get quieter and quieter for me and then I can't hear them anymore. And I can't tell if it's like my earphones or what it is. But I, what did he just say just now? I've never. He was mad at you. You're fucked. But like if you were with him, you were like untouchable. And I've never felt safe like that again, and I never will in my life. See? See? That's why he romanticizes it. It sounds like he romanticizes the th – like the it's like when you're part of a gang and your dad's like a part of the mafia or your stepdad's part of the mafia and you like romanticize how like he's the scariest guy in the room. So you're kind of like romanticizing that like he picked you and like you were a part of him. 
And there's a little, this is so toxic. Like, this needs to be unraveled. And th- People don't understand, like, what I'm capable of and, like, how I can switch it off. Mm. Oh, my God. I am so capable of murdering people. You would not believe it. Do you hear him? Do, what is this? What is this bragging about being a murderer? When is this the new Gen Z thing? You get to brag about being a murderer? And, like, do anything to protect people I care about or myself. Mm. And it's, like, now I'm at a point... I found comfort in that a little bit. And it's like I felt safe going around and about life. And then it's like now I'm at a point, if I get in a fight or if I protect myself, I will go to prison and I'm going to lose everything. Yeah. It's yeah, like, like good point. He didn't protect his mother. He left, right? Well, who has he ever protected? He just threatens to kill people. Like he literally just threatens to kill people. Every time we see him, his way of taking control, it's so mafia. What do you, what do you think you're in a gang? Is the Sons of Alba- Albania? Is the Sons of Anarchy? Like, what's happening? Like, yeah, it's not I'm worth at it. A, I'm at a point of like... Yeah, who does he care about? I've never heard of one person he cares about. What? You know what I mean? What? Like, this is not healthy. I don't care what country you come from. I'm not putting this on Albanians. I'm putting this on him. Are you going to sacrifice your life or are you going to protect yourself? So I'm like... It's like you have the ability to protect yourself, but your hands are tied. Right. So it's like I don't feel safe. I don't feel – like I will do it, but I know the cost. Yeah. Like I'm throwing my life away. Well, how do you avoid those situations? You just pick and choose. Like you're like I'm not going to I'm not gonna be confrontational. But I guess a lot of this stuff isn't brought on. You didn't bring on the jumping. Mm-mm. Did you get hit by a car too? Yeah. Oh, and was this on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. When did this happen? This was my going away dinner when I was leaving Houston. Oh my – wait. So you lived in Houston. When did you go to Houston from Florida? May of 2022. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's definitely telling himself a fantasy. It's all fucking fake. I'm sorry. I'm calling it out. A bullshit galore. Like, I'm sorry. Like, bullshit galore, okay? Like, he's just fucking making money, telling sensational stories that are not true. No one's questioned him. No one's proved, like, the receipts. He probably read The Godfather and just, like, got off on it, okay? I get it. We've all seen the movie. I've read the book. I've read, like, Mario Puzo's books. I get it. Okay? But it feels like a fantasy thing that he's playing up, right? Look at him being cushy and rich in what? America? Please. Yeah, he's all bark and no bite. It's a facade. It feels so fucking fake. It feels so, like, just so silly and immature. Like, it's so silly. A 25-year-old claiming to be, like, mafia violent, claiming he would, like, murder suicide, claiming he would kill people's dogs and children and innocent family and couples, and bragging about it on the internet, and people just being like, I love Leo Skeppi. Let me, like, hire him as a coach. Are you fucking all crazy, bro? Are you fucking all crazy? So you're only there for, like, a year in Houston. Do you move there for any reason? To get the hell out of where I was in Florida. I hated it. <sighs> Interesting. I wanted okay. a bigger city. Houston's good. Did you like Houston? I miss it every day. Houston's great. I, all my favorite <laughs> people are from Houston. All like a lot of the glam people, they're from Houston. I love Houston people. They're amazing. But okay, so the car, you got hit by a car at your going away party in Houston. And mm-hmm. did someone film this like on TikTok? Because I thought I saw something like or I, Yeah, you- literally. Like, can you imagine like an actual person who's like in the crime syndicate, who's like actually in the crime bubble, just sitting here and bragging? Like, how dumb would you have to be? You can hear you yell. But why do people let him get away with it? Like why, why is he allowed to get on the internet and talk about how he would murder people? And everyone's just like, yeah, this is rational and reasonable. Like, what? Or something in the background after it happened. Yeah, so no one filmed. Like is it a- is it because, like, he's not, like, no one believes it because he's, like, a child? I guess that's fair. Like, to be fair, he isn't being real. I think he's a pussy. There's no way he'd kill anybody, thank God. Because, like, it's all just for show. Like, there's no way this is real. Like, Sneeko, they're just pussies. They're not actually going to kill anybody, thank God. But even bragging about it is, like, not very funny. And saying he had a plan to do it is pretty bad. You know what I mean? But also, like, you know, YouTube kicked Sneeko off. They should kick Leo Skeppy off. Actual incident. But, like, my friends threw me a surprise going away party. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, I walked in the party not knowing it was, like, a going away party. I thought we were just having dinner. And, like, they opened the curtains and everybody was, like, surprise. And I was, like, this motherfucker just hit me with his car. Oh, that's what it was. I see you angry. I see yeah. you walking in angry. Like, and I was, covered like, what? in dirt. Pissed off. Oh, my. Wait. So someone, <laughs> you're walking. You have, like, you have, like, great luck and terrible luck all at the same time. This is wild. Okay. So how does this happen? Are you on the crosswalk? Who? How did this hit you? How did the car yeah, hit you? Yeah, I was just, like, at the little crosswalk. You know how restaurants are in, like, a shopping complex? Yeah. And it's, like, you have the little, like, walkway. And they have a stop sign. He just didn't stop. 
and I, when I was walking and I saw him coming a little fast, so like I turned and I was like, he's hitting me. So I jumped so I could like land on the hood and like not like be run over. Oh my God. And then you just went to the party like nothing. You didn't go to the hospital or anything. No, I tried to. Who, how did this hit you? How did the car yeah, hit you? Yeah, I was just like at the little crosswalk. You know how restaurants are in like a shopping complex? Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like you have the little like walkway and they have a stop sign. He just didn't stop. And I, when I was walking and I saw him coming a little fast, so like I turned and I was like, he's hitting me. So I jumped so I could like land on the hood and like not like be run over. Oh my God. And then you just went to the party like nothing. You didn't go to the hospital or anything. No, I tried to beat the fuck out of him, but he wouldn't get out the car. So in this situation when now you're trying to avoid, is that your last incident where you like had a, I don't know what these are called, swings? I knocks? Think so. Okay, so now that happened to you because you're trying to avoid these situations and someone hit you with their car, what well, would I you do? I learned control in that moment. Okay. Because, like, I, like, was going to yank him out of the car. Like, old me would have, like, smashed his window and pulled him out. Oh, you didn't. But I didn't. Like, I went around to the driver's side door and I was, like, I almost yanked the handle off. Okay. But I was, like, trying to get him out. Old me would have been violent and attacked somebody for crashing into me. Uh, why? And when he was, like, scared and, like, wouldn't get out... I thought, and I was like, Leo, you're in public. You don't know who's watching, who's filming. Like, stop. Right. And it, like, made me, like, I stopped for a second and then walked inside. So that's good. So I think now you can you can do those situations. If someone's trying to pick a fight with you, you're just going to mm. walk away. You're not going to, like, fight. But I leave regretting not tearing somebody the fuck up every time. Really? Like, I wish mm. I would have at least, like, hopped on his windshield and smashed it. Or, like, done something. We like, both- I have to walk away being the bigger person and just deal with this, like... And you don't feel better being that bigger person. Sometimes no. I feel better being the bigger person. When someone comes for me, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'll just leave it. Because I sometimes. love to attack with my words. But I'm like, sometimes I feel better just, like, you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm gonna, And I'll be like, Trisha, you've grown. And I'll be like, thank you. <laughs> Good you know? job, Trisha. We love to see it. Trisha, see... Trisha knows better. So Trisha is trying to give him a tool of wisdom. Trisha is being thoughtful. She's saying, be the bigger person. Absolutely. So I think. (laughs) And Leo's not there because he's fucking 25 and a child. Okay? He's not wise. He is not helpful. Don't listen to this man. Like, what? Trisha's like, yeah, be the bigger person. And Leo's like, no. So he's not even doing it because it's his values. That's what I mean. You haven't transformed. You're just like not doing like you're not doing the impulse, but it's not even because you're a good person, sir. I think it should make you feel better when you leave the situation. No, being the bigger. Wow. Like I have so many regrets. Like so many times <laughs> I wish I would have just smacked the fuck out of somebody. Do you? Are we listening? Okay. Yes. He's admitting it. He has so many regrets for not being violent. Hello, ma'am. Why are we talking to this man? Like, why are we engaging with this man and his content? He's fucking crazy to say like, oh, yeah, like, I wish I had actually fucking killed people. Like, hello? Hello, Trisha? Get out of there, Trisha. Save yourself, girl. And I walk away not having done that, and I, like, live with that regret. I wonder what that is. I'm not a psychologist, but there must be some. I have more things to, like. (laughs) Okay, see, Trisha knows. Trisha's, like, this man crazy, girl. Trisha, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your dog. Like, this man crazy. Deal with and going into that. But, like... (laughs) You should have a session with Dr. Drew. He might be uh, able to diagnose this. He No, he needs someone better than Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew's not capable of handling this. He really can know what's going on in there. That's wild. Yeah, the only thing I worry is now you're, like, famous and rich. I'm just like, you know, maybe... I'm a cash cow. People are going to try shit. Yeah, they'll try to sue you. If you even touch someone, it's crazy. People, I've seen people, like, get in someone's face and be like, touch me, touch me, touch me. And it's like... Even if you do like a little like a little shove, people are like, he shoved me. He whatever. Even like push him away. Even if they're in your space, people will like sue. It's wild. That's my problem. <sighs> like with the way my brain is. Brady, did you see the Love Has One cult documentary on Max? No, I don't have Max. No, I only have Netflix right now and Crunchyroll. Monkey D says to me, it reads that someone almost hit him when. Uh, with their, he acted insane and devalidates reason for telling people they actually hit him. Like, it feels like he has, like, run-ins or he has stories to tell. But either way, that's what's crazy. It's not crazy that he had violence in his life. What's crazy is he's talking about it the way he's talking about it. That's the crazy part, right? The crazy part isn't that he had violence. Lots of people come from gang life. Lots of people come from mafia life. A lot of people come from violent backgrounds. That's not what's crazy. It's how he's talking about it. That's what's insane. That's the red flag. 
again, I listen to a lot of comedians. I listen to a lot of people who grew up really fucked up. It's not that they're talking about it. It's how they're talking about it. It's crazy. You know what I mean? It's it's how he's talking about it that's crazy. It's just, uh, ma'am. Because my dad always raised me like, if you're gonna cut, if you're gonna get caught speeding. Are you going to – don't ever get caught for going five over. Go 100 over. Oh, wow. If you're going to go get in trouble, make it worth it. So, like, when I would fight in school, like, I would fight. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm getting suspended, so I would, like, pummel the fuck out of people. <sighs> G says, imagine if there was no government or police. Humans will go back, right back to tribes and wars. Um, What do you think happens now? We are in tribes, and we are having wars. I have no idea how you've missed it. Where do you live on the in the world? If you live in America, it's absolutely tribes and wars. If you live anywhere on the planet, it's tribes and wars. Where do you live that you don't have tribes or wars? Very confused by that statement, G. Very confused. And also, I hope Trisha is becoming afraid. And it's like now, I'm like, if I'm in an altercation with somebody or like someone's trying to start with me, if I know you're going to sue me, now I'm going to give you something to make sure you can sue me Oh my gosh. I'm already going through court. I'm f***ing your shit up. I'm like... Break your arm so every time you got a shit, you think of me type vibe. Okay, well, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> We're going to be Versace model. We're going on tour. Especially Ugh. going on tour now. Okay, you have a tour yeah. coming up, which you just announced. Which I was so excited yesterday. I was like, oh my God, mm. we got some tea today. Um, this is very exciting. It's called Confidence Unleashed, yes. which is such a great name. It almost sounds like a Netflix special or something. I love Are you going to film it? Yes, I filmed my first event. The I did LA. like a tester event to like see how it went, uh-huh. and it sold out in 45 minutes. And, like, the show went so good. Everybody was like, we have to do it again. Oh, my gosh. So, at your shows, are this like, is this, like, a motivational speaking show? Like, is that what you do? Is it kind of like your podcast but, like, live? It's, like, a live version of my podcast, but it's about confidence. So the whole like, thing. Yeah. Like, the 40 – it's, like, 45 minutes mm-hmm. of me speaking, like, a live podcast on confidence. And it's, like, a big opened up, like, Q&A. What you- How is this not an acquired taste? Bryson is, like, you have an acquired taste? What is this? What is this? What normie bubble is like, oh, yeah, you know who I want to listen to? A 25-year-old who talks about murdering people. What? Am I crazy? Hello? Ma'am? Oh, wait. Monkey's right. He makes them feel better about themselves because he's worse than them? Do I make people feel bad about themselves because I'm better than you? (laughs) Is that what it is? People do get mad at me when they're like, don't you have temptation? Yes. They just don't believe that I like work to fight temptation. I also give into temptation. I ate five cookies today. Five. Uh, okay. Oh, he's so annoying. Be way you're... more explicit. Oh, interesting. Are you? Because online you're not either. I guess you have to monetize. I, like that's censored. On YouTube? Like on YouTube, I am censored. Really? Okay. So you're like a wild talker. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So that's what your tour is going to be. Yeah. Do you give that warning to people in case they're going to be like, oh my God. Sometimes you like meet people and be like, oh my gosh, this is so different than they are online. But there's a lot of things. I Like I'm the same. But yeah. like I just get a lot more like, whoa, okay. Like I really can like hit a point if I can talk freely. Right. Like when I just give myself the ability to just like execute this point, don't worry about offending feelings. Don't worry about getting demonetized. Don't worry about being PC. Like when I'm in that room. It's like I just get to like let it – like unleash it and like let it out. And like the points just hit and I can hit dark things like unaliving Mm -hmm. and not have to like tiptoe around YouTube's little f***ing little rules. It's like – Colleen, you are better than me for only eating one cookie today. Good for you. (laughs) I must learn your ways. Girl, let me just talk freely. Like this is real. Yeah. Like I talk real. Ugh, it's probably because people think like he's honest and real, and but I just think he's a liar. So that's the difference. It's like he feels like a liar, but if people are listening to him thinking like nobody would ever say this unless it's true, and I'm listening to this like no one would say this if it was true. Do you get what I'm saying? It's probably that because like if you're – like I feel like if this was true, you wouldn't say it, and I think his audience is thinking it must be true because why would he say it, right? That's what – I is that what's happening? You know what I mean? Becca says he won't be uh, reprimanded by anyone unless he says something against the wrong group, I reckon. Yeah, probably not. Damn, this is crazy, bro. This is just so weird. Ugh. Skeppy once literally ate 500 cookies, but the old Skeppy would have eaten 5,000 cookies. Good point. Discord says, I think Trisha doesn't know how to communicate with someone so dysfunctional yet, so confident. So she's get going along with laughing about his stepdad. Yeah, she's obviously like, 
see she's smart enough to pick up that something's going on but she doesn't know how to say it versus I'd be like so what's it like being so fucked up like you're obviously still so fucked up like you're a horrible person what's that like (laughs) like you're still so fucked up like what is happening Leo comes off as capable to normies and has the gay guy best friend telling you to get your shit together, Flair, while you force people to actually face themselves. Okay, well, you know, ugh, bro, Step- Skeppy's dad literally robbed the cookie factory. Stop. That's too funny. Ugh. The only real thing he gives off to me is he's really unwell mentally. I mean, I agree, Trevi. Ugh. And keep in mind, he's saying this to a female, not a male Brit. Good point. The other males he talks to, though, are also like in the femme category because he also does um, podcasts sometimes with what's that guy's name? Damien, Destin, Dustin. He's a guy on TikTok I also blocked who has reeks of toxicity to me. He reeks of toxicity to me. Hold on. Let me try to pull it up while we're finishing this off. That's the thing. And I feel like more a lot of people don't do that, especially like in, inspirational people. You know, they like to have a little like filter. They, they're so fake. Yeah. All these self-help people, <laughs> fake as shit. Is there any self-help? Uh, do you like to- You're fake as shit. Listen to him. All these self-help people, fake as shit. Um, Have you looked in a fucking mirror, bro? Hey, Robbins? Kind of. I, you give me his vibe. You give me the vibe. I do Tony. really like him. I resonate oh, with Oh, she. he gives Tony Robbins vibe. Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins, really? Infamous? Lee considered a scammer in some bubbles. A lot of what he says, but I don't. I haven't like, like, do do like a deep dive in him to know. Yeah, I don't. I don't like listen to him. I listen to Joel Olstein. Do you listen to him? Do you know him? He's from Houston. I think I've heard of him. He has a Joel huge Olstein's church bullshit, in Houston. Trisha. It's like that. Well, oh my God, Joel Olstein is literally bullshit. Why do people fall for the fucking biggest scammers in the fucking world, bros? Stop. Stop falling for scammers. Okay, this guy I don't trust at all, bro. This guy, literally, I had to block him on TikTok because he gives me the worst vibes in the world. His name is Dom Gabriel. Do you guys know him from TikTok? He gives me the most toxic fucking fuckboy vibes I've ever felt in my fucking life, bro. Like, absolutely not. These fuckboys, absolutely not. I got drunk on a first date with someone. We went to a house party and there was a tattooer there. So I tattooed slut on my hip while we were like making out and now it's just i i don't like him attainable but also like the whole feeling thing it's not just the feeling you have or don't have i look at self-love as the way you treat yourself and the actions you take like i look at loving as a verb whether other people want to or not like Mm -hmm. to love something is to prioritize it to care about it yeah and to consider it so i look at self-love in my actions like are the actions i'm taking self-loving or not Mm mm-hmm like, do you feel good about this? Yeah. As opposed to, as opposed to, like, does is this making everyone around me happy? Mm-hmm. Putting yourself first, would that be like? Not really putting myself first. I look at it like, you know how to take other people into consideration. Self love is learning how to take yourself into consideration with them, like holding yourself and other. people. Does he have a bruise on his face? People, mm-hmm. and not just picking them up and dropping yourself, or picking yourself and dropping them. Yeah. Like you don't want to put yourself first but like everybody gets taken into consideration yeah i think that was like like my analogy and then like i remember saying this to my therapist about like how i viewed myself and like everyone in my life is like everybody in my life is on a boat right i just feel like they're so performative like they belong to a very performative bubble that i don't like at all it gives me the worst creepy vibes ever like i don't feel comfortable with it And again, like they're really popular. People like them. Like, and that's the problem is I feel like toxic, like bubbles really like these people. And that's really the the red flag that I get is like I blocked all these people on TikTok because they gave me incredibly red flag vibes, you know. Oh, my God. Ren says I've met Joel Olstein twice. Stop it right now. Scammers be scamming, bro. Scammers be scamming. Oh, my God. It was just like so weird. So weird. Uh, oh my God. Ooh, Dom Gabriel is so yucky. Bro, I blocked Dom so long ago. I could just like, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, mm-mm, red flags. Nope. Absolutely not. Yes. Oh, yes. Leo has the same energy as Mount Rife. They're just fully in their delusion. Yeah. Mount Rife too. Total red fucking flag. Like Mount Rife, total fucking red flag. Like, absolutely a red flag. That's what I'm saying. Like, all these people, I'm like, no. No. Mm-mm. Zero. Mm-mm. Canceled. Absolutely. Uh. Yes, when you get the ick, like, mm-mm. No. 
absolutely not nope 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 absolutely absolutely not well he got kind of canceled for not letting people in during the hurricane do you remember that he like locked the doors <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing you and you know what i wear it out shopping you were taught how to behave i was too i mean i i always was good i actually never got disciplined i never got grounded oh, or anything <laughs> <laughs> like, you know how to watch your mouth. You know how to be polite. You know how to, like, understand. Yeah, it was just, like, in me, I guess. I don't know. You I know tip you... the Uber Eats drivers. <laughs> tip Good the person. Uber Eats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tip your Uber Eats drivers, your door dashers. I saw that episode, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they really should. People who don't tip, I'm like, that's that drives me nuts, too. There are certain people that annoy me. It's people who don't tip, people who harass, harass like, service workers. People who are filming, like, Yes, Maddox. Dom Gabriel does have the fuck boy that tries to get into your pants by being deep from the situation. Yes. He, like... He uses all the tools that he learned in therapy to basically get into women's pants. Like, I absolutely, that's what I'm talking about. The progressive fuckboy. Watch out for the progressive fuckboy that claims to be progressive, that claims to be feminist, that claims to be involved, like, wants women's health, like, like claims they're, like, invested in, like, female, like, health, blah, blah, blah. They're just fuckboys who want to get into your pants and pretend they read, like, a book that means something to you. Like, absolutely not service workers when they're just doing their job i'm just like let them do their job in this like little That's weird it was so weird it was a video this morning and it really made me so upset and i don't know who this person oh my god sadie says watching leo actually brought me to you Brit, which is kind of funny since you're so different thank you i appreciate that that's the nicest thing you've ever said i am very different i do not want to be associated with this man and his brows just like those are the people for sure you got you did get not cancel, but people, you had to make a video addressing disciplining children. You talked about, yeah. <laughs> was it just because of like the gesture you made? Because people were upset. What was your original video? It was like. It was me. I woke up and I was pissed off. And mm -hmm. I had to handle this a certain way. What I really wanted to do was get on there and tell everyone to go fuck themselves. <laughs> but my management at the time told me, you know, you have to handle this properly. But like, basically, I made a video talking about like, I'll discipline your fucking kid. Like, if you don't. Okay. And I didn't mean I'll hit your kid. I would never hit a fucking child. Right. But, like, if your kid is being obnoxious as fuck <laughs> at 6 in the morning, screaming, <laughs> you attend to it. What was the reference? Was there, like, something that happened that you were, like, thinking yes, of this? Yes, my okay. fucking neighbor. Let her kid, like, <laughs> oh. throw a tantrum every single day, <laughs> running up the hallway with the dog barking. They're both freaking out. The mom, like, wouldn't attend to the child. And I don't think I would ever, like, actually yell at a child i i really wouldn't yeah like i would never discipline a child or like yell at them i would yell at the parent and be like yay do your fucking job yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or i'll just look at them but like i don't think i'd ever target it at a kid so like i did speak wrong about that yeah. i was just so heated in the morning of mm -hmm. like a week straight i was waking up at 6 a.m oh, yeah. by these fucking people just screaming for no reason like Take care, of your, take care of your child. I know. I feel like when you don't have kids, it really is. I was like that too. It's kind of like, ugh, okay, this is, yeah. But like bad choice of words. Oh, okay. And then this. Oh. Oh. I was wondering what she would say as a parent. One dumb bleep it. <laughs> Posted a video and took it out of context. Like I get how it was taken out of context, but she basically was like saying that like she'll shoot me if I ever like. Oh. Try and discipline like, her actually kid. actually she said that? Yeah. Okay, but he actually said he would murder somebody, so I think we're all clear. He literally just said in the big, like in the middle of this podcast that he would literally like murder people for his family, which is insane to say out loud, by the way. Like, that's an insane thing to say out loud. And like, God. everybody, there was a couple dumbasses, and then like the people <laughs> that like, they, they saw her video before mine. Mm -hmm. People that didn't know me didn't get it. But like, it got on the wrong side of TikTok Ow. under the impression of like, you're a threat. I'm going to protect my child against you. It made this narrative get pushed. Mm. And everybody thought I was like threatening their kids. And I'm like, y'all are fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, yeah. are you for real? Um, He is dumb. He literally spends all of his shtick saying he will murder people. He will kill people. He regrets not punching in windshield. You're a violent person, bro. All of his shtick is violence. Is he too young to understand what he's doing? Like, it's pretty violent. It is insane to murder people, G. It's one thing to self-defense. It's one thing to murder. Murder is calculated. It is one thing in self-defense to protect your child or somebody from a home, home invader. It is completely different to murder somebody. I don't know if you're, like, not understanding the language difference here, but, like, Leo Skeppy makes plans to go after people. He wants to, like, you can't just retaliate with violence, like, and justify it. That's why, like, self-defense has to be justified. So, like, murdering people is not okay. You cannot murder people. 
I don't want to live in a society where we tolerate murdering people, which is like, again, premeditative. You're thinking about it. You're attempting it. You're like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Absolutely not, ma'am. TikTok but is like that. We already that. tolerate so much violence in society. We don't need more. It was like the wrong side of people. That's the thing. If you Self-defense is different. Doing things out of self-defense is very different in real self-defense. You see someone that doesn't get yes, it. Yes. Yes. Bryson. Ding, ding, ding. He gives off the vibe like he's waiting for an excuse to hurt people. That's what it is. That's the red flag. He gives off the vibe like he's waiting for an excuse to hurt someone. And I wouldn't blame. I do not trust this man. He's so violent. Like his stories are violent. Look, you're 25. Go to a therapist, which he won't because he said it doesn't work for him. Of course not. All these fucking narcissistic, not MPD, but high on narcissism people who are like, therapy just doesn't work for me. Um, do you think it's because you're combative? Do you think it's not working for you because maybe you're combative? Sneeko, Destiny, Skeppy. Oh, what or one therapy doesn't really work for me? Um, do you think it's maybe because you're combative? Maybe because you don't actually want to change? Do you think maybe that's the fucking problem? Or doesn't know or the con like, I know I had no idea what the con Transform. Literally transform yourself. Stop being so fucking useless. All three of you. I saw your like Jesus. apology and I was like, wait, what is the context for this? Yeah, this guy has like a Grand Theft Auto mindset. What does he think he is? Part of the mafia? Apologize and then people got mad. Oh, I don't apologize. Right. Never. I will take accountability. And okay, like, you're like, it was wrong choice of words. Address it as yeah. Okay, then do it. Do it right the fuck now. And you will watch my actions and I will fix it. Yeah. But like I never apologize in the video and there's this dumb other bitch <laughs> who would not shut up about me for like two months. He's yeah, See, he won't. Oh, I'm about to be that third dumb bitch that won't shut up about him. I'm going to make like 20 TikToks about this. Literally like, hello, he won't do it now. Guys, he said it like four times in this video. I'm going to, I would apologize. I would hold myself accountable. Do it. Do it. Do it. We're waiting, bitch. Do it. Go ahead. Do it. I'll wait. I'll paint my nails and let it dry and we'll wait. Girl, shut the fuck up. Stop listening to these men that go, I've changed. I'm holding myself accountable. I've trained. Girl, please. Okay? Please, bro. He literally, yeah, exactly, Trevi. He doesn't want to admit, you know, he's wrong. He doesn't. He doesn't admit he's wrong. And look, he's blaming this woman because he didn't apologize. He just said I didn't apologize in the video. Do you think that's why we're not, like, Hello? Trisha, stay away from this man, Trisha. Trisha Paytas, listen to me. Listen to me. Stay away from this man. Jesus Christ, he's crazy. That's lady us. He never apologized. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, literally. He talks about how he's never felt safer than with his stepdad, and he was just scared of him. He wants the same thing. He wants people to be scared of him. Gross. 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 Destiny said his therapist convinced him not to air out all his dirty laundry. Yeah, that's great. But he also said recently that he doesn't believe in solo therapy. It doesn't help him. He only believes in couples therapy. Fine. We love that. But that's not very useful when facing yourself, right? You have to do enough. Like people who say solo therapy doesn't work for me, red flag. What is going to work for you then? What in? I'm not giving you a gold star for the basics. I'm not giving you a gold star for the fucking basics, okay? Absolutely not. No gold stars. Okay. Ooh. Like y'all <laughs> took it wrong. I yeah. acknowledged how I contributed to the incorrect perception. I fully own that. Yeah. Now own your side. Right. Own it. How did he own it? How did he own it? So how did he own it? He just said he didn't apologize in the video where he faced it. He just said he didn't apologize in the video where he addressed it. So where's the where are you owning it? I am so fucking sick of these performative people coming out and people just eat this shit up. People just eat this shit up. They're like, oh, he said it. He didn't say shit. How do you guys fall for it? There's no action that follows. There's no action that follows. Just saying the words, I hold myself accountable. I change. That's not what accountability and change is. That's not even what it means. Saying you're doing it is not doing it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do 10 push-ups later tonight. Well, not if you didn't do 10 push-ups. Like, it doesn't matter what you say if you don't do the work. What are we, why are we giving credit to these men? Like, I'm so confused how all of these men get so much credit for doing absolutely nothing and just talking a big game. Amazing, beautiful. I love humans. Humans going to human. Get your merch. Links in the chat. Whew. Right. You saw a video and took off running in the wrong direction. And they keep going with it. Yeah. It's kind of like, like girl, okay. I deaded the issue. I explained. Now, if you want to keep like punishing me, you're the asshole. Yeah. No, you're the asshole. Don't turn it around, bro. 
Don't turn it around, Mr. Murder Leo Skeppy. I'm going to call him Murder Leo Skeppy. Bro, he literally out here contemplating like, what's that movie called? Hannibal Lecter-esque plans and being like, everyone else is like the asshole. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I never heard people. But I love when men play victim like this. I love this. Well, he's playing tough. Ooh, playing victim and playing tough. Mm, sound familiar? Sound familiar? I just Oof. have to keep scrolling. When I see anything about me, I'm like, scroll right away. I just scroll fast because I'm like, I don't want to see what anyone says about me. Because <laughs> people say that too. They always say for me, oh, she never apologized. I'm like, for what? I've, be, I've apologized for a thousand, fifty thousand things. Probably you apologize things I don't. too much. But do you know why you apologize? You can't just apologize. Do you know why you're apologizing it? Otherwise, don't apologize. We don't want to hear it. I apologize for everything. I apologize for this episode. I apologize for everything. I apologize for existing. I'm so sorry I'm here. Like, I just apologize right I away. Sh- don't double down, Trisha. Don't double down. Don't double down. No. See? He's a bad influence. Do not double down. Sometimes you have to apologize. Sometimes you're wrong. That's just real. Sometimes you're fucking wrong. But don't apologize if you don't think you're wrong. It's better to like be honest and be like, I don't know why I'm apologizing than for you to apologize when you're not, when you don't mean it. Unless you're doing it for branding. Shit. (laughs) Could it be more opposite? You are a, you're born in March. Are you a Pisces? Okay, you're like a fish. Just like fish. I like that. That's cute. A little. I love fish. I love a little fish. Okay, that's interesting because I thought we'd be on opposite ends of the spectrum, but no, because I'm Taurus. Fish get on. Okay, that's cute because I think we're like so polar opposites. That's why you got but... your money up. You're a Taurus. Oh, for sure. Me and my yeah. sister like studied you a long time ago. I'm like, that's why this bitch is rich. Really, Taurus? <laughs> I love making money. I told you. Oh that. my god, Trisha and I are both Taurus. Thank you. Like hustle. Like we were talking about money, and I was just like, I'll do cameos for five hundred. I'll take anything. I'll take a hundred dollars. Like I'll take whatever. Does Trisha do confrontation on her show? I don't know. I don't watch it enough. Does she, guys? I don't really watch Trisha. It's just like podcasts full of small talk, which I love. Like no offense, but like her guests are. So, this is all such small talk, right? Like they didn't get deep. She didn't ask more questions because she's afraid of him. Like a real podcast. I'm sorry. That's actually getting to the nitty gritty. How do people watch this super level shit and not feel like what just happened? No offense, not to Trisha. This is like, I get it. But like, uh, she couldn't even push. I wouldn't push back. I get it. Like, I'm not blaming her for not pushing back. She's probably in her home. (gasps) He's probably in her house. Oh my God. He's probably in her house. See, I would never run a podcast out of my house. I don't trust you fucking bitches. Is Leo in her house right now? Is her podcast in her house? Is Trisha in her house? Oh my God. See, I can't. Leo is not allowed near me. Fuck Leo and his fucking toxic, violent behavior, bro. If I ever die, if I end up dead. Because that's crazy. He's crazy. Okay? Mm. I'm just a hustle person. I just love to make money (laughs) for whatever. I don't even care. You know, I'll take a million dollars and take a $10. Like, whatever it is. (laughs) Pay me. (laughs) Um, What Do you know your Chinese zodiac? Tiger. (gasps) My daughter's tiger. We have a big... Chill, this guy is not a real threat. Mm, You know, is that true though? I think he's probably not a real threat, but I think he could be tempted to be. I think he could be tempted to be, absolutely. Because it's insane how he's talking. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not normal. Something is so off with this guy. You can't just say shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think he absolutely could be pushed into a corner to react. At least he's telling you, like, believe him. Like, believe him when he says it. I believe him. I believe he is waiting for an opportunity to be violent. You know what I mean? Like, I believe him. It's the same way I felt about Max. And Max was so mad at me when I said, like, yeah, I wouldn't be in a room with you. I feel like you might hit somebody. It's because these men keep telling you who they are. And everyone goes, like, Max wouldn't hit you. And I'm like, why not? Why not? He plays the gray line all the time. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to play the line of violence all the time, why not? If you're going to talk like this, I think you should be considered probably maybe a threat. Right? Britt says he'd stage some BS. He'd run away before he could. Um, That's my vibes. Yeah, probably. But the problem is, it's like better not to find out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, but, like, you can't be a person who's rational and reasonable and go about, like, obviously. Like, when Sneeko and Charlie were having their back and forth, obviously neither of them are going to fight each other with guns. But at the same time, like, I don't trust either of them with a gun around me. Because, like, I don't, like, why are you bringing up your guns on YouTube, whether you're Sneeko or Charlie? Why are you guys even playing gun games? 
Why are you even joking about it? Like, it's stupid and it's silly. But at the same time, like, what are we doing? You know? Mm-mm. No. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Better safe than sorry, kids. I'm not messing with it. Big bling tiger upstairs because my daughter's a tiger. We bought I everything know, tiger. I see it. Yeah, I'll show you my house. I'll show you the Versace table. <laughs> Please. I feel like everyone who comes in, I give them like a tour of the house. I'm like, all right, let's go upstairs. I didn't know. I don't want to like push it and be like, oh, I want to see the house because like I'm. Very- would you be? Would you feel safe with him in the house alone with no one else there? That's all you need. No, absolutely not. I'm big on mind. privacy and stuff like that. But oh, like, no, no, I, I don't mind. It literally is in my house. So it's, it's, I, I'm actually honored when people want to see it. I'm always like, okay, it's very oh, cool. Yeah. Sense. All right. So back to the tour. So it's an all confidence tour. So people are going to mm-hmm. like leave feeling like good. They're not going to leave feeling. Yeah. Okay. And you're uncensored. What yes. else about the tour that's different? First of all, did you like your live show? Loved it. Yeah. You did meet and greets after? Mm-hmm. Are you going to do meet and greets again? Mm-hmm. Wild. How many did you meet? Do you know? I think like 100. <gasps> Wow. Do you do a VIP before and then do you do a mean group? I never expect anyone to forgive me or anything like that. Like, I, I understand. We can believe that. Wait. <laughs> it was like, oh my God. Like, I, I was come. like, I want Trisha to come, but I was like, you hate influencers. No. And I was like, <laughs> I hate to like bring her around. Oh, was it like an influencer shit? event? Was it a no, lot no, of influencers? No, like, like, the section where I had my people was like a lot of my friends who were influencers, oh. and I was like, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, but I was like, I don't know what to do. Is there someone you don't think I like that you're friends with? I love everybody now, by the way. I turned a new leaf. I'm like a monk now. I think everyone is beautiful. (laughs) Trisha. Come on my podcast, every influencer. I truly mean that. I love them. Who was it that you don't think I like? Okay, we'll have to bleep this. Okay. But. (laughs) We can bleep out the. (laughs) Oh. Wait, do they? Like, they were there, but like, it was just like (laughs) them. And I was like, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I didn't know if you were like able to like. Like, not give up. It's like, I just didn't want you to, like, feel like you had to go and then be uncomfortable. That's so funny. Um, First of all, no. Like, okay. No, you know what? I feel the opposite. I feel like what you're saying, but reverse. Like, I have no problem going, but I never want anyone else to feel uncomfortable or if they dislike me. Because they have a reason to dislike me. And I right. don't ever, like, I never expect anyone to forgive me or anything like that. Like, I, I understand why people don't like me. I'm fully aware of that. But it's more of, like, yeah, if I go to a party and other people don't like me there, then it can be awkward. I mean, back in the day when people didn't like me, I was like, ooh, it's awkward. But um, I love every influencer, and I love them, too. So I are they your friends? Tell them I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the show. We want to say what, but I'm a fan of the show. We watched it. We watched the season finale the other day. So. I know. I heard you yeah. talking about Yeah. I'm not – I'm too old to be a hater at this point. I think I was a hater for so long. I'm a hater. I'm not too old. I refuse. I'm so sick of toxic people, bro. I'm like so sick of them. And look, look, everyone's got dysfunction, but there's just certain levels I won't fuck with. I'll fuck with so many levels of dysfunction, but this level, him, I won't. Because I hated myself. That's the deep, that's the deep truth. But um, now I'm in a great place. So I'm just fat, happy, and I love everybody. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. I would love to be on Ozempic, but I'm scared. Anyways, (laughs) (laughs) I'm the fat, happy person. So when I hear you talk sometimes, I'm like, I don't know. Yes, Bryson. He feels easily unintentionally. Uh, he feels easy to unintentionally insult or offend. Exactly, and that people who are sensitive, people you have to walk around like those are the pe- people who blow up on you. People who like do those things like those are the people that are the red flags to me. Mm 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 mm. I really like. I don't know. I'm I'm not happy because I'm fat. I'm just fat and happy. They're not like yeah. simul. You know, they're just parallel. That's one thing people think that I don't understand. Is like people can be happy with the way that they look. And I'm like, I'm not saying you have to be this ideal. But like if you do want to change it, here is how to do it. Oh, I'm not happy with the way I look. You know what I mean? I was saying I look like a fat piece of shit. I don't like the way I look. But I'm happy. I think Trisha's so pretty. So like I just think she looks so good right here. I don't know. She's not even that fat. I mean, she's like fat, but she's not that fat. She's fine. She's cute. Happy. That's what I'm saying. They're separate. And also like... Girl, if you're really struggling with binge eating, it's a real problem. And there are real professionals that can help you and love you through it. Like, there is a whole, like, there's a whole structure to it. We've got data on it. We can help people. Like, not me. I'm not part of it. But, like, they can help people. But, like, also, you know what I mean? But if it's a problem, like, you guys know there's a lot of help out there. And Trisha's rich enough. She can get it. I'm so happy in life, but like, I mean, I do, I hate being fat, but I'm so happy. So it kind of counteracts each other. You're like, it's tolerable. <laughs> yeah. So me, I like, I don't think about how I look because I'm so happy, but sometimes when I watch myself or I sit next to someone, I'm like, oh my gosh, I look like a big, I think I'm the size of, again, every influencer that's on here. I mean, we are the same size. You're the first guest to match I need my to weight. Go. <laughs> oh my God. I make you feel like a 
It needs fit. <laughs> oh, no, I feel, I, in a weird I way, I feel issue. fit. Yeah, I feel fit because you're 235. I'm like, okay, we're the same and we're both fit. <laughs> we're both, I love it. We're both good looking. And <laughs> no, I have this thing like I don't realize how big I am. Like I feel very much like six foot a lot of the time. I mean, that's still huge. Six foot's very big. But I feel big. like you don't know what you look like. like. I wish I could, like, give you my eyes for a second so Aww. you could, like, see you. Yeah, you said I looked like a little puppy or something. No, I said you give me cute aggression like a little puppy. Okay, like, I you're so that. adorable. I just... <laughs> Brittany, would you talk to Leo Skeppy? No. Probably not. Why? So I can tell him he's crazy? Yeah, would he like to talk to me and tell me he's crazy and show me his receipts? I would not want to interact with this man. Like, he's so toxic, bro. It's like gross, you know, like grow up talking about murdering people and hitting people. And I regret not being violent. And I wish I could have been more violent. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, even if you're just talking up a game, like, what are you talking about? This is not like, in my opinion, in my values, this is not okay. You guys can think it's okay. I just think it's like. That was so nice. That was great because when I saw you, I was like super intimidated because I get intimidated Why? by like good looking fit people. Did she lose faith, faith in therapy? Well, the problem is, is like you can't just go to therapy for binge eating, right? You can't just go to like therapy. You have to go to addiction counselors. You have to see if it's an eating disorder. You have to like, you have to go to a specialist, right? You can't just go to basic fucking therapy and be like, here, fix my very hardcore addiction. Like you need to go to the right just like you have to go to the right doctor, right? You can't go to a fucking regular doctor for a specialized issue, right? And I think a lot of people just think like, oh, I'll go to basic fucking therapy and that's good enough. Like, no, not everybody needs just base. I didn't. I needed DBT specifically, right? Like I general therapy wasn't working for me. I needed a specific kind of therapy. So like you need to find out which therapy is going to work for you. Um, and maybe maybe it doesn't exactly work for you, but you got to find the right specialist, like the right doctor, this is a medical issue. This is a mental health issue. Because I just, I'm like, I know I look like a little jinxy from Pokemon. You know, I'm just like this little like troll looking thing. I don't either. Everyone just tells me I look like this character. It's like a little, I don't know. She's a blob. <laughs> Oh my She's God. a blob. But um, but I, I I was very excited. When I met you, you just had like good energy. I was like, okay, he's not judging me. And I just come from Taco Bell, so I was really nervous. I was like, oh, he's gonna smell the cheese on Girl, my I would have told you to get me. I know. Oh my god, I was sneaking out. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna run out real quick and get a cute little snack. And... That's one thing I'm very big about. Like growing up Albanian, like food, I never and one like growing up fat, like I never I hated feeling embarrassed around food. So like anytime I'm with people, I encourage people to eat whatever they want. Mm. And like I don't ever want people to feel like they have to censor themselves or order different. Like I want you to eat. I censor like, myself. I'm finna fucking eat. Like so right. eat what you want to eat. I yeah. hate when people feel uncomfortable or like I always order way too much because I don't like for people to not have enough or feel like, oh, I can't have that. It's like, I want to feed everyone. Like, oh. I want everyone to feel comfortable and happy. Like, I don't like people feeling judged because I hated it. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, people judge me all the time for, like, cutting my butter off or, like, not eating certain things. I'm really? Like, Girl, shut up and eat your shit. We're, like, LA like, now. Everybody, like... let's just eat. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm with you, but I will. I, most people I don't eat in front of. Like, it takes me a long time to be comfortable. Unless it's, like, someone who, like, knows me for eating, like, mukbangs. Okay, fine. And then we'll eat. But, it's yeah, it takes me a minute to, like, get comfortable. Like, if we just go – if I go out to eat for, like, a business dinner or something like that, I, like, eat, like, a salad. <laughs> and I eat, like, half of it. I'm like, okay, I'm full. I don't ever <laughs> judge people for, like, eating like that. I think people have a really big misconception of me. Yeah. Like, I, think, I get it. But, like – Yeah. <laughs> I feel you, like I just haven't talked about the opposite enough. Like, I, I am the way I am, but, like, I – Girl, of course he doesn't care what you eat. He doesn't care if you murder people. He doesn't care. He's a violent piece of shit. Like, he doesn't give a fuck. He regrets not being more violent in life. He doesn't give a fuck if you're going to eat. Also have the understanding of what it feels like to be judged. Yeah. So, like, I get that, and I never want people to feel that. Yeah, I feel like because – but it's really not, like, your brand. Your brand – Seven, I'm muting you. I'm doing it. I'm be putting you in timeout. Timeout. Timeout seven. Okay. You're not understanding and that's not my, it's not. Okay. You had a specific situation. It's not the same. Brand is very like, 
don't know. It's really good because it's unique. The fact that you are so um, – I can say the word aggressive. I don't mean aggressive, but you're you're just so in someone's face. You're so blunt, which usually I don't like. Like, blunt is hard for me. Like, when I first met my husband, he was very blunt. <laughs> and I was like, um, can you not be so blunt? Like, I don't know. It was just, it was just a lot. But I think that's, like, a really unique perspective. And a lot of people, like, need to hear that. You know, they always say, like, fat, not that you're a fat shamer, but, like, they say fat shaming works because, you know, if you tell someone they're fat, they're going to be like, okay, I need to lose weight or whatever. Um, so I think your technique works. But I do like the soft side of you that, like, understands and, like, you know, says, you know, I like to eat and I have a cheat meal whenever I want and stuff. I think that's, like, an important message, too, which I think is great. But, like, the way my – like, a day of eating with me right now, like, where I say it's kind of hell is, like, I'll eat very, very clean and, like, good. I'm skipping. But it's, like, never personal or why someone leaves you. It's, like, it's never – about you really I always thought that too it's like my dad I was like well he went to a different state he didn't care about it's like it was it was about my mom it was about other things it wasn't about like us but you think that in your head and so I think that's the biggest thing it wasn't about your mom it was about him your dad left because of him he didn't leave because your mom even now in general whenever people like attack me online or something it's like it's never really personal because I know like when I've hated on people it's always like something that has to do with them like internally yeah. they're mad because they're fat and not happy or they're mad and they can't eat or I don't know, whatever the case is, or I'm keeping this about myself, but, um, it is a really good thing to tell people. It's like, it's never personal. Sometimes it is. You think like, so? Like you have to see like when, but like my biggest analogy I always talk about and I want to buy a Birkin because of this. Do you want a Birkin? Because... I have a rainbow Birkin. You want to buy it? <laughs> not a rainbow one. I'm not that gay. <laughs> no one wants it. It's the worst, it's the worst investment. That was great, Trisha. That was a great moment. <laughs> Okay, anyways, <laughs> I've been trying to sell my burger. <laughs> I saw it on your stories. I was like, what? I agree with Trisha, though. I don't really think it is personal. I think it's about them. Even when I'm like using people's lives as an example, it's not about them. Even Leo, it's not about him. I am trying to use Leo as an example of somebody you and I should stay away from, right? Like, I'm trying to give an example. It is about me, and it's my desire to like set a precedent for what I think is appropriate and what I think is unsafe or safe. Right. His particular flavor of violence is across the board to me like a red flag. So I think Trisha is correct in this where like it's not about Leo. I don't know who Leo is. I don't know this consciousness. But the way he displays violence, if you see it in other people, I would like just like keep it in mind. Because even if he's never going to hit you, I think he's absolutely going to target you. Just like he's saying right now, sometimes it is personal. And that's because he's 25 and fucking dumb. And so he thinks like he has the right to retaliate. He has the right to go after you. Versus like just saying his truth and what he thinks. Like again, I don't go after people. I just use them as examples of types of people that I don't recommend interacting with. Or if you're going to, get ready, you know, to some extent. Because like on a spectrum, people are dysfunctional. Just like have your boundaries, you know. Wait, somebody buy it already. <laughs> Shit. I'm done. I'm done promoting it. It looks like I'm like literally like broke. I'm like, here, buy this. No, Anyways. like I always talk about like I I see so much in you and that's the reason I've connected to you for so long is because like I've seen who you are and your character and your heart like on YouTube for so long and it's like you were just put in the wrong hands with so many people. It's like I always talk about it's like if you give a Birkin to a crackhead. It's a very valuable thing. Mm -hmm. But if you give it to somebody who cannot recognize it, they're going to throw it around, beat it up, mistreat it. Mm -hmm. We're the Birkins sitting here left questioning our value mm -hmm. because of how we've been treated. Like, are we actually valuable? Am I actually worth $20,000? Mm -hmm. Like, do I have that value? And it's like, if you take that same bag and go give it to you, who knows the worth of it, mm -hmm. you're going to get it and you're going to dust it off and you're going to put it on a shelf mm -hmm. and like and admire it and make sure nothing um, happens. She's trying to sell the Birkin right now, so it can't be that good. This is... Uh, uh. To it, when you use it, you're going to be so delicate. Right. You're going to know how to treat it because mm -hmm. you see the value. And it's like, I feel like we both struggle with like, we've been given to crackheads too many times. Mm -hmm. We've been in people's hands who didn't know no, how to treat No, we've put ourselves in those circumstances too many times. And we perpetuate the – he can't even talk shit about his stepdad. He can't even say, like, it was fucked up and wrong and I wouldn't want to perpetuate that cycle. Instead, he's like, I want to be my stepdad for somebody else. I – what are you talking about? Look at the way he's victimizing himself and, like, the most bullshit way. Don't drag Trisha into this. You are not the same. Trisha is not the same as you. Trisha is not in your bubble. Treat us mm. because they couldn't see it. Yeah. And that's why I'm so happy you have him mm. because yeah. he's, like, fixed all of this mm. and, like – Shown. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Moses didn't fix shit. Trisha fixed it. Trisha's doing the work. You you have so much more to offer. It's so true. I know. I know they say like 
people can't heal you or stuff like that. But I really do like feel like he – I was like, oh, this person loves me enough. I should probably like love myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, wow, he really loves me through all this shit. And I was like, I should probably love myself. And I do – like I know that's like not the answer for most people is like be happy with yourself first. But I was miserable. I've been miserable my whole life until I met him. And then I was like, oh, someone really loves me. Like I should probably try to love me, which I never – Well, it's nice to see your love reflected to you. I think if Moses really loves her and Moses is giving her that love, I don't think – it just allowed her to have a relationship with herself, but he didn't do it. She used the tool of love he gave her. So Moses gave her a tool and she took it. You know what I mean? And she like made it work. You know what I mean? Brittany, what kind of bag are you? I'm a backpack bitch because I carry the burdens of the world like Jesus Christ herself. Okay. Or happy there. Or I'm a fanny pack because I'm gay. My whole life. Like I never like loved myself ever. I know. And now I like love myself and it's like <laughs> and that's where I'm at. I'm just like this thing where I just like I really love myself. But but because my issue is also weight, I'm just always that struggling too. I'm always like, God, I wish I was skinny. But I'm but like with know. him, like you've I I like what well, where I'm talking about like the questioning value thing, like you didn't see like what was lovable about you for so long you questioned if it was Never. even there. You were yeah. the Birkin that thought they were a dollar. Yeah. It's like you've forgotten the value was ever even there. And then it's like mm -hmm. him reflecting it to you. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, it is there. And you start to see it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, hey, I appreciate these things. It's and wild. there's so many more things that you have to offer and like give to people mm -hmm. that have nothing to do with your weight at all. Oh, I'm dead serious. Um. Like I've been <laughs> waiting to like talk to you Aww. in person. I'm going to cry. Because, like, <laughs> I've seen it. And I'm, like, I'm so happy you're finally seeing it. It means a lot coming from you, too. Because, like, I watch your videos and sometimes I'm just, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I lack self-confidence. I have no this. You know? And it's, like, or lack of um, self-control. Like, you know? And I always think that. And I always just think because all the comments is about my weight, I'm just, like, oh, that's all I have. And I'm, like, oh, God. I'm glad Trisha feels seen. And I'm glad that it's impacting her in a positive way. I really think it's important not to get validation from people, especially toxic people. The validation does kind of have to come from yourself. It has to come from the relationship you're having with your consciousness. I, I'm i glad she is emotionally impacted this, but Trisha is worthy of love. Trisha is a good person. Trisha is a lovely person. Trisha's lovable whether she's fat or not. Who fucking cares? Okay. Like, that doesn't matter. But I really am frustrated that you are feeling moved by a violent person. But the, she doesn't know anything about him, as we've learned through this podcast. She literally doesn't know anything about Leo. So I don't know why she keeps saying she watches his shit. But I did hear that people mostly watch him on TikTok. And he's very censored on TikTok. So I hear that if you watch him on YouTube, you get a different Leo. Because then he tells his murder stories there. But if you go to TikTok, most people watch him because it's like very general, like general advice. So she probably watches him on TikTok and doesn't hear all the violent stuff, you know. But Trisha's absolutely doing the work. She's the one in power. We're all in power of our own lives and our own consciousness and our relationship with it. Like she doesn't need motives to validate her. But it's nice to have somebody by your side. And I think that's valuable. It's like if I lost weight, people would – like you said, respect you more, all this stuff like that. But People then, don't respect you more because you're pretty. People feel validated by being in your presence because you're pretty because it's about their ego. They're not validating you more. It's fake. It's performative. It's disgusting. Pretty people hate themselves just as much as everybody else. Because it feels bad being validated for what you look like and it feels bad being invalidated for what you look like. Being pretty, being skinny is not going to make you feel more loved. I'm sorry. It's not. Okay? Especially not if you're looking for the respect of other people. People don't respect you more. They want to be associated with you because you're considered pretty, not because they respect you. It's about their status and their ego. It is not about you. They do not respect you more if you're skinny. They absolutely do not. It is about their ego. Means a lot. And that's why I'm – that's where I get struggled in life is like I'm really happy. I feel like I'm like a good person now but – Thank you, babe. <laughs> um, I think this is like a therapy session. You're my life coach now. <laughs> Let's go through all my problems. But um, I really appreciate that. Yeah, it is one of those things you just think 
And I think it's because of weight, like in relationships, on YouTube, anything. It's like my my weight has always been like the joke, you know. It's like, oh, how much are you eating? Or, you know, you're so like fat. It's like a weird thing. Yeah. And so you just get conditioned to think that. It's just like such a weird thing. And you're just like, okay, I don't know. Uh, And being online is just like a whole other toxic thing. But thank you for saying that. You're so sweet. Of course. I really appreciate that. Like your weight (laughs) is like the least – interesting thing about you mm-hmm. it's like the way that i look is like the least interesting thing yeah i agree with that it's yeah. like so much more about who you are like you're just people like people can see past it i just yeah. want you to know people see past and people see you, Thank you. and i always have but now i really do because i've met you oh my gosh i know <laughs> right away i just loved your energy and i was just like well, i was surprised i was really surprised i was nervous like i said to meet you just because you are so you worked on yourself you work hard and um i'm just like always like a little scared i'm like oh no they're gonna look at me and be like you do not work hard on yourself no. you know what i mean but i know what you mean because when i look at other people bigger or whatever than me i never look at people and like oh my god they're fat or oh my god they're eating this like i never, never. look at other people that way ever so i know with your videos and your podcast and your tour i always know it comes from a place like i've been here and this is like what i'm like my journey and it, and i feel like just you sharing your journey inspires other people without being judgy or whatever even yeah. though like at first it can come across like oh my gosh he must think, think i'm a big whale but you're like no it's your experience like i under when you understand something you can't judge it yeah and like when i see someone who like is overweight or whatever it is or like doesn't keep themselves and like they're not hygienic it's like mm-hmm. i understand what you're dealing with and everything that goes into that. I know what you're struggling with. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to look at you and judge you because I get it. Yeah. And it's usually more than just like food or something. It's always so like. So much more. Yeah. It's like something mentally you're going through or oh, yeah. just anything. It's like, a, it's almost like a crutch. Like it's, people don't see that. But one person I do judge the fuck out of oh my. is Nikocado Avocado. <laughs> Wait. How dare you come from Nikocado Avocado? Why? Lost his goddamn mind. Stop, you leave him alone. Why, really? <laughs> no. Like, that's just, like, gross. Like, really? Like, the shit that he does for you. <clears throat> and, like, the way he, like, what? Like, Interesting. I get, I get the clickbait shit. Mm-hmm. I get being, like, shocking. But, like, huh? Yeah. And he, and he, yeah, right. Like, no concern about how you're being perceived at all. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Then that kind of just like throw what he just said 30 seconds out the window. You leave Nick Cotto Avocado alone. That's me mimicking Nick Cotto Avocado. You leave him alone. <laughs> Honestly, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. jealous no, that same. like I can't just fully just. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> not give a fuck about any perception of me. No. You literally don't care if people perceive you as a violent murderer. I'm so confused. Am I just delusional? I must be crazy. I must be crazy. I must be crazy. You know what I mean? Hello? Uh, at least Nick Acavo, uh, Avocado is just hurting himself, basically. And also, he's losing the weight. Okay? So fuck off. And also, he's allowed to be fat. Didn't you just say she's allowed to be fat? People are allowed to be fat. But also, okay? Yeah, he identifies as skinny. Exactly. I I love Nick Akato as a person. It is it's wild to watch. He's very hard to get a hold of now. I wanted him on the podcast. I'm like he's he's very hard. He's very. I've never met him. I've never interacted. Like I've just seen some shit. And I'm like, damn girl. It's wild because he was like vegan before his yeah. thing, and he was very very thin. And then he he documents obviously his weight gain to like I think he's trying to be 600 pounds, which is interesting. It's- Isn't he literally losing weight now? Isn't that the whole thing? It's I love Nick, and I definitely don't judge anybody, but it is one of those things where oh, it's like not the- anymore. Well, you know, look, we all self-sabotage in different ways. Eugenia Cooney, Nick Okado Avocado, murder plans. You know, we're all like on this different path of the path. He quit trying to lose weight. It's hard. We need like a lot of intensive therapy, like intensive like professionals, you know. Yeah, at least Nick didn't try to kill a dog. At least Nick didn't have a plan to kill a dog. That's what I'm saying. Does this man not know he's being perceived as a... I'm going to take every violent word this man says and make a co- fucking compilation. Does it glorify obesity? Does it glorify eating? You know, when you're like, oh, I'm almost 600 pounds. I'm getting. Look, the whole fashion industry is literally based off giving people eating disorders. Ballet is based off giving people eating disorders. Half the shit we put our people through is based off of abuse. So I don't know why we're like moralizing all of our shit all of a sudden. Ultimately, if you want a healthy and happy society, we have to basically give up capitalism and making money our god. And then we have to give up any kind of pedestaling or fame and a desire to be like um, violent hungry, war hungry, 
uh, money hungry. Like you would have to re form the consciousness of the universe in order to quote unquote be healthy everything we do exploits us everything we do is an exploitation of ourselves in order to have like a deconstruction of exploitation you would have to first argue what is harm and then you would have to figure that out hello you have to figure that out even people who chronically go to the gym suffer from eating disorders, suffer from body dysmorphia. Like even people who are doing the quote unquote healthy thing are constantly playing a game with eating disorders. So, okay. Even people who chronically go to therapy, they can be very unhealthy. So in order to actually be nuanced enough to know like what is healthy, we would have to face ourselves in such an intense way. It would probably melt the universe. Heavier. Or is it more just like, for views is like baiting for views you think like this extreme almost sort of like freak show I guess this is Amber no more internet or cell phones that's not gonna help the world was a mess before that the world was a mess way before that Don says would you be willing to define what you deemed healthy in this situation Trisha trying to ask about his mental health I thought that was a really good healthy moment like Trisha asked him like oh what do you think that is like you got to go to therapy. And then he was like, oh, I'm fine. So that was Charles, Trisha, like, being very, like, healthy. Um, I thought that was a really good moment. Like, she was able to pick up, like, something was weird. And I'm like, yes, girl. Go with that intuitions. Uh, or that intuition. Intuitions. Am I fucking having a stroke? Intuitions. What else? Um, what else? Um... I think recognizing that she's worthy of love is like really good. I think it's okay that she's using Moses as a proxy, but I really want her to get to the point where she realizes it is a proxy. Like he's not the reason you're val like you're like you're lovable. Like that's not the reason. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Amber says, no, 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 you were talking about suffering and exploitation. No more cell phones. That would be because ex oh, yeah, that's true. Cell phones are made out of the exploitation of workers. You're right. You're right. Okay, I got you. I got you, girl belly's out his all the stuff like that I always wonder it's kind of like the Eugenia on the flip side of that right is like yeah. does that glorify eating disorder being skinny not eating I mean obesity is an eating disorder like that's what it is guys nobody gets to 600 pounds without an eating disorder sorry nobody binges without it right that's like what an eating disorder is right like I always wonder am, am I wrong like that's how I define it at least that's how I understand it with big because people come for Eugenia but they don't come for Nikocado as much or maybe they do yes, they do they absolutely come for Nick they absolutely go for Nick we're a very fat phobic society Nick is hearing it the idea that people aren't going for Nick is crazy that's a bubble right there maybe I don't see it I always wonder I just wonder what he's going through because I know like there's so much more going on mentally like I know I'm like I'm saying I judge like the, mm -hmm. like the theatrics and all of it but it's like I look at it and I'm, I'm immediately like, work, bitch. And then I'm yeah, like, yeah. like in my head, I'm like, I know that there's a lot going on because he shot up. Very well, obviously something's going on. Something's also probably going on with the guy who wants to be just like his violin stepdad slash is creating murder plans. Very fast, like in like views and money. Oh, yeah. And like you get addicted to that. And like I've experienced the fame now. Mm -hmm. And that just alone can like break a lot of people mentally. <laughs> And yeah. then it's like that plus the like pressure. trying to keep the attention, keep the money. He's in a toxic relationship. He's like talked about it. Yeah. But is that real? I don't know. Right. Because you but see like, it like he beat me. He's leaving me. Whatever. All this stuff. Yeah. I don't know if it's theatrics or if he's actually in it. Yeah. But I don't like, know either. He doesn't seem like he has a lot of people around him. He's like I know everything he's dealing with. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with it like with just the fame aspect within the toxic relationship. Like the reversing your body and feeling worse. And, like, being with a partner, it's, like, there's so much going on mentally with him. I would love to, like, dissect it. But, yeah, like. Same. Like, I judge shit. And then I'm, like, Leo, you know better. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think a lot of people do. When you see. Because he wears. Well, <clears throat> that's just life. Everyone's going through shit. So, here. Like, you never. That's why we gay judge here. We don't, like, judge to condemn. I'm not even judging to condemn Leo. But I am, like holding him to a standard that says like I this isn't tolerable if he talked this way in school he would get suspended like you can't talk like hello you're like or not maybe not in school because he's not threatening anyone in real time but there's something about this that I think is so weird to me where I'm like this is I have to draw the line somewhere like you can't be justifying violence without any kind of pushback 
Like, okay, it's one thing to say, I have feelings that make me want to do this. But to be like, no, seriously, I regret not being more violent. That is a very weird statement to make. I regret not graping that person. It's like a very weird statement to make, right? Like that is a very big red flag. I regret not being violent. I regret not hitting that person. I regret not destroying their property. Like that's a very like, don't say, why are you saying that out loud? Like, and then is he saying it for views? And if he's saying it for views, that's a weird red flag. And that's like all mental health to me. Because like to be so unaware that you're saying it a lot. But then see how nobody can push back on him? Nobody really pushes back on him. Are they afraid of him? Are they, what are they afraid of? Like, why don't people push back on him? I don't get it. Like, I don't get why no, like, what is happening? Why is this just like being ignored? And I guess it's because they're assuming he's joking. Okay, Sneeko got kicked off YouTube, which I agree with, but also, hello? Like, why are you advocating for violence in like the weirdest way possible? Like, I don't even understand this like perception the oxygen mask you know all stuff like he can't breathe you know that's like, the get whole your views, girl. right <laughs> and when i knew him i don't know 2019 he was saying he was just doing it for like another year saving up all his money and then he was gonna like stop and so like people did think for a minute he was gonna lose i think he will i think one day he's gonna like go on this like big weight loss thing because he knows how to do it he's vegan i don't think i don't think he lacks self-control i think it's for money and views which is addicting i used well, to troll he definitely lacks the self-control the time because I was like, oh my god, I get ten thousand dollars if I piss people off. Okay, let me do another video to piss people off. So I think it's more about money, just from what I knew about him like years ago. But he's really nice. I like him, but it is one of those things. That's why I stopped doing mukbang. So oh, good point. Nova says they don't push back because he talked about people killing the people who crossed him, so they don't want to cross him. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Trevi says not only that, but I regret not being more violent from a person who had a mass murder plan. Yeah, so confused, bro big because i never wanted to like trigger people like in a bad way like being like oh this is good to be oh no sadie says i see what you mean my bubble is being so popped oh popping bubbles Ugh. this fat and whatever now i just eat my meals and i'm like well if you judge me for that then it's whatever i don't like that whole stigma around like people just doing what they want to do and everybody being like you're trying to make this okay no bitch i'm just living like if you yeah. want to eat a lot of food <laughs> eat the food yeah. if eugenia don't want to eat don't eat bitch <laughs> okay this is why he can't actually like help people yes eat what you want to eat live how you want to live but if you're seriously having a problem with binging if you're having a problem with an eating disorder if you're having a problem with anything there are resources to help you but you're not a bad person for engaging in like self-destructive behavior i'm not moralizing your self-destructing behavior it's your business it's your body your life your choice okay but if you want to get out of that cycle, there are absolutely tools at like there are absolutely tools. You just got to find the right ones, right? You're not glorifying by just being yourself. You're not telling people, <laughs> this is how I don't eat. Well, then like why bring up Nicocado avocado? This is how we deal with the cravings. This is how I eat this much food. It's but like you're not telling people how to do it. You're just being you. Who do you think though – I agree. I agree. But that like, makes sense. like it makes you mad. <laughs> do you think though, when you show off your body, like Nick Akato just showing his big belly in the biggest way and Eugenia wearing nothing to show her hip bones and you know, all stuff like that. Do you think that is glorifying like obesity, glorifying being skinny? Just, a, I don't know. I'm just asking your opinion on it. Okay. Eugenia, Eugenia Cooney isn't skinny. Right? Like describing her as skinny and describe Nick Akato Akato as just fat. They are morbidly obese and deathbed skinny, okay? Like, I don't know what to call very skinny people, but, like, she ain't skinny. She, I thought that's the wrong word. I don't really know what their intention behind it is, but, like, so what if she wants to show her little hip bones off? And, like, we know <laughs> she's doing it for, like, a little, like, why show my shoulders? It's like Okay, then why did he talk shit on Nikocavo Avocado just now? Like, why did he start to talk shit on Nikocavo, uh, Nikocado Avocado? Like, what's happening? Like, yes, I think they have the right to express themselves and the right to be there. Um, I don't think, like, I would take them off YouTube because they have a struggle with their mental health. I don't think mentally ill people don't deserve to be seen. I think mentally ill people deserve to be seen. Um, but, like, Eugenia just being herself or Nick Avocado, Avocado doing his thing, like, I'm not going to, like, censor them. Because, again, they're having a relationship with themselves. You know what I mean? Emaciated. I think emaciated is probably the right word, right? Yeah, skinny, meaning severely underweight and starved, literally. Like you need a little bit of, like, the attention. Right. But, like, Nick showing his, like, stomach, it's shocking when you see the TikToks. Like, you see him flailing about and, like, being crazy. It's, like, the shock factor. 
Like these dumbass yeah. people doing street interviews, they show like the theatrical responses to get attention. Like everybody's doing it. Right. It's not like glorifying, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like if you want to do it. I think it is a form of glorifying, which is why I don't like that he's not talking about his violence. Like, I would like to see some accountability from just because of values. Like, it means Eugenia doesn't have the values to say out loud, don't be like me, I'm sick. It means Nick Acava Avocado doesn't have a value system that says, don't be like me, I'm sick. It means Leo Skeppi doesn't have a value system that says, don't be like me, I'm sick. That's what I think I would love to see from people because I don't want to take you off the internet, but I would love it if you would say out loud, don't be like me, I'm sick. You know, like I say, don't be like Toxic Britney. She was sick. Like Toxic Britney was sick. You know what I mean? Like she was a sick person who needed help. And I'm so glad she got it so I could be this person today. But like I would not recommend you be like her. I would love it if you never have to be like her ever in your whole life. But if you find yourself identifying with past Britney and you're like, I used to like I feel like her. I I will give you as many tools as I have, kids. Okay? Like, take all my fucking tools and give me some of yours. Like, okay? So we don't have to do that. We don't have to be those people. I feel like that's what I want to hear from these people, including Leo Skeppi. I want to hear him say, don't have a murder-suicide plan. I want him to say, don't be like my toxic um, stepdad. I don't want to be like him either. I want him to say that, look, I can't, like, break these generational curses, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm – maybe trying to work on it or maybe I'm not and not just like falsely say don't be like me like literally say I am sick I am a damaged person not say don't be like me I'm the exception I'm the only one who can pull it off when you can't like somebody we know oh my god can you imagine being on the internet and being like don't be like me I'm like the exception I can handle it you can't when you literally can't even handle it yourself like stop pretending you can handle your fucking life when it's a mess okay just say I'm barely getting by don't be like me don't cope and say, oh, don't be like me. I'm the exception. I'm the only one who can do this kind of relationship when you literally can't. It literally failed. You dumb, dumb ass. Like, oh my God, I'm so sick of these fucking grown people literally convincing people. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what? I'm going to let it go. Sorry. I'm being such a two right now. Humans are going to human, but literally stop falling for their shtick. Just look at their life. Okay. Just look at their life. If it's failing and it's not working, don't take their advice. Okay? Pay attention to people who succeed and avoid the people who fail. Or learn from the people who fail by not doing anything they're doing, including their cope. Are you rooting for Leo to get better or do you not care or want nothing to do with him? No, of course I want him to get better. Get some therapy, girl. Get some facing yourself meditation retreats, girl. Let's go. But I don't know Leo. I'm not invested in his consciousness. Like, I don't think... Uh, there's not enough of him. Um, there's not enough of his consciousness that I can cling to. I don't really like him very much. I don't think I'd like him as a person. If it, even if he was like a better, healthier person, I wouldn't get along with him. I don't get along with people like him. They're so shallow, so superficial. So like, just, they're so boring. Like this whole conversation, the only part of this conversation that's been interesting is Trisha. Trisha is the only part of this conversation that's interesting. I would love to hang out with Trisha. I would love to get to know Trisha. I would love an opportunity to talk to Trisha. I like her and I'm rooting for Trisha. I don't care about Leo Skeppi. He's obviously so shallow. He's like young. I'm too old for this. Absolutely not. But obviously I wish him the best and I hope he succeeds. And being healthy, not in the route he's going. Uh, Brianna says, can we review Nikado Avocado or did you do that already? I missed it. Actually, I can't watch mukbangs. They make me vomit. Sorry. I can't watch them. I can't watch people eat food um, who are gross about it. I'm very texture sensitive. I can't watch people do like food eating competitions. Um, I can't watch people like do any of that stuff. Like I get very nauseous. I can't. If people like I'm very texture sensitive. Like if I even imagine the food you're eating and I don't like the texture, like I'll feel sick. You know, um, yeah. Do you think Leo's too violent to get better? No, you could be a fucking serial killer and I think you could get better. Like, I don't think there's a threshold of violence in which you can't get better. Like, I don't, I think there's only a self-denial level you can't get better. So no, like I do not, I think Leo is more than capable of being better. Like, obviously he's he, like, I know, I do not think he's too violent to get better. Absolutely not. Like, no, like soldiers who have murdered people in Nam get better. Like people get better. Like people get better, you know? 
So no, I think he's more than able to get better. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, uh, Don says unrelated, but can we email Trisha or comment in her comments to podcast? With you? I mean, comment on her comments. That's like how you do it, right? Like, you know, comment. I think, I mean, I've already messaged her as far as I remember. Like, I'm pretty sure I messaged her, but she might ignore it because I've made videos about her that she maybe didn't like. But yeah, I'd love it if Trisha watches this. Like, I am so happy for her journey. I'm stoked for it. I would love to do a podcast with her. Um, that would be dope. You know what I mean? I'm rooting for her 100%. I think we saw so many displays of like healthy traits in this podcast compared to Leo's unhealthiness. So absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do me that favor. Put my name out there. Let her see it. I know she I'm pretty sure she knows who I am because again, someone on Trisha's team flagged one of my videos. You know, would you go on her podcast? Um, I mean, that'll be a little difficult. I live in Croatia, so I'd have to like fly out there. So I wouldn't be able to do that. Like on the drop of a hat but like if she wants to do a zoom call or a, like a discord call like if she wants to do a podcast over the internet you know but um i'd love to go on her podcast i just don't live in california like i live in europe so leaving the continent is kind of a pain in the ass it's like with me i'm sharing how i achieve certain things and like people want you're promoting eating disorders no bitch i'm answering questions <laughs> for people who ask yeah yeah yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right like it's so hard to just get straight direct like information now because mm -hmm. everyone's so scared to get canceled i'm That's like i'll tell true. you what i did but don't tell me i'm promoting shit girl yeah you I, asked right <laughs> and you do it in a very different way you do it in a very like you know you look healthy you have this healthy <laughs> mindset like you know it's it's a little different but yeah i get what you're mm, healthy mindset trisha come on you know you're saying yeah. it is interesting like mm -hmm. when i used to smoke cigarettes online people like i quit smoking oh i did see that i was like wait you smoke cigarettes i miss them every day how did but you like, stop? I just quit. Wow. You have the willpower. <laughs> You're the ultimate. I need a course in that. I'd come here to tour if you did it. He didn't quit cigarettes. Did he literally say on the video we saw that he's trying to quit cigarettes, but he'll have them whenever he wants, which is fair. Like, I understand that relationship. But, like, then are you really quitting or are you just, like, cutting back? It's okay to cut back. You don't have to announce it to the world. You're cutting back. Okay. Willpower. Unless it you want to. Like, when I cut back bread. <laughs> but now it's back in my diet, kids. <laughs> It's like it's how do you I, that's just a good one. quit? Like I just quit. Like what's the again, what's the click? You're like, okay, is there something like one day you're just like, I can't breathe? Like, what is it? You don't vape? No. I kinda like I'll like hit a vape. Like my mom brought me one to my first show and I was like, oh my god, it's like the one I had in Florida. So I would like I hit it and then it's like I was done with it. Oh my god, I love but that. like I smoked cigarettes in Paris. Like I quit for a month, uh -huh. and then I went to Paris and I smoked while I was there, and then I dropped it when I came back wow. home. Wow! Like I'm I'm able to do that, but I well, if he's not addicted to it, then it's not a big deal, right? Like you know what I mean? Like quitting cigarettes is not a big deal if you're not addicted to them. My dad also quit cigarettes cold turkey, even though he was like a pack a day person when I was coming into the world. He wasn't addicted to them. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not fighting an addiction, it's just like, yeah, stop smoking, bro. Stop eating chips. Like, just don't buy any more anymore. It's not a big deal to stop something that's not an addiction. You're just not doing it anymore, right? Am I crazy? Like, unless you're literally addicted, just don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, how hard is it to quit something you're not addicted to? Am I fucking confused? This isn't a brag. You're not addicted to cigarettes. Am I fucking crazy? The way I kind of, like, flip it and, like, get that switch... It's like I prepare mentally like, okay, this thing I'm about to do, like quitting smoking for me to like throw out these cigarettes right now from this moment forward, like the, my whole life is about to be different. It's about to feel different. Mm -hmm. Like my life as I knew it, I'm throwing it away. And it's like just a matter of like stepping into like now when I get these urges, I cannot satisfy them with that. You got to find something else. You got to like learn how to deal with when you want to smoke. You're no longer allowed to do it. So it's going to feel uncomfortable. But like it's going to get better and just preparing myself mentally of like getting that reality check of your life as you know it is over as soon as you decide to quit. It's a whole new life. Right. Like that's what kind of does it. So like when these feelings do come up or these urges, it's like, oh, I have to go back. It's like, no, I'll find something else. Okay. okay. So you're replacing cigarettes with something else. So you didn't quit cigarettes. Like well, just replacing deal it. deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to replace one addiction with like another. You can just – gum. Fucking eat a piece yeah. of mango. That's what I was doing. Not the mango. It's the second time.
What is this advice? Even Trisha saw it. Trisha's so smart. See, Trisha caught it. Trisha goes, wait, so you're like replacing it with something. See, Trisha caught it. Trisha knows he's bullshit. Trisha, you know he's bullshitting you. You're so smart. You caught him. You caught him like four times in this podcast, right? See, Trisha's so fucking self-aware. Trisha? She knows. She knows she caught him multiple times. To be fair, he's 10 years younger. Don't let this little boy run circles around you. Tell him to go back to kindergarten and start all over again. I mean, what the man- <laughs> <laughs> I like mango smoothies, but I don't mm-hmm. know about just like a frozen mango. That's kind of how I do it, like quitting. Do you do the frozen grapes too? Have you seen that yeah. snack? Everyone's like, mm, these frozen grapes are so good at night with a little sugar on them or something. Mm. I don't know. You like them? Hell yeah. I guess I have to try it. I don't know. I have to, again, I have to try all these TikTok healthy eating habits. Oh, my God. We so, should do a YouTube video where, like, you make – like, we can literally <laughs> do, like, making your favorite meals and, like, all of your favorite oh, meals. And yeah. I'll make – like, I'll make it how I would make it and, like, substitute really? things. Really? That, that would, would be, cool. be so good. <laughs> I want a McDonald's McGriddle. Like, that would be so good. Do you know what that is? <laughs> With the pancake and the egg them. and the bacon. Oh. Like, when I was younger, mm-hmm. but before this guy – I didn't hook up with anyone for, like, almost a year and a half. Like, no one, like, sexually for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Because I hated how I felt after hooking up. Like, I felt disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like, the people just, like, eh. Like, I don't like it. Never. Did you never like it? I liked it for a little bit until I realized how empty it was. Yeah. And I was just, like, I'm over it. Yeah. And I'm not someone that's driven by sex. Like, I don't have, like, that desire to like hook up and be doing things all the time like i have it of course yeah but i'm not the person who maybe he's like demi maybe he's demi has to like have sex five times a day right but he gets tired you never (laughs) i know i saw one of your lectures that you're like you know just because you feel like you have to have sex doesn't mean like you'll die if you don't i was like i used to feel like i would die if i didn't like i had to get it like every five hours of the day like it was crazy but there's a lot of like emotional yeah i think trisha just deals with a lot of addiction issues and she's probably not seeing an addiction counselor because it's hard to classify yourself as an addict in a lot of ways because it like sets a precedent that you might not be willing to identify with and you don't have to but like it's probably not helping but she does exhibit a lot of like and i don't know much about addiction it's very much not my bubble but for from what i understand it feel sounds like she deals with a lot of addictive impulsive uh problems maybe stuff in that oh like why you need it all the time yeah like understanding your desires and like what's getting met through certain things yeah you learn a lot oh it'd make me feel like crap too all the time i thought i liked it i thought i was like in control of it i was like this is great like i'm empowered but yeah it always made me feel like crap like no one ever Ooh, wants- or escapism maybe she dabbles a lot or used to dabble a lot in escapism take me out and then that's when I felt like oh man like I'm like the secret I was always hidden yeah and then I was like well maybe you feel desired in the moment because you feel sexy in the moment I think that's the thing a, a lot of I'll just speak for fat people again but like me being a fat person you feel sexy because you're like oh my god all these guys want me so I'm like hot mm. you know if they want to have sex with me okay fair okay fair and then when like someone didn't then you'd feel rejected but no one ever said no to me so I was like oh I'm so hot you know what I mean <laughs> but then you, you feel hot, like <laughs> but then you do feel empty like you said what would yeah. you feel so you'd hook up and then you would just feel disgusted by yourself or by them? Both. Mm-hmm. Like the way that they, hmm. like I'm a weird, I'm a Pisces, I'd be sensitive to hell. Aww. Like I like to feel important and special and I only like things that are special. Mm-hmm. So like. You know, I think when I was reading Tao Te Ching, that was a chapter, how to feel special how to feel unique and how to make it all about you. I'm pretty sure that was chapter 49, 69. People who didn't treat me like I was important, I'm not attracted to you. But you can't know someone. You can't expect to be treated like you're important if you've known someone for a week. Mm -hmm. You can't. Is important the word he means to say? Because important means something. You're important to me. You are a priority to me. Is he trying to synonyms here? Uh, uh, focus. I was special. Uh, important is a weird word coming from him because he puts himself on such a pedestal. I think he, in the giving him the benefit of the, 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 of the doubt, probably means I want to feel seen and special to someone rather than in casual sex. But for somebody to make like, you know what I mean? I guess important is a fine word as well. I guess people use that word. Yeah. Be expected to like be treated like that. So it's unrealistic for me to expect that. 
and I would just feel like shit. Like I wasn't like valued or wasn't like, that's my biggest trigger. Yeah. It's like, if I don't feel valued, I will fucking leave. Like on the drop of a hat. I've yeah. left so many people, so many friends. My parents I've cut off. I've cut off so many people. Wow. So it doesn't talk to his parents emulates his toxic stepdad and wants to be like him says he protects the people who are closest to him who is that if anybody um has a bad childhood okay so interesting maybe our leo has some abandonment issues Halion says, just finished the Sneeko video and I see the Sneeko you've been talking about now and i get it also this guy makes Sneeko look a lot like a guru <laughs> Ooh. Oh, and I just too. cut off a few because I didn't go to my first show. Oh wow! Like one went to some other person's concert. Did they have? A, oh okay. And then my other one just like <laughs> didn't respond to my text. Were they close like, friends of yours? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Like That'd most be... of the friends that I made before I moved here, I don't talk to anymore. Because because you didn't feel valued by them. Yeah, or they just pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a great friend. He sounds really great, super healthy. Love that. Mm, not a red flag at all. Oh, like you said you were sensitive, so maybe maybe it was like a little sensitive. I know very sensitive when too. I'm overly sensitive, I okay. can check myself. Okay. And I like talk. Oh, he holds himself accountable. He's not overly sensitive, but he was going to murder someone's dog and family members. Ma'am. Talk about it. But like if someone's just blatantly inconsiderate or like disrespectful, get fucked. I had so many people. I was dating a guy. He didn't come to my shows. I had a best friend of 10 years that didn't come to my shows. I just like people just never came to my shows. Okay, but like to be fair... Can I be real with you? I feel like coming once in a while is reasonable, but it's a, it's, oops, depending on where those people live, it's kind of expensive. I get your partner to an extent, but honestly, if I was doing like weekly show somewhere, why would I ask my partner to come to those? Am I crazy? I am not needy. Like, why would my partner need to come to see me perform like pretty frequently? You know what I mean? Like if your husband was in comedy or if your wife was in comedy, like, would you want them to come see all your shows? Because, like, I don't think I would need that. Like, why would – like, it'd be kind of nice, but also, like, why do I need you to come to my work? I'm working. Fuck off. Like, I'm literally at my job. Like, am I the only person that comes to YouTube to work? Like, I'm working. So, like, I don't know. Would you want people to come? Like, it's okay to be supportive. I love that. Like, but also, I kind of, like, just want to work. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Mm, let me think like yeah if it was like a once in a while if it was like a big deal maybe but I also wouldn't hold it against anyone for not coming because like what do I care but if it's my partner if it's like once in a while oh is it 205 router reset June says she's talking about Shane about the friend of 10 years I would have thought he would have shown up at least once yeah like at least once right but also, I don't know. Like, I want to know about that. You know, people showing up to your shows. How obligated are they? I don't know. You know, June says, why does no one mention how pretty Brittany's singing voice is? Oh, my God. Stop. Move over, Cher. I'm coming over. Miss Fishy says, depends on, for me, my equivalent of that would be, like, my partner reading my writing or looking at my art. But it's something I do for me, not the external validation. Once in a while is nice, but 24-7. Yeah, because, like same but also like I don't care if my partner watches my YouTube channel like it's okay if he checks in once in a while but I work a lot and the idea that he would feel obligated to watch all the live streams and all the shows and all the things like why he talks to me all day you know what I mean like I could not imagine uh feeling like he should watch all of my shit like you know what I mean I post a lot I'm working again I'm working like I'm wor I'm literally working I don't know like I just yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't think that's really important. But I think it's because I also do this whether people show up or not. It's probably the difference. Like and people support me from afar. Like even the, my parents support my career even if they don't like my content. They do support me, but like why would they have to watch it? You know what I mean? My sister watches my content on occasion. Like recently she gave me some feedback and that was really great. She's been loving. She loved my boogie videos. Thank you. She's been loving the content. Love that for my sister and I. So my sister and I have been bonding on that. She says my fire's, my content's been fire lately, which is like really nice to hear, obviously, because um, she's an independent female and I love that audience. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I don't need people to watch my shit, you know. Um, Trevi says, Brittany, what's your favorite type of art to create aside from your content? Nothing. I'm not. I'm not into anything else. Just this, and then that's it. Yep. My hobbies are working out. Anime. Is anime a hobby? 
and YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay with it. I was like, it's fine. I wouldn't come either. <laughs> uh, no, if you were closer to me, I would have. But no, it, yeah. Oh, well. Like back in the. Wait. A guy, he didn't come to my shows. I had a best friend of 10 years that didn't come to my shows. I just, like, people just never came to my shows. <laughs> I was okay with it. I was like, it's, it's fine. I wouldn't come either. <laughs> uh, no, if you were closer to me, I would have. But no, it, yeah. Oh, well. Like, back in the day, like, I would have been there. Really? Like, you and Zach Sang was there. <laughs> he was the only other friend of mine that showed up. I saw you on his show, and I was just like, I love that you've gone everywhere. You're on everybody's podcast. How do you do it? Okay, so you have new management now, but you said you had old management before. Were they getting you on podcast? Or were people just reach out? Because I reached out to you. Do people just reach out to you? Some people, re like most people reach out, mm -hmm. but like I reached out to Drew. That was my first podcast I ever did, Drew Afiolo. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you just and like liked her. watched that one, right? Her. Isn't that the one we watched? And it's like, it kind of snowballed. Okay, because people, yeah, like, you see, because mm -hmm. you're on so many, so I was like, oh, I'm going to ask him to be on mine, because you never know. Oh, that's so funny, Trevi. I thought you were going to say something according to your sex work. Oh, a period, love that. Um, Yeah, I mean, I do feel like that is definitely, like, another part of my art, but I consider that content creation. I associated that with YouTube. I don't know why. I didn't separate it, but you're right. I guess it is separate, so that too. But I, I put that in the same box as content creation, so I kind of made that similar to YouTube. Um, but yeah, that too, if you're going to count into something different, yeah. Oh, who's going to do what? So you reached out to her. You were just like a fan. You're just like, I want to meet this person. You yeah, similar, right? right? Is Drew the one we watched, guys? Or no, did we watch somebody else? Who was the podcast that we watched with Leo on it? Now I can't remember if that, because I don't know Drew. I just, I didn't even know the podcast he was on. I just, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Tools. And I was like, this could be funny. Right. Because you have the same, um, like, yeah, bluntness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, I like her too. She, she's so opposite of me too because I'm just someone who like – Oh, wait. Well, is Drew a girl? Then I definitely – that's wrong. I don't know who Drew is. I just lied. I don't know who that is. I lied. I thought it was a boy. I'm lying. I don't say anything to anyone. I'm just like – I don't know. I, maybe I used to. I don't know. I'm back and forth. But uh, when people are just so blunt, I'm like, oh, I kind of admire that. I could never. Really? No. I, I feel it. so happy in this chair. Like, my feet have been dangling. Oh, my God. Leo's giving me – it's a skill of a killer, Bella energy. Is he Edward? Is he Edward? Because, like, honestly, I can kind of see it. This whole time I, I keep know. swinging them. How do you feel? Do you like, feel small? I feel so little. <laughs> <laughs> you like, wait, do you like to feel little? Because I remember you said your type is you, but you need someone tall, you said. <laughs> You're like, I like someone else like me, but my shorter. My type is myself. Wait, did I say skin or skill? But you're right. Like, skin of the killer, Bella. Is he Edward? Yeah, it's Drew. She's a girl. Oh, Drew, the fat girl. I like her too, but I hate her. I hate love her. Sometimes I like her because she's so confident, and then I hate her because she has no insight. The fat girl, right? Like, she's a pretty fat girl. Like, I know that girl. Um, The loud one with the laugh. Yeah, I know who that is. She's like, I like her because she's confident, and I hate her because she has no insight to offer me. But I don't, it's not her fault. She gives tools to lots of people. I just like, again, I feel brain dead when I listen to people. Yeah, she's two in the bubbles, same. She's two in the bubbles for me as well. I can't vibe with it. Like, she follows the script so heavy. Her script is so heavy that I'm like, how do you carry the weight of this girl? Like, how do you carry the weight of this? It's just so scripty. It's just like, does she ever think for herself? But no, she can't because she made her fame and her money and her platform off of this shtick. So she can't, which is great. Um, but yeah, her laugh, it, it's a lot. Like her personality is a lot. But I do, I want to like her. Like I want to like her content, but I can't. I think sometimes I like it, but I can't like get into it. Like I can't, it's just too scripty. Again, like I, I love that for her. You do you. But yeah, I can't vibe with it. Mm-mm. But I'm in a different bubble altogether, right? Like, I'm out of the feminist bubble because it's too limiting. And, like, I'm in, like, the more, like, I'm just, you know what I mean? I can't handle a bubble that basically puts you as the bad guy if you disagree about anything. And that's basically that bubble. But shorter, but over 5'10". Okay. You don't want someone taller than you. <laughs> okay. I'm not swinging up. Oh, my God. Stop. Izzy says, oh, my gosh, the way you described her is exactly how a Middle Eastern auntie would say, yes, that pretty fat girl. I mean, it is. She's a pretty fat girl, right? That's objective. Right? Am I correct? She is a pretty fat girl. I don't mean, even mean it insultingly. That's just like how I remember who she is. You know? No, I don't know if you no. like to feel little. You know, so, like I no. like to feel little. Like That's why I like to stand next to you. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so tiny. <laughs> I hate feeling like little with the person that I'm with. Thank Are you, you happiest in a relationship? Wow, they cut a lot. This podcast has so many fucking cuts. Yep, do you think? 
No, I'm miserable. Wait, why? Like in. <laughs> 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 oh no, like gosh. I, I love having like an object of desire mm-hmm. and having a person like I feel so like happy with it. This is something I haven't talked about online, like how my brain works. Mm-hmm. But like I'm in a relationship, I'm a fucking nightmare for myself. Because you like. Not that I overthink, it's like a reflex. So like if you're ever out with me in public or like if something drops or like a, there's a random sound, I jump. Like it's like a – my body's like reaction from like the physical shit I've been through in the past. Mm. Like I always just like react. Therapy doesn't work for me. I've got some shit in my past. Go unpack it in therapy, you dumb fuck. How do, well, see how rich people are unhappy just like, you know what I mean? See how rich people are just as useless as poor people? We're all useless. Congratulations, guys. We're all the same. We're all useless. We're useless to ourselves. They can't even think with all their fucking resources. This is what I mean. Red flag when people are like, therapy doesn't work for me. Th- therapy doesn't work. Solo therapy doesn't work for me. One-on-one therapy doesn't work for me. Hello? You literally are jumping from quote-unquote trauma? Go to fucking therapy, bro. I'm waiting on my medical card and then I'm trying to deal with this like PTSD. I'm thinking, um, I'm, well, I'm nervous about doing therapy in Croatia if I'm going to be completely honest with you, but I'm excited because yes, girl, let's tackle our shit, girl. Mm. I'm like, get ready. And there's no way to fix that. Mm -hmm. It's like people that go to war. He's, listen to me. This, don't listen to this man. He just said people who go to war. What is he going to say? And you try and make um, them not jump at yeah. a firework. Like, I jump at every... It's called PTSD, and you absolutely can get better. There's tons and tons of work you can do. What a crazy statement for a 25-year-old to make. But he's 25, so he's going to get leniency because he's a child. So this is not for Leo because he's a child. This is for you. Stop listening to him. That is misinformation. That is misinformation. Misinformation. Okay. Do not listen to this. You can absolutely get better. You can do meditation techniques. You can have coping mechanisms. You can go to therapy. You can do EMDR. You can do so many things. Okay. You can do so many different types of therapy. Like, absolutely. You're telling me that I have no hope. I have so much hope. I'm about to be health card approved. I'm about to be therapist approved. I'm going to get this fucking PTSD fucking tackled. Okay. There's no fucking way. You, you say you're in control of your life. Fucking start with your PTSD. Start with your life. No. I refuse on principle. Absolutely not. Okay. Plenty of people have absolutely helped in mitigated harm in relation to their PTSD. So absolutely not. Okay. The misinformation. This is the part of the internet that drives me crazy, which is fair to them. It's a bubble. They have no idea. Mental health is making so much, like we are making so many educational strives to absolutely tackle mental health. It's not perfect. It's not, you know, 100%, but it is so much better. You know what I mean? It is so much better. So please, okay, please invest in yourself, invest in your help. Do not keep this up so you can have a pity party story to tell on a podcast. Do not keep this up and keep this narrative in your mind so you can show up on podcasts and tell stories about your trauma. Playing the victim card is not cute. Look at Leo Skeppy talking about how playing the victim card isn't cute. Just get it done. Okay, Leo, get it done. PTSD absolutely can be harm reduced. There absolutely can be a relationship you can have with it. Like if that wasn't true, I wouldn't have seen such strides in myself. Like DBT helped me immensely with my PTSD as well. But I know I still have to work on it because I've been triggered twice in the last two years and I would like to fix that. So I'm hoping for more therapy to see if something else helps because that would be really great. It's a tool. What other tools can like, some, you know what I mean? Oh, can you imagine? Uh, Izzy says therapy totally helped me with my PTSD, but it was because I wanted to get better. I had to choose to do the work. Exactly. Leo Skeppy. You have to choose to do the work. This is the guy people like, this is what I'm saying. How do these people who haven't even started to tackle their problems get so famous? What? I know I'm a hard pill to swallow, but I swear to God, at least I have some evidence for literally the, like the ways I have overcome. I think it's too scary. I'm like fully convinced they want to listen to somebody who's still in the trenches because it's like easier to relate. And I understand that. I absolutely do. But like, bro, I am not going back in the trenches. So you relate to me more. Like, absolutely not. Like, excuse me. I did not do this much work to get out of the trenches, girl. 
Okay. I'm too busy wiping off the mud from my boots. Like, absolutely not. Oh my God. This would be so like, could you even imagine? I can't even imagine. Oh, Izzy says, I do appreciate when you point out the people's access to resources because it's easy to forget that they can get help and choose not to. Literally. Ugh. Amber says, how has the sleep PTSD been without weed if it's not too personal? Honestly, not great. But also, I'm getting better at it. I'm figuring it out. It's not great, but it's working. Deep breathing, just kind of like sitting in the dark. It's kind of better, worse. I'm definitely not experiencing like night terrors like I was. I definitely feel like those have basically not stopped, but basically become not an issue. It also helps that I'm sleeping next to my partner. Yeah, I would say that's pretty fine. I'm still having like issues around claustrophobia and dealing with my head being covered, but I'm working on that as well. So I think therapy will help with those things. Like maybe I'll do some more meditation practices too in conjunction relating to like that feeling of uh, claustrophobia because uh, I think that definitely plays a role and is enhanced by the PTSD. So overall, it's not too bad. It could be better. We're working on it, you know? We're working on it. Oh, you have PTSD. Like, like. like I get ready. But like that's. See how Trisha, Trisha, you're so smart, said, do you have PTSD, right? Firework. Like I jump at everything. You have PTSD. Like, like. I'm, like I get ready. But like that's. He didn't acknowledge it. He didn't acknowledge it. She said, oh, you have PTSD? Because he's describing PTSD. A re- it's like a reaction. It's like, what is it? Like a reflex. Mm-hmm. My brain. From, like, the manipulation and, like, lies and betrayals I've been through, it's, like, and also the awareness I have and, like, what I've seen happen and done, like, I'm aware of everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, any time something happens or, like, there's a gap in communication or, like, anything left to question, it's, like, my brain, I don't think about it. It's, like, a reflex. Mm -hmm. My brain will, like, have this reflex where it will, like, like, fill in this, 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 or this could be happening. And it's like, I. Sounds like abandonment issues and trauma from your childhood, bro. Go to therapy. Like it's genuine hell. <sighs> Maddox says accepting he has PTSD will crumble all he has so far. He probably has CPTSD, honestly. He probably has C, and I'm not a therapist, I don't know. But he probably has CPTSD because it sounds like it was constant trauma. To like live with that. Mm-hmm. And I deal with it every single day. Where, hmm, maybe that's where like meditation would come in. Or if you clear your thoughts, what if you had no thoughts? What if you just like when those thoughts come in, let them go out? I have to like address them. Mm. Like when I think, okay, he could be doing this right now. Or like this means this. I have to like sit there and observe the thought and like talk it down and like shoot holes in the argument. Like this isn't true because of this. And like this isn't true because of this. Like it's not overthinking. It's like all of a sudden this these things just come up and then I feel a certain way. And then I have to, like, shoot them all down. Like, I can comfort myself and get myself through it. But it's, like, a lot to deal with. And that's something a lot of people don't. I've never heard someone talk about that. It's yeah. not like I can control it. Or it's, like, it's not like you go to therapy and you fix it. And you're not sitting with your thoughts enough. It's, like, right. it's just the... Re- yeah, he's in severe denial. Like, yeah, I can't, like, is he doing this for a show? Did he read about PTSD or CPTSD? And he's, like, let me play it up for a podcast. But he doesn't want a real diagnosis because he knows it's fake. Is he a chronic... Okay. Is he a chronic liar that is faking his symptoms so he can get on a podcast? Or is he actually literally in denial that he's describing CPTSD slash PTSD to the T? Like even Trisha knew like, oh, it sounds like PTSD. It's probably CPTSD, but still, even she was like, yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, that's pretty basic. And then he's saying, oh, therapy doesn't work for me. Is he just saying that because he actually doesn't want to be told by a doctor he doesn't have these things and he's actually just a narcissist or he's something else? Like, That's what I'm saying. Are we witnessing a con artist or somebody who's in such denial? And I can't tell the difference. I cannot tell the difference. I feel like he might be a con artist or he's incredibly traumatized. But he doesn't give me authentic trauma. He doesn't give me authentic traumatized. Do you know what I'm saying? He doesn't give me authentic traumatized. He doesn't. You know who gives me authentic traumatized is actually like um, Trisha, obviously. But still, like she had tools. Um, uh, even destiny is authentic, traumatized, obviously from his life. Um, who else? Like Sneeko doesn't, Sneeko's never been traumatized in his whole fucking life, except for his ADHD, which that's fine. But like Sneeko's not a traumatized victim. Who else? Who's like authentically traumatized, but like obviously won't deal with it. Um, well, Trish is dealing with it. So that's not an example of that. Who else? Who else? Who else? I'm trying to think. Who else is somebody who's traumatized, but won't deal with it? Max, 
Max is obviously traumatized and doesn't know how to deal with it, but he's also crazy. So like who else? I'm trying to think Lav is obviously traumatized and won't deal with it. Or she's a chronic liar. Ooh, wait. Is Lav like Leo Skeppy? Oh, wait. Actually, Leo Skeppy and Lav are very similar. Wait, maybe Lav isn't traumatized. Maybe Lav is just a liar. Because Lav obviously have issues. She kind of reminds me of Leo Skeppy. Wait. Are they the same category of person? I don't know. But like there's a certain category of person where I can't tell. Is she traumatized? Because I don't know what part of her life is real. Oh, Boogie. Well, Boogie's obviously very, yes, Boogie's super traumatized, obviously. Which he says, right? Super traumatized, but won't help himself. Hmm. Yeah, Boogie's super traumatized. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like, what category? Like, you're obviously traumatized. Like, obviously, I was traumatized. Like, that was the whole point of going through my 20s and recognizing I needed therapy. Obviously, therapy saved my life. But therapy saved my life because I was ready to stop being traumatized. You know, even though I'm still dealing with my PTSD, I'm nowhere near, right? Starting where I was starting out. Izzy says he seems very averse to using the mental health terminology. Like, he describes trauma but won't call it trauma. Yeah, I think it's because he's in the woo-woo bubble where he's like a Teal Swan fan. And those people don't believe in traditional therapy at all. And so I think he's probably adverse to it because he thinks it doesn't work, which is like, fine, go to the lady who thinks she has superpowers. Like he literally thinks Teal Swan has superpowers. Fine, go hang out with Teal Swan. You know what I mean? Like Leo Skeppy literally believes in Teal Swan's superpowers. It's crazy. Like he's just a cult. He could just be a chronicle. Li like he could just be a, a, a liar and a cult person. You know what I mean? You know? Uh, Lav gives me liar. Leo gives me liar. But something traumatic deep down that doesn't want to, they, they, they don't want to uh, and can't face. Do you think it's a part of a disorder that involves lying? And that's the problem. Chrissy says, I think when you grow up with trauma, you could end up doing the lying thing as a cope. Well, 1000%. But I mean, even Trisha used to be a liar, but she like acknowledges like a lot of it was just made up stories, right? A lot of comedians talk about how it's made up stories because of trauma or because of their life or because it's good for shtick. Even I used to lie a lot, especially at a survival. And I would say like, yeah, that makes total sense. Now I don't, that's why I work so hard not to do it now. But like, he can't do that. He would say he's telling the truth. He doubles down and goes, I am not a liar. I tell the truth. I own up to everything. It's like, but are you owning up to it? Right. Can you be a chronic liar and not be traumatized to some extent? That's a great question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would think not. But, you know, deficient in some way, right? Miss Fishy says, I feel like he's in denial about what trauma he may have, but isn't even coping, just externalizing, as well as incredibly unauthentic and weird values. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Halen says he's obviously damaged, but I don't know if it's trauma you're talking about. Yeah, that's the question. Is he damaged because he's traumatized or because there's a screw loose? That's the question. You know, that's the question that I'm trying to figure out, you know, because again, just because you tell us a story about being traumatized doesn't mean it happened. Like just because he's telling us he was traumatized as a kid doesn't mean any of these stories are real. We don't know that. Like, we don't have any evidence. That's the one thing that was sussy about Leo. He had no pictures, no proof, no evidence, no receipts. So, like, how do I know that it's not just a story you're telling me? Right? That's the question, you know? Greenbean says, I do think he has PTSD, but facing it would require him to be vulnerable, and he would probably see vulnerability as weakness. Denial and emotional repression is easier. That's for sure. Yeah. I get screw loose vibes, but who knows? Who knows? Is there any proof of his family shit? No, that's the problem. Like, there's no proof of anything. He says, I think in the last time we covered him, I think he talked about having a sister, but he doesn't talk to his parents. His stepdad is dead. And even though he's relieved about it, he also quotes wants to be like him, question mark. And then, like, I don't even know what's happening. But, okay, let's continue because he's obviously describing mental health. Let's see if Trisha pushes him. Response and, like, the reaction. What did I call it before? Reflex. Right. It's like when you tap your knee with a mm -hmm. little hammer and it swings, trying to make yourself stop doing that. It's a reflex. Like my brain has been like, I don't know if it's damaged or like seen too much, yeah. but that's just how it goes. But like it, It's called trauma, dude. It's literally called trauma. It gets better the closer I get with people. Mm -hmm. Anyone in that role. Right. I'm going to be in this hell with. It's like I'm in my own hell up here. I'm like, I can't tell if he's, is he, he's telling a lie. This feels like a kid who is 15 years old and wanted to be really damaged so he could tell the story on a podcast. I'm sorry. It just sounds so performatively fake. Colleen says, I think that's what I've been trying to figure out too. Something feels fake and I want to know what it is or is if it's all of it. Like 
He feels like a kid who read about trauma and is showing up on a podcast to talk about trauma, but like pretend, you know what I'm saying? Is he either describing something, like is he that unaware or is he actually telling us a story that's fake? You know what I mean? Fighting for this to like work, but I enjoy it so much, Mm -hmm. but it's like that comes with it. It's like my cross to bear with a relationship. Right. I feel like maybe over time it'll just go away because like it's almost like He'll just show you, like, these are irrational. There's nothing that it's based in. Or it's not even that it's irrational. It's just, like, something that you're holding on to from your past. Or, like you said, it's almost like a PTSD where maybe over time – I don't know how. I don't know how. But I was – in a different way, I was kind of like that too. I was always just thought, like, he's always talking to someone. He's always trying to, like, cheat on me. Like, you know, just – it wasn't him. It was just, like, stuff that I had. And I just thought every guy was like that. And I think it's just, like, over time. I don't know. Yours is a little different because it is, like – it's almost like you said it's, like, a reflex. It's not even, like, it's based on anything. So that's a little more difficult. But I know what it's like to be like a hell in your own mind. Oh, Magic Dragon says in the Trisha subreddits, even people who didn't know about him before, they were skeptical and got bad vibes from him. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh, he sounds like an emotional vampire. I hope he's not telling this story to Trisha because of her traumatic past, like to connect with her. Oh, yeah. I think he's trying to get in with her. I think he's trying to get in with her. He's trying to get good with her. He's trying to make it work. Mm Mm-mm. But maybe I just think like it'll be like five years in and you'll just be like, okay, those don't even come because you'll forget what that's even like. It's almost yeah. like blocking it See out. See how Trisha is saying it's my shit. It's not Moses' shit. She's holding herself accountable. Leo's not doing that. Even right now, he's not saying it's my shit. He's not saying I have problems. He's saying I've been traumatized because of people, because of what's happened to me. You know what I mean? Oh, It's gotten so much better. Like I said, as I get close with someone and as I like can build a case for them Mm -hmm. and like I'm very observant of everything. I see everything because I build a case and like stack proof of like who you are. Mm -hmm. Like I have to fight to see the good in people and like fight for them because my trauma brain will attack them Mm -hmm. and like get them away from me Mm -hmm. as like a protection thing. He probably is borderline, bro. He probably is borderline. Yeah, but, but like the bad kind, like the hard kind, like the kind that's like really destructive. Because if what happened to him in his childhood is true, like I was never abused like that. Like I don't have any – my trauma is not that bad. You know what I mean? Not even like I'm worried you're cheating. I'm worried about this. It's like what if something happens to him like that? Red flag. Absolutely not. Nope. Uh-uh. I'm so worried something might happen to somebody I love. I'll cut them out of my life before they can hurt me. What? What just happened? This is bullshit. He's a chronic liar and a narcissist. I'm doing it. I'm calling it. Chronic liar and narcissist. Not in PD necessarily, but definitely a chronic. Like, There's no way he's not lying. This is a lie. Shit like uh, fucks oh, me interesting. up bad. It's like a, the, the awareness of how I see like safety and like how fast things can happen. It's like the thought of something happening mm. to him getting robbed getting shot his house catching on fire like getting in an accident oh. it's like all of these things hit plus the cheating shit mm-hmm. so it's like it's not just oh i'm worried about you with other people it's not it's- no 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 Mm-mm. security Ooh. it's like just okay too no. much awareness of like what can happen mm-hmm. and it's like anything that could like threaten my connection to you or like losing you it's the same way with my family and like anyone i'm friends with it's like anyone to get close to me hurts Mm -hmm. until we have that like because well you've seen it i think like the the stuff you've seen in your life with your stepdad and just other things too it's like you've seen it you know to experience that i've never experienced something like that so yeah of course that's gonna be in the back of your head Mm -hmm. and like how you get rid of that i don't know i mean that is that's that's terrifying i never even thought you've unlocked new fears for me because i never even think about that but then it's like yeah i don't that's why i don't talk about these things yeah yeah because i don't want people to know right they start thinking um do you remember the podcast he made with the murder plot again i don't mean to bring it up so much but hello about it. Like I'll sit here and be trapped with it. You be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you I, you have to be aware of like definitely me because like you're gonna notice changes in me and my behavior and like you're gonna mm-hmm. know something's bothering me and I want you to be aware it's not like something that you did. Yeah. So like I have to be like that with my friends and like everyone. Like being close to me is a challenge. Yeah. Like and it's not really a challenge, but like, you have to understand me. That's very hard. And how do you? Do you just explain it or they have to see it? Like for me, they had to go through episodes with me. It's almost like they had to like test them. I'm like, this is what happens. And they read the stick around or they don't. It's a little different. Mine's a little bit more like abusive, my mental illness. But yours is, do they see it and they just understand it? Or you like tell them ahead of time? I kind of have to explain it 
And like, if something bothers me, I'll talk about it and I'll mm-hmm. say, this is why it bothers me. Mm-hmm. Or like, this is why this thing like f- with me. I'm not just being sensitive. I'm not like this and that. It's like, this is what this means to me. Yeah. Well, I think you're good with communication. So I think that's yeah. like a big thing. Cause I feel like when you don't communicate that, like I was always really bad at that. I was like, this is just how I am. You're going to have to deal with it. But I think when you can communicate it. But that's but- a big reason I've been single for so long because I know what I have to like. Maybe you're single for so long because you're creepy as fuck, bro. He's such a martyr. He's such a martyr. What? Oh, and he's threatening. Yes, girl. I heard a threat in there. That's what I mean. He like, be careful with me. It's not a threat. It's a warning. But like literally, what? What? Ugh. Take on to be with someone. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that forever. Like it's just the first few months, like year, it's hell. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's so... Okay, do you hear does he hear himself? I'm so awful. Being friends with me is the worst. Oh my gosh. Then maybe you should like go fix that. How do these people get away with literally naming how shitty of a person they are? Do you guys feel so bad for people? Does everyone want to rescue someone so much? Like listen to what he's saying. He's saying he's dangerous. Don't be around me. And everyone's gonna be like, oh no, Leo, you're so lovable. Like, girl, not lovable. Okay. You're dangerous. Go get therapy. But also like emotionally dangerous, manipulative, like whatever you want to call it. Like why do we – why do people tell us how awful they are to people? I'll cheat on you. I'll lie to you. I'll punch your windshield in. And we're just like, he just needs to be hugged. Like girl, no. Absolutely not. Good after that. Mm-hmm. But he is 25 and he's still learning. He needs to go get help though. This is insane. For a 25-year-old, this is wild. Like you're still young. You have so much to live for. But this is wild. This is like – I'll take Sneeko's grift any day over this. Like Sneeko's grift at least lets you go to the gym and tells you to turn to God, which is better than whatever this is. I will take Sneeko's grift over this any day. But just like building that's a lot, but that's why I've been so single because like for me, me being as busy as I am right now, I'm learning so many new ways to deal with this and it doesn't really affect me half as bad as it used to. Because like I'm so fucking busy, I cannot be... Like, I have to shut it off. Mm -hmm. See? Oh, so he buries his feelings. All these people, man. How do all these people, Andrew Tate, Sneeko, Leo, how do you all create this grift where you're like, I've arrived. I know myself. I know how to do good shit. And people buy it. This audience buys it. Well, he's literally only talking about, like, pushing down his feelings. They're all literally people who have pushed down their feelings and everyone's eating it the fuck up. Oh my God. Are you all looking? Are, is everyone Googling how to push down my feelings and never deal with them? What? How do these, how do you, what? What is happening? Oh my God. And like, this is what's going on. I don't have time to fight with my thoughts. Shut the fuck up. And then like, I have to do my podcast, do your podcast, do the meeting, do whatever it is, do my event. Yeah. It's like I've Promote, learned. Promote social media, all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I've learned so many ways to do it and like get a better grip on it. It's always there. But, like, being so busy, it's, like, why I've been so single because I'm, like, I don't have time to deal with all of that. But it's, like, I have to deal with it. Yeah. I'm not the one to run from expansion yeah. and, like, self-awareness. Like, I – Are you sure about that, bitch? Are you fucking sure about that? Do you hear that? I'm not one to run away from self – what? Expansion? What do you say? Yeah, okay. I want to see the evidence. Again, why does everyone just talk so pretty and everyone just eats it the fuck up? Do it. You to, just like, to, like, grow. Then the- do it. Then fucking prove it, bro. Because now I can teach people. Yeah. which is Oh, a- I can teach people how I did it. Oh, how did you do it, though? You didn't. So what the fuck? Raiders Cat gifted one membership. Let's go. Congratulations, Caitlin. Let's go. Amazing at 25. Like, you just seem so much, like, older. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm talking to you, and I feel like you're older than me. Like, you're, like, in Trisha, your 40s. Trisha, Trisha. Do not suck his dick off. He is not worth it. You know he's creepy. You know, knowing all this stuff like that, it's amazing. Raiders gifted another membership. Let's go. Thing. The self awareness and all this stuff like that. <gasps> Magic Dragon, let's go. It's just really great. And also, just like also talking about how you also struggle with just like the all of it, the mental part of it, you know, the eating. You still think about like knowing that you have that struggle still is like very human. Yeah. And very like. I don't believe it. I don't know that. I don't have any proof of that. Let's go Raiders Cat with a number another membership. Let's go Chrissy, Magic and Caitlin so far. Let's go. Thank you, thank you. I don't know. Again, 
not – it's very relatable. Because at first I look, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't relate to this person at all. But then it's like, oh, no, I have to deal with this every single day too. Yeah. And I think that's cool that you, like, talk about that. And I love that. I love the softer side of you. You're the first person who's, like, kind of asked. Really? Raiders Cat with another membership. Thank you so much. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. Izzy. Let's go for Izzy. Oh, wow. I'm surprised because I feel like. I think that Trisha's defense mechanism, be nice as possible until you get them out of the house and never talk again. I hope so, girl. I'm praying. I guess because you're just such a, you're just such a, what's the word? Like you're just so prominent. You're just such like a figure that it's like people wouldn't think to, there's something deeper to it. They're like, oh, this is you. This is just confidence and this and strapping and all of that. I wanted to talk to you so bad because I knew you'd like get it. Ugh. Oh, totally. I get this more than ever. Because at first, because I, I always liked you. I liked you on TikTok and stuff like that. I liked you in your interviews because you're just so funny and like witty. And I was like, I love it. You're totally my like type of friend. You know what I mean? So it's just like, oh, I love this person. But then when, and you remind me so much of my friends that I have, like some I don't even talk to anymore, but just, I don't know. I just love everything about you and your energy. But like hearing this is like a whole different level. Like, the- <laughs> When are people going to stop, 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 stop? Stop being friends with toxic ass people who want to murder people. That you're a foodie and that you still think about food and that you struggle. And then like the mental part, yeah. being in a relationship, of going through phones, all this stuff like that. It's like, oh my gosh, this is someone that I like, I relate to so much, which is like, it's so wild when you meet people like this. And this is what I love about social media is like meeting people that are, that you think are so different. I said this in my talk about mukbang. You'll see it. I did a little mukbang before this. I was like, this person is like so opposite of me. Like, you know, all this stuff like that, but we'll see how it goes. And then like, Knowing now we're so close, like it's great. Because I said, I was like, you know, this is not closeness. This is not closeness. Oh my God. I jumped on a Kyla panel. It was like DDG Unleashed or something or After Hours or whatever. And Lycan and all these people were like questioning me about my relationship with Destiny. And one of the guys on it was like, Brittany, you spent hours and hours on stream talking to him about your personal life. And I was like, it was content. It's not real. It's content. And he was like, but you asked him about marriage stuff. And I was like, it's content. They think that's a real relationship. These people are so chronically online. They think me making content with De- with Destiny was us having p- friend conversations, like intimate conversations, guys. They think this is what closeness is. I'm not even fucking with you. When he said that, I was like, oh my God, are you fucking crazy, bro? They literally think when I was collabing with Destiny and talking about my marriage and my family, I was doing it for content. I'm doing all of it for content. I'm working. I'm at work. Like, yes, I'm talking about my life and it's real, but you all knew in my audience. Didn't I tell you? I swear I told you that day. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go talk to Destiny about it just to get like another input. But like, obviously, I already knew what I was going to do. Like, it's just content. People saw us talking and literally thought that was us. Like, oh, that's them being intimate on stream with 10,000 people watching. Oh, yes, because the best way to form a close friendship is to have an audience. I'm shook. I'm literally shook. I'm literally shook. I I am shook that I was asked that on a I was what? That's intimacy to you? That is insane. But that's just chronic onlineness. Like that's what a bubble, bro. What a fucking bubble. For Trisha to be like, "Oh, we're so close now." Trisha. Trisha. No. She does this a lot. She will pretend to be so close to them and then ghost. Okay, good, girl. Let's do it. That's what she did with Gabby Hanna. Okay. Okay. That's why Gabby was mad at her. But okay, literally, that's what I want. I want her to be like, okay, get the fuck out of my house and never talk to him again. But like, just for the record, this is not what closeness is. Okay? This is not what closeness is. Making content with people is work relationships. It has nothing to do with a real relationship. It is just fun. It has nothing to do. Okay, Trisha, let's do it, baby. Kick him out and never talk to him again. You know what? Like he seems so opposite. He seems all this like this. <laughs> and now seeing how similar we are. It's such a cool thing. Social media is so cool that way. Someone like just completely different. We grew up completely different. Just having so many similarities. And mm-hmm. I love it. I think Me it's too. cool. I like when you, I like what you said that too about the mukbang. Like, you know, binging and like there's other people going through it. And I think like that's what's cool about social media is because like I didn't know people who were like borderline and like, you know, all this other stuff like that until social media. And like, oh, there's other people like me too. Yeah. Like a lot of people on social media, they always point out what you're doing wrong and how you're hurting people, Mm -hmm. but they don't ever talk about, because they don't see who you're helping. Like I talked about with the Mm -hmm. binge eating thing. I Mm -hmm. felt so powerless to it. You know, Marilyn Manson helped people too. So, you know. Mm. And I felt like someone like was 
with me. Yeah. It's like they don't – no one's going to talk about that. Yeah. But like you help a lot more people than That's you That's really- not true, bro. Dr. Kirkana helps people. Dr. K helps lots of people. Lots of people help lots of people and we recognize it. But just because you're helping – like your harm – it's a harm reduction scenario. Religion helps people more than you help them, sir. And I have had to realize that with myself. Mm-hmm. Like, Wait, just- did I say Marilyn Manson or Charles Manson? Well, they're both pieces of shit, so. You and Brooke's episode talking about, like. Yes, Green Bean says when you meet someone else with borderline, it feels like you're bonding, but you're both just sick, bro. Literally. Borderline and everything you guys feel and experience that helped a lot of people and like just hearing you guys openly talk about it like helped me because like i fit all like i fit like seven of the nine characteristics of bpd and my sister was nine out of nine like a few wow. years ago Has she Before ever... I started like going into like my shit. And it's crazy because like I didn't even know in 2019 when I was diagnosed, I didn't even know that existed. People always told me I was like bipolar, all this stuff. I was given mm-hmm. like lithium, I was all this stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is like a personality disorder. It's something completely different. Like, yeah. And people talking about it just, it just helps. And I think that's what's so cool about like, I'm trying to get on it now because no one talked about it when I was like young, but you guys talking about it, you broke everybody talking about it. I think it's like so real. And it's just like something that I think people were so scared to talk about, you know, because it's looked at as like weakness sometimes, but now it's not, you know, people are like, oh, they look at you and they're like, oh, this person has it all together, but still struggles with it. Because I think everybody has a little bit of a mental struggle, you know, of some sort and they just don't either talk about it or want to share it. I think people have a weird misconception of like, sharing what they're going through, thinking that it'll make them look weak, but like Mm -hmm. to do as much as we do and to be dealing with what we deal with and still doing it. That's so inspiring. Yeah. That's so like, holy shit. Like, it's like, it's not just you getting in front of a camera and being a happy dick. It's like me doing my event. It's like, I have so much more in my head and you have so much more you deal with Mm -hmm. behind the scenes and you're still able to execute and like show up and do everything live is beautiful i bet your live events amazing being live and connecting with people in real life is nothing like it crazy i had the best times on tour as i think it's going to be like the best experience for people especially the way you talk and the way you like connect with people it's like it's gonna life change like for them you know they'll be and for you i think it'll be like such a such a powerful thing that's so cool you're doing it i'm so excited for you about it it was a lot like i loved it but like i could like feel the shifts in Mm. the room because like there's certain moments people would like cry because Mm. i like said something that touched them and then five minutes later we're like laughing together yeah and it's like i have a way of like maneuvering that oh man people people, feel safe yeah well of course you have that and that's the best gift is when people will feel safe enough to open up with you but it can be overwhelming. I know when I did tour and people would like tell me their whole stories, oh my God, I would be like sobbing. You know, people show up with like cuts on their arms and stuff like that or like scar, you know, healing cuts and they're like, you know, it helped me. Like you just like, it's so much and it, but it's also so beautiful that they like yeah. can share that with you. I think it's like not everyone, not every influencer has that, you know, where everyone's just like opening up to them about everything. And I think that's what's so cool about what you do. I really do. And, and you're a cool guy. You're cool and you're young, which I think is like something people need to because it's like a whole different perspective talking about this. So I think that's really cool. I'm Thank excited. You. What's the – can you say anything? <laughs> yes, Haliens. He makes my fibro worse. I – I'm so tired, bro. That was the most exhausting narcissist podcast, Midas Trisha, that I've ever watched in my life. That was so exhausting. We're not even done. I, Trisha, get him out of your life. Oh my gosh. That was so narcissistic, bro. Oh, my body hurts. I'm literally in pain. I have to take a shower after this to decompress. Like, can you imagine you're just listening to this guy at a dinner party? I'd be like, who talks about themselves this way? What? Oh. Anything that you've manifested that, because you're like, this shit works. Like, I remember you did that in TikTok. Like, Guys, I hate to say it. I'd rather hang out with Andrew Tate. Fuck. I'd rather hang out with Andrew Tate. 
Literally, like, Andrew Tate is better. I said it. And I hate Andrew Tate. But he's better. I'm telling you. I can't. I can. Red Pillars, I would rather hang out with Myron. Holy fuck. I literally think I'd rather hang out with Myron. I think I would. Because Myron has receipts. At least Myron has receipts. At least Myron has receipts. I can't believe I'm saying this. Right? Am I crazy? At least Myron has receipts. I can't. I cannot believe people are like... He's so toxic, bro. Give it five to six years. This man's going to have a hell of a scandal. Bro, yeah, at least Andrew Tate is funny. Jesus. Oh, my God. Like, I thought the red pillars were bad. This might be the most toxic human being I have seen in so long. He's only 25. He needs fucking help. Like, this is amazing. This works. I wrote it down. It works. Like, what's one thing that you made up? Is it the tour? Is it... One thing from a long time ago, like I started a YouTube channel back in like 2017 and I like wanted to hit 100,000 subscribers so bad and I like started the channel, was posting for a couple of years, like until the end of nursing school. So I had like two years or I think it was like three years. I was like, I can post, but as soon as I graduate, I'm deleting all of the videos and I'm deleting the channel mm -hmm. because I don't want to be bro like looked at weird when they try and search me when i started working at a hospital uh. yes oh my god yes yeah yeah andrew tate would probably drop his character a bit this is just who he is that's the difference i know andrew tate's playing a character so i would just like he's a horrible person though he's done horrible things to women i really believe those things he's done like i believe he mistreated women i absolutely believe that he like i believe he did that but i also know like his character that he plays is the only part of him i'd have to deal with i can deal with a character this this is like a delusion like he believes his delusion it's exhausting like he believes it right am i crazy which by the way he's probably just really sick and he needs a lot of help but like i can't i i can't it's like no like when i meet people like this i automatically avoid them if you see me at a social event and i'm around someone like this i will just turn around and walk away i won't even tell them why because if you tell them why they'll follow you and want to like prove themselves to you or like make your life a living hell mm -mm. If I'm around anyone like this, I do not engage. Absolutely not. I would not. I'm not. Absolutely not. Mm -mm. So I like got so sad because I fiz like I wrote down in journal every day I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that. 100,000 subscribers. And I never hit it. Oh, wow. Graduation day came. I deleted it all and like was defeated. And then mm. years later, my podcast, I randomly start doing that. And then I'm like, I should do a video version. Get on YouTube. Now I have 330 something wow. thousand. It's like, you don't know how it's going to happen. Trevi says, is he a one Britney? No, not at all. No, he's incredibly successful. No, he's, he's very, um, no, he's just useful enough to himself and his communities in a way that, um, causes like harm, but it's, it doesn't like when I say you have to be useful to yourself or your community, it doesn't necessarily have to be like super healthy, right? No, he's, like, not a one. He's probably just, like, a really narcissistic two, right? Um, he's more than helpful to himself. He's more than helpful to himself. Like, he, you know what I mean? Like, his, his desire to be more introspective, like, isn't necessary. He's enough self-aware. Um, yeah, you know, he's definitely probably just a two, like, a two... A, maybe a 2B, a 2A, maybe a 2B. Um, he's definitely more introspective than 2Cs, obviously. He's much more self-aware. Is he a 2B with an ideology? Or is he a 2A, or is he a 2B without an ideology? Or is he a 2A? I don't know. He's probably just like a 2B, maybe. You know what I mean? But a firm 2, I would agree, Maddox. Yeah. You know, he comes off as somebody incredibly unaware of themselves, posing as someone who's self-aware. It feels at times like he doesn't know his own words or what he speaks. I agree with that, which I think makes – I think he knows he's playing a character, which makes him self-aware enough to play the character. But I think he believes the character he's playing, which makes him self-aware enough to play the character. That's my theory. That's my theory. When it's going to mm -hmm. happen. But, like, maybe it's not meant on this channel or in this way. But, like, a lot of things had to happen. It was years later before I hit it. But every fucking thing I wrote down came true. Wow. That's so cool. So that's what you you're like. You just have to follow it. Yeah. 
just keep going with it even if it's like you don't know the path it's going to go down. Like the most random ideas have come for me. Like I have followed the most stupid shit that led to nothing, but it bridged me to the next thing. Right. And like it gave me experience and knowledge to put towards something else. That is so how I feel in like life. Like you do one thing and it like fails and you're just like, why did that fail? And then it like leads you to something else. It is wild. I think about that all the time. It's crazy how that all happens. And that's why you got to like just trust it and just – have you ever seen the movie Yes Man? No. Oh my God, you have to watch it. Wait, what? I don't watch movies. You don't watch movies ever? Not often. What does that mean? Oh my God. Do you watch TV? No. Oh my God. What do you do <laughs> at night? You just go out? Are you like a go out person? You go out a lot? I've stopped going out a lot. So what do you do at night if you're not going out? When you're single, like what did you do? Go to sleep. What? Like I work until- What are all these cuts? Go to sleep. A lot of nights. Are you watching like, TikTok? Like now I'll talk to like my guy or like just- Talk to my family or like. Wait, what? I'll talk to my guy or my family. Well, you're not talking to your parents and you said you've been single for three years. So now I'm confused. Who's his guy and who's his family? Am I crazy? Watch TikToks or whatever. Like planned ideas, planned videos, planned podcasts. Oh and shit. my God, that's wild. <sighs> oh my God, that's crazy. Oh my God, I love movies and TV. So I don't know what I would do without them. That's crazy. Yes Man's good though. It's a Jim Carrey movie and he says yes to everything. He can't say no to anything because that's like, he goes to like a Tony Robbins like thing and he's like, you have to say yes to everything and it like leads him down this path. And I feel like that's very you. It's just like saying yes. I, I try to say that. yes to everything now if I can. Oh, I say no to so much shit. Cause like, <laughs> oh, Chosen Family? Yeah, maybe Chosen Family. Going out, when I first moved here, I was going to everything oh. for like the first month. Girl. Oh, yeah. Going out, I'll say no. This video was delayed because of all the edits I know. Interesting. Was that on the Reddit? Yeah, there's a lot of edits in this one. No, every time. I'm just saying yes to opportunities, like work opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> Note to self. But like you go to an event, you're like, oh, it's a work opportunity. And then, oh, let's go out. Oh, yeah, we're no. all drinking. And it's like it goes from like work to like party. Yeah, no. no. One thing everyone knows about me is like Tana too with a Halloween party. Everything. She's like, I'd ask you, but I know you're gonna. Go. I just don't go out ever. I never went out even when I was twenty. I don't know the last thing I've ever gone out of the house for. I'm just like, I don't go out. Period. If it's dark, no, I'm staying in. <laughs> I do not. You now it's getting dark early, so I'm just like, oh, I can't leave my house at four. Like even going out in the rain this morning when it was raining, I was like, oh my god, I like went out by myself in the rain. Like I just, it's very not me. So <laughs> I love that you went and got taco bell and you had to like hide it. <laughs> Well, but so I was worried about cute. you because I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm like, I can't tell him. I just want to talk about you. He's smelling my breath. I thought. No, I love that. Yeah, I've just been like, I don't know. I've been on a fast food kick lately. It's kind of a weird thing. But anyways. <laughs> um, So 2024, you have the tour. Do you ever see yourself acting? Because you're with a big agency now, which is crazy. Oh, that's congratulations. something. Congratulations. That's, thank you. That's, that's something huge. that they're trying to like push. Like I got a call the other day and was like, we need to start getting you in acting classes. <gasps> Thing that I've been through to get to where I am and all the shit that I failed at and like what I learned, how I got through it. Because I love hearing people talk about their failures. Yeah. Because like it's inspiring. But do you ever recognize too that like, okay, I was like a victim of stuff. Like I was a victim of like abuse. Oh, let's go, Trisha. Yes, Trisha. See, Trisha is so good. She's so good. Oh, good. Good question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like so you I can recognize see that. I did not deserve that shit. And I. It's not about deserving, you narcissist. It's not about deserving. I, like, have to, like, take care of the part mm -hmm. of me that's, like, hopeless and, like, felt hurt. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to take care of that. But I also, like, after I do that, I, like, extract every single thing I can about something bad that's happened and, like, use it. Like, I make it useful. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't my fault that it happened, but, like, it did. So what now? Yeah. Let's like capitalize off that shit. Every single thing I learned from it, let's use it. Yeah. And that's hard for people, mm -hmm. especially when they are the victim and there was something unfairness to them. It's not fast. Yeah. It takes, it takes a, while. a while. Do you think you're over it now? Like do you think you're healed from it as, as much as can be or do you think you still deal with some stuff? Oh, I absolutely still deal with stuff. Yeah. Every single day. Mm -hmm. Like with my stepdad, he used to attack me a lot while I was sleeping. Another edit. Mm -hmm. Like would just start Sleepy. like – Yeah. Because he was, he grew up, he kind of like went through, like grew up in prison. But like you have to be ready at like the drop of a hat to like fight because people will fuck with you. He's like, I want you ready even when you're sleeping. Because like he was like that. Like he could literally hear a noise and get up like ready to go, like asleep. So yeah, like it's, would... it's like trauma, bro. I was also like that as a child because it's trauma. Waking up to every single sound because you're afraid to sleep soundly is trauma. It would attack me a lot while I was sleeping and like choke me out. And he's or like 
put a gun to my head or like oh put a knife to my head. Oh, another cut. Put a gun to my head. Another cut in the edit in the podcast. A lot of editing in this podcast. Gross. Hi. And like get me. Like I'd wake up. Yes. And- yes. How do I say your name? Rakanika? Rik- Winaki? Wait, wait. Oh, my dyslexia. We Ranika. Girl, how do I say your name? Yes, it feels like he's mimicking. There's an emptiness behind his words. That's what it is. There's an emptiness. There's no passion. There's no love. There's no realness. Like an actor could tell a better story. Like there's nothing. There's nothing there. I can't believe these stories. Like I don't believe them. You know what I mean? But at the same time, if this happened, you need therapy. It's just Veronica. Oh. Wait, is it Veronica? Or no, there's a W. Now I'm really confused. Anyways, listen, this is what I'm saying. I don't believe him. Oh, it is Veronica. Thank you, guys. Okay, Veronica. Thank you. Exactly. There's like nothing behind his words. Colleen says, I would love to have a private conversation with Trisha about this interview. I'd love to know what she's really thinking. I know. And what was cut out? I know. I know. Like, what is going on? Like, again, is this a fantasy? Is he like, is he just like, you know what? I, what is this? Ugh. Okay. In a panic, I'm like, I still to this day. Ah, it's Slavic. I should know these things. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cool Slavic name. We love it. Bok. Like, I'm so upset. Wake up. Abelio. Like, freaking out. Like a lot. And like it's. I usually when I mm. sleep by myself, I'm fine. But like sleeping with someone whether it's a friend in the bed or like the guy i'm talking to like i'll if they move oh he's talking to a guy like my body has like that reflex of like like it freaks me out and it wakes me up and i like jolt out i mean you did and I like it here, lose my even. breath yeah oh like when night. i'm sleeping wow yeah but it's like when someone's in the bed yeah. it's like it's something i'm having to learn like i'm getting better at it but, like, that's something I still deal with. I mean. Like, you never get over shit. That. Red flag. Is that's, like, that's a traumatizing thing that I don't know how you, yeah. Because that's, like, preparing you for what? For if you're in prison one day? Like, that's, like, a weird preparation. I, I don't know. I don't know, girl. And now you can't sleep because of it, which is, like. Like, I sleep good, but, like, I still do deal with, like, sometimes having that happen. And what would you. I still, okay. So, if this is true, he needs, like, very intensive therapy. If it's not true, right? If it's not true, then he's a chronic liar. Uh, CJ says, Brittany, you said it's not about deserve, RE abuse. How would you frame it? He uses like very, it's only him. If other people use that language, I'm pretty fine with it. It's when he uses the language that it's like a red flag because it's like, I didn't deserve this. I'm better than this. It's like, it's not, it's not coming from a place of like, I, I didn't deserve that. Like that, that was kind of cruel and no one deserves that. He's coming from a place of like, I didn't deserve that. Like he, it's when he uses the word deserve, it's not like deserve in general, right? Because obviously like people don't deserve to be victimized. Even if you're a bad person, I think it's immoral or unethical to like victimize people because you feel justified in doing it. But it's the way he says it that makes me think like, it's not about deserve, You know what I mean? It's about recognizing you were targeted and abused and you should get help for that or recognizing you haven't like, you know, it's about his like inability to recognize. He makes it sound like he specifically didn't deserve it. And I'm like, does that make sense? Like, obviously, no one like I really think it's unethical to like abuse people. So that's why I'm so strict about it, because I know how easy it is for us to accidentally or on purpose abuse people. It's very easy for us to abuse people as we've seen, which is why I like want to encourage people to like be aware of it because you do it without realizing it sometimes because of the way you're raised, you know? But yeah, I just like, ooh, I don't trust the words he's saying. I don't trust his narrative. It's so like, it's like when he was like, people don't see the good we do. They don't know it. Like, oh my gosh, when people cry, when I'm like, I've impacted them. I'm like, ew, don't be gross. He's making it about him. But not in like a way that I would say, like, be selfish and healthy at the same time. Like, make sure you're doing self-care. Like, he says it in a way that's like, without me, you know? It makes me like super red flag, right? Um, Ren says, it seems like he did his research on Trisha. He, like, he's trying to connect with her by fake 
uh, mimicking her past traumas she's spoken about. Very possible, right? I know too much about Trisha and feel like I know he's copying her trauma. Maybe. Honestly. CJ says, right? Like, instead of recognizing that it can happen in life and no one sh should have to experience it. Yes. He's, like, making it sound like as if he specifically, as if, like, it's just bad in general, my bro. I don't know that narrative but let's see what he says here about his trauma because trisha knows see how trisha knows she's so smart like trisha knows like trisha's feeling it she's like mm -mm. i hope trisha never talks to this man again because she's getting the she knows you do that and look how she's double thinking it look how guarded she is i'm projecting don't let me project but like i feel like she's guarded and i feel like she, her body language not that i can read body language I feel like she knows she's stepping on edge. I feel like a kid who's trapped in a room with somebody you're afraid to get pissed off. Like you're afraid to piss them off. Like it feels like Leo and I would fight because he makes my like, he sets my defense mechanisms, like my desire to be safe off. He makes me feel very unsafe. And when he would do that, like your stepdad, like when he would come in your room, like did you fight him or you just? I tried. <laughs> this is a wild, I can't even <laughs> – comprehend i don't even know the words to say because it is one of those things where i'm like oh my gosh how do you get over something like this because i don't i think That's yours is thing. very unique like there's a lot of things you just don't get over like certain heartbreaks certain betrayals you never fully like i don't believe that i don't believe that you absolutely can have a healthy relationship that thing with things that have happened to you it's not that you eradicate them from your being it's that you do move on Getting over is about moving on, not eradicating the reality from your being. You absolutely can move on with your life. You can, quote, get over a heartbreak, quote, get over trauma, quote, have a better relationship with it. Getting over is another relationship. We'll recontextualize it with moving on, moving forward, making sure it is not like keeping you stuck at a time in your life in which you do not exist in anymore, right? So you absolutely can have a healthy relationship with your life. I know he's 25. He's a kid. He's growing up. He's just a baby. I understand that. He has no idea what's coming. His like brain is sort of just fit developing. Like I understand. Like he's a baby. Don't listen to a baby. Like listen to grownups. Listen to professionals. Listen to people who've been there. Hell, listen to Trisha. Even Trisha's trying to give him tools and he's not taking it, okay? Like you absolutely can recontextualize the relationship you're having with your traumas. You know what I mean? You app, there's tons of data on this. You absolutely can do this. You are not a victim um, of, you're only a victim of when you don't take the, well, that's the wrong way to phrase it. Scratch all of that. You, you can move forward. How about that? Okay. Halion says his vibe is just dark, uneasy feelings that animals get when there's a predator around. Literally, I would just see this in a uh, people but nobody else saw it and believed me until they got hurt I'm telling you right now I'm telling you right now I'm calling it I'm calling bad energy he was bad energy when we reviewed him he's bad energy now he's cons bad energy heal or move on mm -hmm. you never get over some things like even his death I'll never get over yeah. ever like I right. think about him all the time every single day mm -hmm. it's not a painful thing mm -hmm. but like I always think of him yeah. And certain people are like, oh, if you have any thought of it, you're not over it. It's like, who, whose definition of what? <sighs> but like healing, like I don't look at it like it's okay, it's done. Right. Like there's certain things you just don't heal from. It's just your whole life you're like going to deal with it. Yeah, I guess it gets it's better just, though. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's the silver lining is that it does get better. And like maybe over time it'll just heal itself. I don't know. Sometimes that happens with people. Rock bottom. Have you ever hit one? Plenty of times. Really? So you had multiple rock bottoms. Yeah. What would you say is one of them that really flipped your life around? Any that you can say or talk about? Oh, was it the murder-suicide plan? I'm sorry, the murder on a living plan? Was that the rock bottom? I mean, you're very open. I will give like, you so much credit. Losing my, not losing my nursing career, but having it pause. Because, mm -hmm. like, I went to nursing school to get out of, like, living with my dad and working with him. And I wanted, like, I did, I put, like, three and a half years into school and I got it and I was like working and I was like, I'm saving money. Like I'm making money. I'm, I'm good. I'm free. I can go. Mm -hmm. And then it's like everything happened and I ended up right back where I fought mm -hmm. so hard to get out of with no like way out. And that's when I turned to like car dealing. Stuff. Yeah. But like I always found another way out, but it wasn't as like, it wasn't like with the system. It wasn't like morally right to some people. Yeah. I don't give a fuck the system. <laughs> the system dropped me on my ass. So fuck you. I mean, that's... But now I'm taxable and I'm good now. And now you're with like... 
a huge management company. <laughs> you're doing this huge thing. It's wild. And it's and they're cool with you being open and just talking and stuff. Because like, I feel like when you get to this level, too, they try to, like, dial you back a little bit. Like, in general, people. Yeah. I'm have they tried to? Into that. Yeah. But I did want to. They're like, to... don't be so open. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I get that. Honestly, I think it's refreshing and I hope that you never lose it. But when you do get to this level and you're starting to make all this money and you have all these other people, I guess that's why I love not having a manager at sometimes because. I oh, I wonder how his management's going to feel after my video. I'm going to put in all the clips when I clip this for YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm putting in all the clips of him wanting to dog murder because like, I don't know. Are you guys just like unaware? Am I? I'm sorry. Like who gets away? Who gets away with talking about? You can't be murdering people, okay? You can't just be out here advocating without saying anything. Like, there's no, like, acknowledgement. There's no accountability. Like, oh, girl. Because I'm like, oh, I could just say whatever. Also and again, this isn't for virtue signaling. This is just, like, I got to make my opinion clear because this is my line. You can't have someone this toxic talking about, like, he's spreading so much misinformation. Just so much misinformation that's why he loves Teal Swan, because Teal Swan's a fucking cult leader. Tell his management to watch the Hulu docu-series. Can you imagine his management not watching the docu-series while he's promoting Teal Swan? Like, are you – hello? So it gets me in trouble, so I think it's a balance. But how are you dealing with it? I'm doing good, but, like, I have I know when and when not to push it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't run anything by anyone. Like, I'm the one who shoots, edits, uploads my podcast mm -hmm. every week. I don't By run, yourself? Yeah. I don't run the topic by anybody. I don't let anyone listen to it before. Like, I've done it like this since the beginning, and now wow. that everybody's got their hands in it, f them. Like, it's me, my words, my everything. So they don't, they don't get any like input. Like, they hear it when it launches, and I'm like, like, it makes me a little anxious now because I have mm -hmm. so much more to lose. Yeah. But, like, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and what I'm saying. Like, I trust my own judgment, so I feel safe with it. Yeah, that's a good thing to not but I lose. I do s step lightly. Yeah. Lighter. Uh, but when I stop, I know when I'm talking, I'm making a point. <laughs> you're about your topics and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, your topics are all pretty much positive. Like, they're all feel-good topics. Like, I don't listen to your podcast and think, like, these are bad. Like, there's nothing or anything bad in them. Trisha, you're not listening. Thank you. Most people watch him on TikTok, though, so people don't see his YouTube videos. Um, I like them. Well, I'm so excited for you, your life, your podcast, your love. I think you're so interesting as far as like open book go. Oh my gosh. Your life is wild. I think, I know you're a new self-help books, but if you wrote like a book about your life, like that would- You wrote a self-help book? Lord. Maybe I'll review that next. Be the movie. And Become a Leo Skeppy hater. Start it. You could be your own star. I love you so much. I think everything I about you. you is amazing. I hope you don't lose your realness and your- Trisha! Stay away from him. Keep him away from your babies. Keep him away from your life. Your life is too good to let this toxicity into it. Authenticity, because it's just so refreshing. Thank you. I like your. I like your. Blood. There's no way people read him as authentic. There's no fucking way you're reading him as authentic if you're watching his YouTube videos from his TikToks. Sure, from his YouTube videos, no way. Yes, I like your openness. Long form tells you more about people. I'm in the reverse. I'm horrible short form, but I'm great long form. He's the opposite. He's great short form, horrible long form. Because long form, he tells you all his crazy ideas. I'm telling you right now. I like your, all of it. I like your delivery. You're just so perfect and I hope you never change. And I love that you don't apologize. I need to start adapting that. I'm going to keep apologizing Literally forever. Literally start but... calling me. Be like, next time you have a scandal, call me. Let's hope there's not a next oh, time. Oh, call me so I'm not accountable for the way that I like impact the world. Cool. I'm up in not that you have to apologize. Don't apologize unless you mean it. That's really important. Don't apologize unless you mean it. But maybe double check that you shouldn't mean it. You know, don't apologize if you don't mean it. I totally believe you should stick by your values. Just make sure it's a part of your values. You know what I mean? And not because you're defensive. We're both going to have one. We're both no. going to have one. No, it's we're not. We I'm do. not manifesting that. I'm, I'm problematic. I love everybody. All the Never influencers. Mind, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think. Is this one? Yeah. Kay. Knock on wood. <laughs> No, but, but like, literally call me. I'll tell you, like, like if you're wrong, me. I'll tell you. I'm the friend that will tell you. I know you, you will. Like, the fact that you already were like, girl, don't post that Starbucks. I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? Like, I really didn't know, but I'd love that you told me I was me like, that. I'm looking out for you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. No, thank God. I, I don't um, know. Okay, well, Trisha, don't say it in a podcast. Oh, my God. They edited out his whole part, but they didn't add out this part. Girl, don't post that Starbucks. And then she's like, oh, my gosh, but you just told everyone you bought Starbucks. Girl, you just outed yourself right here. This is why I trust Trisha, because she will out herself. She will out herself. That's why I trust Trisha. She doesn't even know why not to buy Starbucks, which is fine. Don't buy Starbucks. Like, or buy a star. I don't care. 
Oh. Oh, either. I don't know half these things, but I try. Nowadays, I just try not to like post anything or do anything. I just try mm. to be on the good side of everything because it's better to be unproblematic than problematic. Right. Be loved in this world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, check out Leo. It was probably sold out by the time it's out, but if it's there's still tickets, he's on the Confidence Unleashed tour. But you said there's gonna be 30 more dates, so yeah, next year. You can go international, or you can just stick in the states. Wow. Okay, it's done. Holy shit, we got through it. Look, I'm rooting for Trisha. She's done so much to work on herself. Look at her the way she caught Leo multiple times and like, uh, don't you think this is a problem? And he like backtracked it, always said I would hold myself accountable, but doesn't. Like, there's just so much here to unpack. And I really hope that Trisha goes home and talks to her husband and they meditate together and they decide not to let this person in their life. I just don't think he's healthy, happy or kind. I'm sure that he's doing his own thing. I'm sure he's like living his own life. Obviously, I just don't like it. Too much misinformation, spreading way too much misinformation. He's basically teaching you how to cope. So Leo's whole shtick is like, I will teach you how to cope so you never have to face yourself. And I really recommend you face yourself so you don't have to cope, right? I really believe, I've seen it done in my own life. I have evidence that I have done it in my own life in which you can mitigate coping, right? Coping is a great temporary skill, but it is a Band-Aid. And Leo is teaching you how to cope full time. And I'm going to teach you how to cope once in a blue moon when you need it, you know, maybe once a day if that's your minimum or maybe as many times as you need until you need it less and less every day. But absolutely, you can move forward with your life. You can face yourself. You can do so much more in life. But Leo's content, I'm saying it right here, is a cope machine. And it's not helping. It is not helping. It is probably temporarily giving you a Band-Aid. Call me in five years if you're still struggling because of Leo Skeppy's advice, okay? That's the, that's the question. Now, everyone can give you a tool, even someone as shitty as Leo Skeppy. So remember, whether it's Andrew Tate or Sneeko, they are giving you a tool. Pick it up and then move on with your life. Move, move on with your life, okay? These people do not actually have your best interest in mind. They have their wallets in mind, okay? <sighs> girl girl which make your money and do your shit but also like jesus christ that's exactly what it is people have been teaching others to cope for so long um wait um for a long time without going deeper yeah that's what's happening is like everyone is teaching everyone how to cope and I'm saying stop coping. Face yourself. Face your life. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be in a second. It's going to take time and work and effort. But you don't have to be this 25-year-old cope machine. Okay, shout out to the LGBTs as I am a queer person myself. But at the same time, like, okay, I love my they, them. Trisha's they, them, right? And her and she and, you know, he's gay. And it's like we're all like a bunch of queer siblings hanging out. But like also no. Okay, absolutely not. Anyways. All right, that's it. We're going to bed. That's it. I worked today. I did my work. Whoo. I worked. Okay. This was work. This was this was a lot of mental struggle. I'm just so I do get concerned. I'm such like a mama bear, but I do get concerned that young people are listening to this and they're not realizing like you don't have to cope. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of misinformation out there in the world. But if I could pop your bubble, let me please pop the bubble today that you absolutely can move forward with your life. There are things you can get over. You do not have to spend the rest of your life thinking about a relationship you had when you were 15, okay? And my head in real life while I'm dead. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. <laughs>